Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on YouTube, join our cult. Hello and welcome. Aggressive, like Brock Lesnar sat here. The, the <laughs> Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast, starring yours truly, Mafu, Jack the Jobber, and Ross Twiddell. Hello. How the hell are you both? Not too bad, Matthew. How are you? Fantastic. Wonderful to hear. Yes. Talk about Germany. Wunderbar. Wunderbar, yeah. yes. Uh, Wunderbar, also very happy. The fact that I went to a different country and came back near COVID, all negative. That was a very dramatic sounding noise <laughs> that the microphones will not be able to pick up, but we all heard it. So pretend you heard something dramatic there. Yes, I went to Germany and back for the VXV. That's how they say Dubek Sub in Eine Deutsch. Uh, 16 karat tournament. And even though it was very. <laughs> Again, just the massive piss loud, noise. In the that is loud the loudest way. piss we've heard on the podcast so far. That, or not heard for people who can't hear it. It's like the best of pissing. Volume. Now, that's what I call pissing. That is a wide urethra. Did you get pissed in Germany? <laughs> there to, we yeah. go. Well done. Look at professional Thank you, Jack. Cheers. I certainly did. Nice. What's what on? on? The sparkling water. No, what okay. else? <laughs> oh, God, everything. Yeah. First, first time there, they go, hi, have a, the Jim Bean. And I was meant just a shot. And he said something in German, because we're in Germany. And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes back, fills it up. I'm like, oh, guess I'm drinking this. Bonjour. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Ça va. <laughs> and that was the means to go on, because I spent the entire weekend, even though the wrestling wasn't, it, it, it would be silly to compare it to the other 16 carats, given the fact that so much talent has left. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next dub, go to evil empire, Buhaha. and also the fact that you had to have your heavy masks on like this. So you can really applaud, and so much noise you can do with this. And also everyone sat down because Germany is taking COVID so much more seriously than this country, as Incredible. it turns out. Well done. Uh, it was still magnificent to see so many wonderful people I've missed. And they actually got me that I hadn't seen them for years. Mm. So I was met up with them, and I feel like I'm in this eternal hug right now. Lovely. Feels so good. Feels so relaxed and chilled. And I've actually done something after two years of not doing anything. That's good. Feel great. I'm, pl- I'm very pleased. Wonderful to hear. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah, very happy. See if we can ruin that good mood. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, that's myself, Jack. What have you been up to? Just working that. Yeah, I've not been any other countries. Um, That's fine. I would expect you to. There's there's just been a lot of wrestling this week, and we are hurtling down the road to WrestleMania as we speak. Mm. So, yeah, just work. Obviously, worked last weekend because of the pay per view, which we'll talk about. Nothing new to report, really, Ross. Because there is a lot of wrestling. I brought present along this week. Oh my god. Right, are you ready for this? There's some clinking of glasses. I Bless you. Thank you. Because I've brought glasses with me. Richard, there's one for you as well, don't worry. Well, one's a mug because we don't have enough uh, upstairs. Okay. But my favourite brewery, right, is Tiny Rebel. So, and they've got some new flavours on the go. So I oh got my myself God. an order. And last oh night, God. I was working a bit late last night because my computer upstairs has been all sorts of an arse. So I've been able to take work home. There is the can, Matthew, right? Read it out. What's on there? Tiny Rebel. The Norris Chuckleberry Oak Age Super Sour 5.2 ABV. Mm. Right, so it's just a pale ale, as also I thought, because I sat down last night watching NXT for the podcast. Was there a glass for Richard as well? Yeah, I'll drink from the can. Oh, okay, right, fair enough. But I just want to do a little social experiment here today. I'm going to try not to spill it all over the desk, but I probably will because I've got the the shakes as always. Put up the um, microphone so it sounds nice. That was too much in the glass. Anyway, oh, <laughs> so much for that. Um, I just want to provide, uh, do a social experiment here today because I took one sip of this. There's a bit too much in there. Not for the Germans. But... Which one do you want, Richard? Do you think you like this? Just, just I want everyone just to have a swig around the table, and I want you to try and keep a straight face. We'll do it all try the same. Try and keep a straight just face. Just try and keep a, a straight, straight face. face. What was I just it? Wanna, the you... eye for people who like their ales. The eye is neon pink, as you can see. The taste. Super God, sour. The smell of Super it. Super sour. Super sour. I have never experienced anything like this in my... Come on, camera, Richard. Come on. It's your time to shine. Come on down. Multiple steps there. Go on. All the best, Richard. You can do it. <laughs> Let's just see who can keep a straight face and who can't before we speak about several hours and several days yeah, of Yeah, well, we're going to need this, the rest of We so are going to On dry, lads? Okay. Go on, count uh, us in. There he is, Richard. Here Tuchman. we go. Eins, zwei, drei. <laughs> Jesus! Woo! Oh, Christ! <laughs> I'm trying so really, oh, really hard to be so sick oh. right now. It's lovely, <laughs> but the sour, the sourness. <laughs> He's gone again. This is the Polish coming out of me. <laughs> 
The no, the, oh. the main flavor is gooseberry, oh. which is obviously very sour. But the oh man, <laughs> imagine me just sat there last night watching the next scene. <laughs> Dull Hudson comes on the screen. I'm going wowzers. Like uh, <laughs> Even Dull really Hudson would emote <laughs> drinking that. What are the really sour sweets? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, bloody hell. Like a toxic gobstopper or whatever. Yeah. Right, right. But there we are. Can you believe it? Oh, it lingers as well. Oh, it lingers. Mm, stay in there. Fully recommend Tiny Rebel, by the way. They've got a, bl a blueberry muffin IPA, which Ooh. is all oh, top tier. It you... literally tastes like you've got a muffin in your mouth after you take this wig. Have you brought any of that? No, that's <laughs> at home. For me and me alone. Peaches and cream, peach pavlova. Oh, all the flavors from Tiny Rebel. What a fun start of the podcast. There we go. <laughs> so enjoy the rest of that, lads, while the podcast is going on. I'll try I drank mine because I was trying to look hard. But we were <laughs> oh, you've seen it off? Yeah, we, oh, we, we're, 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 we're distracted by Richard, though. So, <laughs> oh. See, I've had IPA before. I'm going to have some water. Even out. the sour ones are like, it tastes just the same as every other IPA. That's really genuinely strongly sour. It's amazing. I've had quite a lot, and that's definitely the sourest IPA. Aye. Ever. That is the sourest IPA. Yeah. It's meant to be the Norris from Tiny Rebel. <sighs> if you dare. Survive if it lets you. Wrestling. Wrestling news. Thank feels, you very much. There's something like in my teeth and there's not. Chuck Norris. Yeah. No, the teeth. Norris could be anybody. <laughs> pen, pen. From Coronation Street. Yes. Uh, news. Vincent Mann announces he's inducting The Undertaker <laughs> into the Hall of Fame. What's your reaction to that, Ross? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put that to one side for the podcast. That's for the best. I'll be here all day. Uh, the same year as Vader is added to the 2022 three Hall of Fame class. And the rumor is currently going that uh, Sid Vicious himself, Sid Justice, is also going to be inducted. So clearly, that was courtesy of Andrew Zarian of Matt Men. That's what he was. Mm. So clearly, the aim this year is uh, early '97 mm. for the scope that they're going for. And so massive men, massive recap men. Uh, Vader thought, wait, was he in the Hall of Fame? No, he inducted, he inducted Stan, Stan Hansen. Stan Hansen, yeah. But I remember his induction more than Stan Hansen's speech <laughs> because of all the wacky props he brought out. So well, his eye was falling out, wasn't it? That's right. Boy, I, 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 I. Didn't have to do noise, but we've done it. There we go. Thank you, Shun. But yeah, <laughs> big old Vader. Yeah. Hall of Fame. Oh, he deserves it. Absolutely he deserves it. Of course he is. Oh, I think all man. three of them. Obviously, The Undertaker. Right. But I think Sid does as well. Aye. Right. Yeah. Sid doesn't get much love post, you know, the network era currently. Yeah. Not one appearance during the Heath Slater calls out all the gadgets tour he did a few years ago. Mm. It was just like, oh, yeah, Sid existed. He was my first, like, the guy. You know, think, not my guy, but the guy. Because yeah. Super Brawl 2000, he was in the main event. The master and the rule oh. of the world defending against Jeff Jarrett and Scott Hall in the triple threat match. Harris Brothers getting involved. He don't want none of that. Bosh. <laughs> See you later, Sid said. Bosh. Yeah. <laughs> like a softball flying through the air. <laughs> because they're bald. Right. Um, but I, he's fully... Just, whether you want the serious side or the silly side with the promos, he's, he's up there. He's definitely a whole yeah. thing. That's good. I agree. It's a good class so far. Yeah. I'm intrigued to see what his hair looks like. Should we days. should we bring yeah. up I think it's the same. I know. Because he's just like the bodybuilding He's done well to keep should the we noodles. Bring up Fraser's little take now on yeah, the topic well, of the Hall we'll of Fame. Take number one from Fraser this week. Yeah. We just asked the question who is the biggest star, the bigger name in professional wrestling? If you was to go out on the street and ask the everyday man, all right, all right. name me a professional wrestler. And, me we, were, and, Jack... and we were like, oh well, Hogan, probably Cena. But this, I'd say Cena. this like, particular yeah. discussion was like, who would you get more answers of? Like, Out of these was, two, right? Oh, okay, okay. Undertaker mm -hmm. or Austin? Right. Stone Cold, not Theory. Thank you. So we were, it's Austin, isn't it? What do you think? Steve Austin, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we all said that. And Fraser was like, with the arrogance of youth, <laughs> leaning back in his chair, no, 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 guys, no. <laughs> I think The Undertaker, because he didn't, he's too far removed from the, he was born in 1998. He was yeah. born when Austin was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he's too the IPA? No. So no. his argument was, oh, if you ask the everyday person at the time, then it would be Austin. But if you ask the everyday person now, it would be The Undertaker. And we were like, no. Then I messaged Bethany. She was at work. She knows wrestling, but her workmates don't. And she works, she was working with two other lasses that day. And she said, I've asked them. And neither of them had heard of Steve Austin. And she said they'd both heard of The Undertaker, right. and they said his name like Paul Bearer does. I think she meant, I think she meant, we'll have to ask her this to clarify. I think she meant they said Undertaker's name like Undertaker does, like The Undertaker. I can't imagine them going, ooh. Yeah. I don't think they'd do that. <laughs> Their only famous reference is 92 yeah. era Undertaker. <laughs> I, I think she meant they've said Undertaker's name like Undertaker says his name, yeah. but I don't know. But no, that's only a very small sample size. I still stand by our oh, point yeah. of view that mm. Austin, surely. 
Hmm. Richard Tubman. I would say Austin. He would yeah, say Austin. Austin. He knows yeah. wrestling. Yeah. Austin did films. He was a, a breakout man. Not really a breakout, but in TV shows. And Taker was just, you know, Pitbull's assistant but in maybe, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> maybe Fraser's got a point. Maybe it's the youth. Maybe they're more likely to have heard of The Undertaker because he's more of a character. Hmm. Mm, I don't know. Nah. Maybe that's what Austin's missing from his career, just that appearance alongside Pitbull. Yeah. Is this why Austin must have heard this discussion because he loves Cultaholic, we know that. Yeah. And gone, he loves Richard well, Tubman. I've got to come back then. Mm. I've got to officially make my presence felt right there. Correct. In Texas. Yes. Are we transitioning into that Most news definitely. now? Might as well, yeah. yeah um, after me and everyone's gone, they're not really going to do Steve Austin versus Kevin Owens. They're not, because he will be a part of the KO show. Yes. Well, Willie. Well, Willie. Because Owens definitely said, I want to host the most stupendous KO show yeah. in the history of whatever yeah. that is. He said like that. And yeah, just like that. And then Stone Cold, his promo c- could mean anything. I reckon there's a chance he gets down to the ring dressed in his little shorts and his vest and whatnot. KO says something about the great state of Texas. He strips them off. We have a little match. A la the Rock and Eric Rowan. Austin kept it really... Oh, oh, so technically and legally a match, but just a stunner. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Then. Austin kept it, like, deliberately vague, I reckon. Yeah. Also, the promo... I wasn't really looking forward to Austin coming back. I'm like, please don't do anything to, like, ruin the legacy and stuff. Same. But his But his promo, I'd forgotten how, how classy he is at building a... Ma- being a wrestler. Mm. And he, he... It was really cool because... You remember when Undertaker started getting old and everyone was like, he's like the old gunslinger. He's like the old yeah. cowboy. That suits Austin down to a T. Mm. He was like, you've awoken something in me. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. It's not going to be, you know, but it, I'm still excited for it. I think it'll be fun. Mm. I hope it'll be fun. Yeah. We need Austin teaching the promos, don't we? Mm. I know we have all these sales, all the scripted <laughs> promos, this scripted promos. That Just have him teach them. The, the intensity that man had, mm. unmatched by anybody. Yeah, still. it turns out if... Wait, you mean one of the biggest stars in history in the industry was allowed to do his promos by himself? Yeah. Mm. It didn't have to go, and this is something I've noticed this week. After you did your little ricochet haha <laughs> thing, <laughs> how much wrestlers in WWE, when they're doing interviews or promos, have to do a <laughs> either a ha ha, I'm a face, or a <laughs> I'm a yeah. heel. Like, it's amazing how frequently they do it, like they have to. So, yeah. having Steve Austin come out and go, damn. Uh, by the way, I, thought, I always thought it was. Steve Austin going, damn, son, where'd you find this? No, that's not Austin. Yeah, I, I always thought it was Austin. Else, I don't know what it is. <laughs> so it was some of it, it's just some dude. I'm like, oh, mm. okay. But yeah, him mm. cutting that, sounding like him. In the desert. In the desert. On his quad, on his Kawasaki quad, Mule. Vehicle. Kawasaki Mule. Oh. That's right, you could see uh, Nakamura like and Boobs IPA. in the background. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it used to be on his podcast, didn't he, when he used to go to the ranch for so many months a year. I think he's got, he's got a different ranch now. I think that would have been a different ranch. Right. Um, but yeah, he lives a Kawasaki mule and there's something else where he takes the water. I can't remember what they're called. I remember the mule though. Up the mule. Up the mules. Uh, another contract basis. Obviously, we'll get to WWE soon, but the announcers, Double or Nothing, was the company's first ever million dollar gate. Double or Nothing? Yep. Coming up because of ticket sales oh, prices. Oh, sorry. Right. Yeah. Got, you, got you. That's exciting. Awuga. Yeah. Awuga. Mm. Yeah. I assume that's bigger than the one Double or Nothing two years ago was held at. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I said that's the only one they've ever done, so yeah. Mm. Cha-ching. Okay. Uh, Josh Alexander returns to Impact under a multi-year deal. So he said he's done with them and then he's back with them, which still makes no sense why Brandy name-dropped him about a month ago. They now. were Those last few promos from Cody and Brandy, they were name-dropping everyone. Yeah, so Tony Khan going... Nah, t-t-t-t-t. Cody Rhodes comes out and goes, the lethal injection's a really dangerous finisher. Avoid it. No interaction with Jay Lethal yeah. on the entire thing. <laughs> CM Punk thinks he's great because he did this, but I did it in real life. CM Punk's like, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, A-Kid is ready to go from NXT UK to NXT. Is this full-time or is this just a one-off appearance? Because I wasn't sure. I, I thought they gave him a promo package, man. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. Full-time, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was okay. Precious seconds on uh, the highly rated uh, <laughs> NXT 2.0 amongst the, uh, people watching Golden Guns reruns and uh, <laughs> Dad's Army. North Wrestling original, A-Kid. A-Kid. Not original, but... Yeah, we'll call him original. He was, yeah. he was there once. He's an original. Nice. Another debut is Shane Swerve Strickland. Mm-hmm. Makes his debut at AEW Revolution. Whose which was... house is it? Huh? It's just whose house. house? <laughs> Who house would is live it? in a house like that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and was revealed by Tony Schiavone because he had the contract there, had his name on it. Who's making their debut? <laughs> he kept wafting up the air yeah. like that, didn't he? Who is it? 
And I thought that was funny because that coincides with the next bit of news. William Regal yes. making his debut in AW Revolution. He could have taught promos in NXT. Yeah. He could, he could have, have probably done with him. But, but the thing was, Tony Giovanni was not told that Regal was showing up. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Good. Uh, I was absolutely stunned about William Regal. I did not see him prior to that. And all of a sudden, the live interview I'd done with Brian Danielson a few weeks prior made sense because he mentioned Regal's name. Remember if you're thinking, wow, that's some inside baseball talk there. I don't know if he's got permission to say Regal's name or not. It didn't dawn on me that Regal would show up. When he walked in, the fans went bananas, chanting his name. It was a great scene. Uh, and he grabbed him and said, well, you son of a bitch, you kayfabing son of a bitch, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing excellent. Oh. <laughs> and then when you look at that, and then we'll talk about it later on, but yeah, the yeah, promo yeah, on yeah. Dynamite, I was like, wow. I wonder what they did. I think he put him up in his spare room, did Tony, where how he's he the podcast him. now, yeah. Mm. Him and Lewis at home, making William Regal a full English. Mm. <laughs> It'll make you feel right at home, this William. Yeah. Don't worry about it. That's what Lois would have said. You know what? I might go on and say hello to my good friend Tony. He's defending some jammy dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, before we... Also, did anyone else notice that on this week's Dynamite, Shivani was like in every segment. Mm. <laughs> he was like man of the match. He was everywhere. Are you drinking that salsa? I just tried to see if I could have a little bit. <laughs> and do the news. Oh, my God. My face. <laughs> Oh, don't you have to work out and you, you feel every muscle? In the, yeah. My face feels like that. It, <laughs> makes you, it leaves you feeling like you've been smiling for too long. That yeah. feeling where your cheeks are aching. Exactly. Oh, yeah. those cheeks. Oh, Clear Roads, do, oh, this will make me smile. Clear Roads, do we return now? Very uncertain. It was reported uh, about a week ago, just under a week ago. Uh, well, Clear Roads did return to the looked to be a done deal. No longer. Um, the words fizzled out. Dave Meltzer said, uh, Paul, that Cody's return is now very uncertain. Fast forward to a few days ago. Negotiations hit a snag. He has multiple offers. He has to make a decision. WWE wants the decision made soon for obvious reasons. The ball is in his court. But Alza also says he could go back to AW if he wanted to. I've Oof. got no idea what to say about this. It goes one way, then to the... At the moment, it looks like Cody might have shot himself into a work. Yeah? Yeah. He's asked too much money one place. He's gone the other place. The other place has announced he's leaving, so they've yeah. gone, now we're not giving you the money we would have given, given you if we felt that you were going to stay there. So now he's got nothing, apparently, maybe. Yeah, he's a, <laughs> right. He's in a horrible position to be negotiating. Yeah. Hey, place, I've done nothing but slag off the past uh, three years. What have you got for us? Uh, a low ball offer? Oh. Tony Khan has... Five more. To, take, to, to steal the phrase from your bit, effed on him. Yeah. Tony, if Tony Khan didn't yeah. put that announcement out and AW didn't put the announcements out, he would have got the big money offer, presumably, from WWE. I mean, he would be there now, I, I guess. Maybe. Where is that EVP? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work as Tony <laughs> Um I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Meltzer was saying that he, some source of his or someone was saying that people in AW believe, but it's just speculation, that if Cody wants to go back to AW, he probably could. But I, it'll be like Homer Simpson and Mr. Burns, like going through the tunnel and like, I, I just can't see him mm -hmm. doing it. But I don't know, Fightful reported that they'd reached out to Cody to see what was going on. And he put like, yeah, man, it's, he replied like, it's crazy. And they asked him for further elaboration and he sent them a picture of his dogs. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, who knows? I think he's, he's a bit like Littlefinger in Game of Thrones where the build up, he's, he's built up as this guy. He's like, oh, he's so smart. He knows all the political secrets about everybody. He can do this and do that. In the later seasons, it's like, Ah, I'm a bit outclassed here. Now all these kings and queens have shown up and dragons. And he's just killed off with like absolutely no hype. What's it's he like, gonna do? that was the end. What no. is he going to do? He's Cody Rhodes. He'll find a way. <laughs> uh, and the ending bit is uh, Ann Anderson unsure why AW fans booed Cody Rhodes. Come on, on. He says, all Cody does is go out there, be handsome, be in good shape. <laughs> 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 do some incredible stuff. Take a diamond cut off the top of the ladder. He does everything you could possibly do to endear yourself, the family or the audience, I guess I better call them. They are our family. But he does everything he can do to try and endear himself. And they boo the crap out of him. Yeah. I try to figure it out. I don't know. Uh, if anybody uh, has the answer, please let me know so I can slap it into him because I've tried everything. <laughs> wrestlers, are, <laughs> wrestlers are weird because... You just end that sentence there, Jack. I, well, yeah. <laughs> I can fully understand why people would want to cheer someone like Eddie Kingston who is openly flawed and says, I've made mistakes in the past and I'm just like you and I'm a human. Not Cody, <laughs> who's like, in some early storylines, like the one with MJF, and fair enough. But Cody's not the most natural baby face when he's, look how rich I am and handsome and successful. Like, well, we're not going to cheer you forever. I don't know. It's an odd one. I don't know. 
I'm trying, it, to, it trying to think what it could be. No, it wasn't That's that. It so wasn't that. Bad. Honestly, that was the start. I reckon. Yeah, though. maybe. People think, no, well, what's this guy all about now? You can't <laughs> think that's a good idea. No one thinks that's a good idea. Even if he is getting his branding out there, sometimes, even though it's cut off when he wears a suit. That was the reason he gave, wasn't it, to get his branding out there all the time when oh. he's on TV and stuff. Even though when he wears a suit, it's half covered up. <sighs> Do you think that's why? Do you know what some of the things that he said? Yeah, I'll give you this much. Not exactly a little bald, a decent offer, but you could get rid of that tattoo. He's like. Ah, I think he's right at standstill. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why people boo Cody. He was full on Captain America in his own mind at the end there. Was I was unbearable. so convinced that it was, I had a months long argument with Tom about whether it was deliberate or not. And I was so wrong. But it seemed like it was, how can this not have been deliberate? Yeah, it, it definitely out, it started off not deliberate, then yeah. it turned deliberate, and then it just didn't go the full other yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's so great. This is all going to pay off in the end. It's going to be so great. Nothing happened. Oh, all of that was real, was it? Ah, oh, oh, hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's okay though. He ended racism on the way out. Yeah, so true. thanks for that, true. Cody. And that is all the news. That was the starter. Let's go to the main event. Oh. oh starving for some Hall of Fame. <laughs> Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. <sighs> and now, I need to. I need to step in here because. I need to apologise to everyone who was upset with last week's Hall of Fame. This is not me doing a bit anymore, which is how it's been for the past few weeks. It upset a lot of people last week what I tried to put in the Hall of Fame. Stop smirking. It's not funny. Right. Uh, I need to just apologise. I'm not here to upset or offend anybody. The majority were thankfully sort of seeing where I was coming from, but there was certainly more than one person who was upset what I was doing. And I'm not here to upset and offend people. I'm not one of those edge lords. I'm on a stupid wrestling podcast here to entertain you, and that didn't entertain a lot of people. So please accept my apologies. We're going to knock that bit on the head where I was doing the more ridiculous picks and just to try and get a Hall of Fame win. We'll knock that on the head because for a lot of people that went too far last week, and I'm just sorry. Oh, don't worry. You think, yeah. you know, you think you know the line and... A lot of people told me, told me in no uncertain terms, I didn't. So I've made a mess there. Sorry. Fair enough. Well, sorry for smiling. <laughs> well, I mean, it's hard, to, it's hard to tell, like Curry Rhodes, uh, where the character yeah. starts and ends. So. But I mean, you've apologized. A lot of people would have just, like, carried, soldiered on for the attention. Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a bit I was doing, just, you know, picking more and yeah, more yeah, ridiculous yeah. things as the weeks went on. But if that went too far for a, a fair few people last week, um, I'll just I'll stop doing it now and go back to what the Hall of Fame was. Fair There's no point in upset people, is it? No. Just a stupid Hall of Fame or a stupid podcast. Yeah. <laughs> At the core, that is what it's supposed to yeah. be. But it was going last but what's what's Ross talking about? Oh, okay. Yeah. Glad you asked. In condescending order from last week. Oh, I was obviously to... talking about this first we pick, which read is out. <laughs> when con con when contestant Simon sidestepped to the left on Nightmare, it was never heard from again, 16%. Well, I had fun with that. Uh, Ross's pick, 34%. <sighs> and then Brian Alvarez reviews Shrek, now, 51%. Even when I nominated it, I said this this isn't, oh, excuse me, this isn't going to win. I just wanted to bring attention to it. But, you know, I'm back. The streak's back on. No, well know done, man. The, the, yeah. the right pick at the right time. Thank you. I think I was the right place, right guy, at the right, uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> I've got one this week straight away. Don't Good. worry, don't I've worry, don't worry well. team. Yeah, it's not like Tom there. Don't worry, team. Um, morning team. Yeah, morning team. So some of us in the office are morning people. Tom is. Yeah. And he shares that with everyone. But I'm not. <laughs> and I have to really be like, hi, hi Tom. How are you, mate? Um, hope, he's, hope he's all right, by the way. He's, he's a little bit... Oh, Ill. He's God, I have to be got to shout the loop. He's got the good old C word, that Tom. Uh, but he's but he still okay he's enough. Right. Still not okay enough for me and him to do the Smackdown Colaholic podcast this week. Remotely? So, Yes. Oh, bloody hell. Okay. Yeah, oh, I was very say, remotely yeah. because he was in his little place there. It was a little thing. It was a little money in the bank briefcase and his like nostalgic DRF attitude extreme camera mm. in the background. So very nice. And I had to use Triple Jim's office. Okay. Fair cause, enough. Because like, can we use the uh, streaming room? And then no one's going, no, I'm playing 2K22. <laughs> I'm, play I'm busy playing the wrestling. Watch him have a tag match with like Buddy Murphy and Braun Strowman. <laughs> It gets like, I was like, all right, fine. Mm. Uh, as, yeah, much, he, as much as it he pays, wasn't just playing it, he was recording footage for some oh, yeah, content. Like, Let's the game. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as much I'm as it trying pays, to clock it, like. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, as much as it pains me to say it, best wishes to Andy as well, little Andrew Hodkinson, who got the COVID. After. Oh, I didn't even no. know that. Yeah, Are you actually, I don't know how I haven't got it. I've done lateral flow tests twice a day, every day this week, and I'm still I'm negative this morning. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't I, know Andrew had it. Yeah, I spent time with Tom on Monday. Then Andrew obviously did the the live review. Yeah, um, show on Monday as well. 
and just it, it's yeah. Oh. Wow. Oh, that poor get us twice then. Aye. So I hope he's all right at home as well. Obviously, yeah. as much oh. as it pays me. To, to be fair, when I had it. Owen never got it. It's strange how it, like, yeah. yeah. Anyway. I have done tests twice a day all week long. I've yeah. all come back. I've tested since yeah. Germany. I'm going to definitely test myself when I get back as well, and I've heard that news. Yeah. Right. Um, so, my pick for the Hall of Fame is, we'll get to the segment properly later on, but I'm going to call it Jeff Hardy's Urgency to Save His Brother. <laughs> we loved it when the Young Bucks ran backstage to save their dad, because it was like the opening credits of Baywatch. Dad's in trouble. And then just a, a brisk, a light jog to save him. Mm. Jeff Hardy makes his hotly anticipated debut. Everyone knew as soon as Matt started getting beaten down, the chants were like, Jeff, 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 Jeff. Sting and Darby come out. People are like, mm. It was like when Rey Mysterio came out in the 2014 Royal Rumble. They start trying to save the day. The numbers are too much. The Hardy Boys classic theme hits. Jeff, I'm expecting him to fly to the ring. He comes out onto the ramp and goes, yeah, he does like his thing. <laughs> and he does a slightly faster version. But in the ring, it pans around as he runs past the camera. He's still getting battered in the ring, Matt. <laughs> so my nomination is Jeff Hardy's urgency to save his brother. And that's my pay. Yeah. Yeah. But a fantastic little return. Not a return. Debut. Debut. Say. And mm. yeah. Yeah, it's Jeff. Da, 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 da. The vintage theme, because it's a production theme, so AW yeah. can use it. Ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. It's amazing they can do in the same realm, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I remember hearing on Top Gear. Top Gear I was going to say, yeah. Uh, like that, Hardcore Holly's theme, all the classics. Mm. But, yeah, Jeff making his save, but, you know, not that quick. <laughs> it was a very vigorous, a oh, I... vigorous air hump. Like It was. Yeah. That was good. That was urgent. Yes, that was urgent. <laughs> Again, thought... it reminds me of the classic I brought up before, the, the very underloved. Glacier, The Return, 2001, mm. when Norman Smiley's like, hey, Glacier, can you look at my matches? I will protect you, Norman. Ha, ha, ha. You have got nothing to worry about. Oh, great. So you go and challenge someone like Mike Awesome and goes, you suck. I'll see you in the ring, Norman. Obviously, Mike Awesome beats the hell out of him. But then, da, 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 Glacier, Glacier's here. And then he's making his way at the ring, but shaking hands of everybody and posing <laughs> for photos. So by the time he gets to the ring, Mike Awesome's <laughs> not only done the awesome bomb, but pinned him. And then Awesome's left. And then as soon as he leaves the ring, uh, Glacier gets to the ring and goes, that's right, Norman, I scared him away. <laughs> <laughs> and goes back to taking photos. Yes. Um, but that worked with, you know, drugs. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, that's my pick, Jeff Hardy's urgency. Um, Ross. Richard Tubman. No sound, remember, Richard, no sound. But we have some video footage of a dog called Dexter, who I followed on Instagram for a while, and I feel like I need to... Uh, it's not the first time. Um, I feel like I need to give this man... A bigger platform like the Cult Holic Wrestling Podcast. Just play the footage with no sound, please, Richard. So it's a dog who was an, uh, unfortunately involved in a horrible accident. Uh, lost one front leg. Can't use the other one. So how he gets around is he walks like a human. Oh, uh, look at him go. Whoa. It's incredible, that, isn't it? God, Kevin does got a hat. All the videos are him just walking <laughs> around. Like that. Play that again. Go on, his, uh, go on his full profile, Richard. Every video is him just. We'll play Jeff Hardy's music over this. That's how he gets around from his day to day life. Oh, he can't do because he's not logged in anyway. It doesn't matter. They're all the same. Oh, right. He all walks like that all uh, time. everywhere. There. Da, da, Very good. Da, da, he looks da, da, remarkably da, da, balanced. Da, 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 yeah. Da, 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 da. How has he done that? I've got no idea. Imagine just one day walking in da, your room da, 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 <laughs> and seeing your dog walk around like a human. There he is, Dexter. Fair play, Dexter. Dexter for the Hall of Fame. I know, a, um, I know a girl who's got a three-legged cat. Is this the start of a joke? No. Oh. It lost its <laughs> leg. It got trapped under a garage door. Oh. I know. But no, the cat was it lived on. It's, it's still alive now, but quite old now. This was about 10 years ago. But the cat's lived a full and happy life just with three legs. Yeah. But yeah. it can't do that, though. No. Dexter, bloody hell. I've seen the old dogs that are, like, just worn out, but then the owners will get, like, one of those things in the back of a bike. And just like go yeah. out, yeah. Like, so the dog can see what the outside world looks like, yeah. You know, so like, oh, yeah, a tree. I'd love yeah. to like, later in life when I'm more experienced as a dog owner because I've still never owned one. Um, I'd love to own a broken dog. It's just the back legs don't work. So you need a skateboard or one of those clamp wheel things. Obviously, the costs go up and all that sort of stuff. Mm. And you need experience of that sort of stuff. But that's the yeah. dream. One day, I follow plenty of broken. I heard you broken. Oh, I keep saying broken. You know what I mean, though. I Lovely heard you dogs. talking yesterday about. Um, and I was never really aware of this. I never thought about it, but apparently there's dogs that are recommended for, like, certain breeds are better for beginner, like, first-time dog owners and that. Oh, yeah. Labradors, maybe. Obviously, you get these smaller ones that are very yeah, placid. But as a as a fan of a, a larger dog, I think a Labrador is just known as being easier to handle than, like, a boxer, for example, which yeah, is right. my favorite breed of dog. So 
That's where me and Kayla are going to start with a Labrador puppy. Oh, yeah. okay. And then work our way up mm. through the German Shepherds and the Rottweilers up to a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Now, obviously, the best for you in your, your dog circuit, you'll be running there. I'll be soon, hopefully. Uh, I'd like a dog that's like really old. So, mate, do you want to go for a walk? I was no. Sorry. <laughs> I'm bothered. Kayla's uh, auntie has a 13-year-old chocolate lab who yeah. used to be obviously very Labrador-like and go for miles, but now he can only make it round the block, and that's enough. He's, he starts off really fast, and he just slows down as it goes on. Just literally round the block, five-minute walk, and by the end he's like, oh, I'm ready for bed now. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> that's great. I like to, uh, my uh, parents get retired greyhounds, so obviously they need the, the running, yeah. walking, because they're greyhounds. Even retired, they've still got, got all that energy. But there's times when it's like the weather's been bad. So <laughs> your mum's put on the big coat and whatever and just going to take the dogs out. Then the dog's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> they what? You need this more than me. I want you to walk. Uh, that's lovely. Well, my pick for the Hall of Fame, I was wondering what you're going to pick for yours before going into it, but it seems like a good time to do it because, Ross, you are mint. You're definitely the... <laughs> The thing keeping this place together a lot of the time. Not? You are the loom last week. that gets us going. So I'm going to pick, because you've done such a good effort the last few weeks, up until maybe last week, uh, your losing streak in the Hall of Fame. Ah, uh, fair. At least there was a joke. I was like, he's just going to put Ross in. I was worried about that as well. I think alongside your jeans and your jeans and your drip, like all the other wonderful things you've contributed to this podcast, you deliberately picking bad picks. Uh, for the Hall of Fame to make me and Jack look what a wonderful human being you are to make us look good, giving us the Ross rub. You are uh, the Chris Jericho losing to Eddie Kingston at the pay per view. It lasted two weeks before it went over the edge. It did. And what a great what time a great it was. Two weeks it was with Lady Di. <laughs> That's right. Remember the, good, remember the good times. <laughs> halcyon days of Princess Diana. That's right. We'll do a montage. Oh, while you speak about I'll get I'll get the poem. I feel like Who's I should. Who's the read biggest it out. star? Hulk Hogan or. Princess oh, Diana. Diana. <laughs> oh. You get the what, sorry? I'm getting a poem. Yeah. A poem. Jack, so, Jack on the street talking to people. Who have you heard of? <laughs> Princess Diana or oh, Robert no. Mugabe? I want, to do, uh, I want to do a video in the summer when the when it's warmer and when the students start drinking on that field on the oh, city yeah, yeah. I want to um I want to do a video where I just turn up with a mic. I won't even have to approach them. They'll be drunk. They'll come over to the same camera. They'll be like, oh, and just ask them. Who's the which wrestler have you had? Just see who big who the biggest star is. But yeah. the, that's the frame of the video. The real hilarity will be in my awkward interactions with drunk students. Of course it will yeah. be. Do you think Hank the Tank is innocent or guilty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, free Hank the Tank. Yeah, yeah, thank you very still much. Still a fraud. Anyway, no, the students. Just... Are just, yeah, free Hank the Tank. He's a great chap. <laughs> a student. <laughs> that was a student. Yes. Well, his uh, mobile people sent me this week from a Twitter page, but it's a, from a, a fella called Martin Cavill. If you want to look from, look him up, I don't know who he is. Just a random Facebook page called Princess Diana. Keep her memory oh my God. alive. Oh, oh God. it's a poem by Martin Cavill. Why you cry? Because of Lady Di. What happened? <laughs> Lady Di. <laughs> no oh I see what he's done oh no I'm sad my dripping eyes lady die lady die <laughs> but the D the last two dies yeah. there one spelled Diana the other yeah. one spelled death oh lady the lady the right in German oh like I thought, it was... <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was beautiful that yeah thank you to the, yeah. the two people who managed me on Twitter with that I feel like that's an old old thing for Princess Diana but you know what rather like the people's princess herself I guess it's timeless as I'm well still, as using her for comedy purposes <laughs> oh, honestly that reminded me of David Brent's poem from The Office yeah, yeah, Excalibur yeah. I had a sword Excalibur yeah. and stabbed it in my cock forever <laughs> so bad yeah like they went from yeah you know what this, this Hall of Fame thing has gone a bit too far anyway uh, Diana's dead <laughs> no. so yeah the people's uh, princess well, no, but we, we're not mocking she, that no no we? she's a she it's just it was a big moment of our childhoods, I think. Yeah, I yeah. remember the day vividly, mate, because oh, I was yeah. I was screaming at my mom, going like, "What are you watching this for? Put Fireman Sam back on!" <laughs> but she was like, "No, her and me grand, me grand came around to watch the TV with me mom. All the coverage of Lady Di's death." I remember going up where oh, I've got where she drove around. She didn't drive around, but um, obviously, whatever. How appropriate it is to say this, Matthew? They they carted her corpse around uh, England State for a bit. funeral. They no, drove, no, but she went like, like, the, like England. They drove like the hearse around. Yeah. Oh. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. That was a thing because my mum made us go and like look at it for what? For, like how far seconds. did it go? I was gonna say. Well, well hang on. How how far was this procession? It was when we lived in Northampton. You're not time, getting mixed so. up with oh, the, the, right. the Queen's fiftieth jubilee. No, no, no. He's definitely was that diner. Definitely. <laughs> I had to. Um, <laughs> the Queen wasn't driving on the. That was. I remember the Queen's because she came through Pegs was where, where I'm oh, from. Right. Yeah, oh, okay. stood there for hours and then went. And then she was gone. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, let's, go, let's go see Princess Diana's dead body. All right, cool. Yep. The Queen yep. opened Felgate Metro Station, and I was at um, Felgate Primary School at the time. And she didn't. We had to prepare everything for the Queen's visit, and then she went to St Joseph's instead. The school next door. <gasps> I, I know. Oh, I know. The goal. Lizzie. How? Oh, <laughs> and she opened Felgate Metro Station. St. Joseph's Primary School. Awful. And St. Joseph's. <laughs> I had to... I, when Prince Philip died, I don't think my girlfriend's like a royalist. She's not like pro-royal. She's just really fascinated by the royal family. And I had to watch Prince Philip's funeral with her. But I didn't, never wanted to watch it. But she missed... We missed the first like hour. So we had to watch it on iPlay, like on Catcher. Prince Philip's funeral. It felt weird. It was a weird experience. It was like adverts and stuff. Like, oh, no, it was like up B next. BBC, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Oh. Cuts back to the studio and they're all drinking Monster Energy yeah. drinks. <laughs> Tonight, catchphrase with Stephen Mulhern <laughs> on ITV. <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I watched Saturday Night Takeaway recently. Did you? How was and it? And next Saturday Night Takeaway. Uh, they never change. Yeah. They're just the same, aren't they? And death. Yeah. Is that when they did drag? No, it was the more oh, recent, one, slightly more it, yeah. recent. They did, um, they, they, uh, the, the hidden prank thing was, um, like they would like a voiceover security system for a, like a supermarket. And it was like new COVID protocol, please state your name. And they made them do funny things, but only deck was good at it. And was just laughing too much. Deck's better at the skits. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So it's impractical, impractical jerkers. J impractical jerkers. <laughs> and impractical the, Jericho coming soon. Oh, I saw that on Instagram. Was it this week? Maybe he's taken the because obviously Joe Gatto, the best one, has left because of family reasons. Joe's left. Joe's left. Yeah, yeah it was wow. just the three of them left. And wow. uh, Jericho, I think, has maybe done one episode with him, if, if memory serves. Oh. So that'll be fun. Joe Gatto's left. Stupid Joe and his square head. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Jericho being a heel for two hours. <laughs> Uh, God, I can't, can't believe Joe's Sal, Sal, though, the shameless get, is wearing a Le Champion t-shirt from uh, Jericho stuff. Yeah. Can we get him on something? I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, said, he's name dropped like OSW and Bodgemania before. Oh, well. So, pretty, oh, well. Oh. So clearly he knows who you guys are. Um, we'll see. Anyway. Mm. Uh, for people who forgot what the purpose of the oh, segment God, oh, is, yeah, it no. is the Hall of Fame. Also, Q reminds me of Sam. <laughs> I just think he looks a bit like Sam. Right. Could be Sam's like older brother or dad. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Jack, your pick for Hall of Fame was Jeff Hardy's... Urgency. Uh, word this. The urgency of Jeff Hardy saving his brother, Matt. Yes. Get the dancing in. Then the dirty. There you go. Uh, Ross's pick was... Dexter, the, the walking dog. Dexter, the walking the dog. The human walking dog. It, it, don't say the human walking dog. <laughs> if people haven't seen this, go, God, what type of hybrid is that? <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. So we went from the Alan Dot Moreau to my pick, which is Ross's magnificent losing streak in the Hall of Fame. I mean, I can't remember the last time I won one. It was December, maybe at some time. Thing is, if was this... it the Christmas party? Yeah, maybe that one. Oh, if this... oh that drama! That if this great. one wins, then it it's doesn't count as a Ross dog. win, even though it seems like it's a Ross win. Yeah. It'll be your win. I'd be very surprised if a walking dog did not win. Yeah, yes. maybe. Yeah, you might be right. Brian Alvarez commentating over a walking dog. <laughs> he has three legs <laughs> anyway, and knows how to use them. <laughs> so those magnificent selections for yourself, a veritable miniature heroes for you this week. And you can vote, take your pick of which one you fancy the most by going to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. That says this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. <sighs> this week in wrestling. Smackdown. Oh, it's a big show this week. Sami Zayn defends the icy title against Ricochet. Ah, it's be a routine defense, right? Uh, but it's distracted by Johnny Knoxville. Ricochet <laughs> <A> wins <laughs> to becomes the new IC champion. <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Sucks to be you, Sammy. <laughs> I feel stupid because only last week I was like, he's not the number two babyface on SmackDown. Now he literally is in the position of the number two. I mean, if it's based mm. off reactions, he's not, is he? No. Oh, this week he was. The reactions to him this week were very loud and boisterous. 
probably due to Sami Zayn, but obviously fair plays to Ricochet because he looks very good in the match. Yeah. I liked how he tried to get it over with early. The mm. tiger, tiger Driver from Sami mm -hmm. was in contention for my move of the week because of how oh. gnarly it was, but it didn't make the cut in the end. Ooh. Horrible landing for Trevor. I just thought, looking back when he was picking up the title and going, ha -ha, I'm a champion. <laughs> it was amazing that we were all sat here going, Knoxville versus Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania. Yeah. yeah I could see oh, that. yeah, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I thought, yeah, John Knoxville was uh, definitely the number two baby face compared to Ricochet. <laughs> but, and then later on, Knoxville accepts Sami's challenge for WrestleMania. Oh, his promo I was, was say, fantastic. His... Like yeah. the 80s, wasn't it? What did he do? Well, I've written down it. a quote somewhere. I'll find it in a second. Oh, here we go. Not blah, blah, blah. If you think getting in the ring with a low-life, dirty cheat like yourself scares me, you got another thing coming, pal. Dude. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> and he, he stole from Buzz Lightyear as well, didn't he? Call him a small, strange little man, whatever it was. Sad, yeah. strange, sad, strange, strange, strange. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. I brought that up in the office. Ross agreed. Both obviously Toy Story, Toy Story connoisseurs. Mm -hmm. Fraser, with the arrogance of youth, went, I don't think he would deliberately do that. Yes, he would. Ah. Toy Story is an institution. Toy Story won. Aye, but if you ask the people on the street, name uh, the CGI Pixar uh, film. <laughs> cars would. That's like him saying it's cars, cars would. Cars 2, Cars Harder. <laughs> Sorry for that accent. Bobby. Cars 2, The Edge of Reason. Um, <laughs> is that Bridget Jones? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> um, yeah, what I was going to say was, now that he's accepted the challenge, right, I'm thinking, is Johnny Knoxville going to do a big high spot, like a big bump? Let's think. Because it's Johnny Knoxville, so you'd ex you expect him to. Let's do Hell in a Cell. Let's, re <laughs> let's recreate the magic of WrestleMania 32. Yeah. In the same arena, by the way. Mm. Shame but man. Yeah. But, For the love of mankind. Mm. But in a portaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, on a, Sammy Zane, that's going to take a Sammy, if you know what I mean. Why are you on a loofah <laughs> kick? Oh, I've got a bold pick, but not that bold. I think at WrestleMania backstage, one of the skits will be an interaction between Wee Man and a returning Hornswoggle. I was going to say Brock Lesnar there. Or oh, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> oh, but it's the Wee Man. <laughs> but it sets up Wee Man goes, oh, I'm going to take a role. Uh, I I'm going to not, I'm going to refuse to take a role as a evil dwarfsman or whatever. And then Hornswoggle's going to show up like he'd done Fox News to get all angry. <laughs> <laughs> so a long way to go for that point. Very sorry. Lesnar telling that story was fantastic though. How Wee Man apparently was just like, I'll take you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's like, wait, no, I'll put you through this table. You little <laughs> dafty. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess if you're a wee man and all the stunts you've done, Brock Lesnar's saying, I'm going to throw you around. It's like, done that. Yeah. I did that this morning. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but F5 through <laughs> tables excite me, in the words of Rihanna. And yeah. also wee man. That's right. Mm. <laughs> Austin Theory comes out and talks trash to Pat McAfee before revealing that he's his opponent at WrestleMania. He slaps him and heads to the back, doing that thing that all bad guys in the do where it's like, you suck and I hate you. Oh, yeah, I want to fight? No, I'm going to run the back. <laughs> <laughs> Pat yeah. was fantastic in this segment. Was, yeah. Just repeatedly screaming, I don't know who you are <laughs> in Austin Theory yeah. and also describing him as a, a boy toy thirst trap. <laughs> yeah. Austin's hey, Pat's not a million miles away from being a boy toy thirst trap, by the way. Oh, absolutely. He's a handsome yeah. man. He's actually got shorts on that make him mm. mad. <laughs> It's weird they're friends after that. Yeah. It's nice yeah. that they move past that initial yeah. road bar. And, and considering that Michael Cole is a horrible human being. Oh, uh, yeah. Horrible. <laughs> uh, horrible, horrible human exactly being. Exactly. He did that and he didn't even laugh. And there's Pat McCaffrey's like, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> And then he's like, no, he is. I meant that. <laughs> there's never been one thing about joking. Cole, though, has there? Like being a dickhead ever. Just the, just a, Apart in, from Pat's thing. Just in like the um, work sense. Well, he's, he was but he's a stickler for the he rules. He was being a jobs worth there. Yeah. Wasn't he? I know he's been a dickhead. But not like, not like, good point, actually, actually like bullying people backstage no. or anything, no. People just hold his, his fed lines against him, mm. don't they? If it was never yes. for, for that heel run, I don't think he'd get as much hate as he does. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't yeah. his fault. No, it wasn't. No. Go out there and annoy people. He was too good right. a heel. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Naomi faces Carmella. Queen Zelina tries to interfere, but Sasha Banks cuts her off, allowing Naomi to pick up the win really quickly. Yeah. Why, why is Natalia watching on? That's the question. Oh, is she? Oh. She's watching on from backstage. She's got no partner, has she? She's got no fans, mate. Apart from a, a, a big book. <laughs> yeah, she's good. Coming down the to the ring, it's... Natalia and her partner, the Guinness Book of World <laughs> Records 2022. At least fair play to her, though, because Naomi Online, sorry, uh, Natalia Online, there we go. Well, they're both good online. But Natalia Online is way better than SmackDown, yeah. Natalia, right. because she looked at it like, you know, 
Ah, here we go. Natalia watching the big cultaholic screen like this at a weird angle. And it was like, Natalia's representative like to point out that Natalia watches all the things like this. <laughs> they're doing all the activities with things in the corner of her head. So, yeah. Fair play to her. Yeah. This match did nothing, though. Carmella was, it advanced the story. Was was this the one or was it on Raw? It was on Raw when she oh, started. Oh, when she started flirting with, yeah. oh, because it was Corey. Of course he's on commentary. It wasn't this one, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I've got that to look forward to. Happy Corbin and Madcap Moss are playing poker They're just backstage. the lads, He's Matthew. Taken... They're just the lads. Take it from the greatest gimmick of all time. Dull Hudson. He's yeah. at it. Poker mm. player. Pop, 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 poker face. Pop, pop, poker face. Ma, 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 ma. Exactly. Cherry pie, cherry pie. I'm Duke Hudson. <laughs> and nothing about Drew McIntyre. Corbin says he'll beat Drew at WrestleMania. Drew has a match against Jinder Mahal and wins backstage Corbin. Isn't laughing anymore. No, no he's, no, he's serious. He's Corbin. Concerned, Corbin. Yeah. He's double C. He's bricking it, Corbin. <laughs> Pat tried it. He's like Corbin and Moss backstage right now playing poker with, and then just stop talking. It's like <laughs> with these lads. But then later on, they're playing darts because they are the lads. <laughs> but this is the boys. I'm surprised Rich yeah. Holland wasn't there. It, right, but it was such, such a great setup segment because the way the three works is all right. So like the darts have been thrown, and <laughs> Corbin turns around and goes, huh. Those are very good darts. <laughs> and then a giant sword. Huh? And it looks right at him. So, and then <laughs> Drew has to be there the entire time for that shot to work, which is great. No, he, yeah. he just, he long darted it from a long way away. Yeah. yeah. He did, but then he's like, where are you? And then he's like, there. <laughs> like, there he, anyway. He's a Scottish psychopath. He can move at the speed of light. Mm. I thought, I, that made me laugh out loud that I did in the yeah. office when it happened. It I fantastic. thought that was going to be your move of the week. Oh, no. Okay. No, no. I don't know what it is what, this the, week. We'll find out what's going on. What, the triple 20 wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> Double top for the win. <laughs> yeah. But well, at least they tried a bit here with him. Ha ha, old jokes. And then seeing Drew McIntyre. And again, they frame it so it looks like Drew's looking at him via the TV. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. looking at you. Uh, nah, okay, it was all right. It was a bit, match at all. Bit bo- it was a match we've only seen three times before on TV, which I was astounded by. Astounded. Yeah, it feels like a... Match that's happened a lot. Yeah. What, Drew versus Jinder? Drew versus Jinder. In singles ah. competition. Three times before this week's match. three man band. I was going to say. But I guess a legend of the sport. A lot of people around the world will have seen it on house matches because that's what took place in New Asla Pontine. Ah. Ah. Where they had a, they did, it was amazing. Like I saw the footage from the Glasgow show, the Glasgow show. I'm just trying to say it like Americans do. Um, and they did the same table spot in the same place with the same sort of move. I oh. didn't realize it was that. Yeah, they're considered the uh, dry runs, unlike yeah. this podcast, which is continuously continues to be a wet run, as we hear the sounds of someone else going to the <sighs> toilet in the background. It's so loud in here. We on the side of the ball. In the inside of the ball, not just the... <laughs> We need to invest in one of those little goals you can put on the... Mm. Oh, do you yeah. reckon they'll work in a normal toilet, like they do with your rhino? How was football? I should have asked you about oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of, them yeah. Were, some of the lads from the office played five a side. I didn't. I'm, I'm oh. going to join in next week. But my my little feet were still sore from my big walk that time, <laughs> so don't laugh at that. They were my little feet. My little feet. Oh, my little feet. <laughs> my my plates of meat were still sore. Uh, um, I, I tweaked both my calves because <laughs> that's the first ooh. time I've ran around. I've walked plenty, but I haven't ran around like that in a while. Did you do your stretch? I did. I did stretch as well before. I stretched quite mm. vigorously, but it didn't work. Jack Atkins from upstairs, psychopath, does two laps of the court. And it, we went, we booked yeah. five aside, but it was clearly a six to seven aside pitch. Uh, okay. It was huge. It was like being on Wembley. And he ran around that thing twice before he even started. Oh. We played this <laughs> game. You know, you don't lose the touch. I can't run around. It's gone. I just lost the ability to, but the touch is still there. Mm. Like Dimitar ah. Berbatov, Matthew. Dimitar Berbatov. Um, scored a wonderful, well, I scored three or four, but wonderful. Oh. Like, like, it was like... <sighs> I meant to ask. Go on, wait, wait, wait. It's like... There was a goal, like, that the, the Craig Bellamy scored against Leeds United at home in the 2001-2002 oh. season. Of Bellamy. Where he sort of played it across the keeper and just sort of trickled into the far corner. I believe it was Kieran in net at the time, and I did the same to him, and it was fantastic. Oh. Gave it the one arm. Salute hey. for audio listeners. That's the Alan Shearer salute. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, no. My God. Oh, no. <laughs> Just gave it the one arm salute. <laughs> Ross, no, it's not the Hall of Fame segment. Calm down. <laughs> the Alan Shearer running, wheeling away. Yes, that's the tic- what I mean. The ticket tape end, I've, I've, I've coined it as, because it, it had two bits of tape on the wall while the other end didn't. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. But it was good. Um, Alan Shearer, I was going to ask, domination. because <laughs> I've played five side with Ross before at Wackle Joe. And I, I, but out of everybody here, he's the only one I've played football with. Huh. And I was going to use Ross's, how good were you compared to everyone? To, so when I joined, am I going to be the worst one? 
Uh, I don't know. Down in the car. I think there's in terms of who's played football before, there's me and then there's everyone else. But it's yeah, just but... in terms of who can run around the most. Oh, dog. Owen, oh, bless his cotton socks. I don't know if you want me to say this on the on the oh, podcast. Oh, now you have to say Owen, oh, I think, is the fittest, physically fittest of all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. actually runs. But yeah. 10 minutes in, he turns white as a sheet and he had to go outside for a sit down. Oh. It was incredible. Do you think that was because you were on an indoor pitch? Maybe. Maybe if you were outdoors, it would have been fine. Maybe, yeah. That sounds like oh, less of a... Sounds like less of a fitness issue. Just, more. It was a sweaty one. Mm. Uh, it wasn't too hot though, but it just got very sweaty. I get yeah. you. He came back and he, he was all mm. guns blazing. But yeah, oh. it, was, it was a fun time. It sounded we'll very much again. like a group of men approaching or, or just over 30, realizing, oh no, yeah, I'm not in my early 20s yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I realized that with the, with the what culture ones back in the day. Uh, where yeah. the, 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 the body wants to do, sorry, the brain wants to do what the body can't. Yeah. And I think all those men out there are just realizing that now as well. Yeah. Mm. So we had to we reduced ourselves to a game of heads and balls because the pitch oh, was yes. too big to play lengthways. So we went side to side okay. for a little bit with like a narrower pitch. And then that was too much. So we went for a game of heads and balls in the end. <laughs> Which was fun. I love a game of heads uh, and balls. I really want to come to one of these now. Why? Can you play football? Why not? Can you uh, play? I haven't played football in years. Can you kick so the it ball? hilarious. Mm. We'll find out. But it reminds me of when it was my mate's birthday. I won't say his name, Philip. And we went to <laughs> Laser Quest, and he wanted to go. This is like 10 years ago. The one in Shields? Yeah. South Shields? Uh, actually, no. Well, okay. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 we're getting off the topic. We go there. He picked it. Right. I love him. But he's not like a, I'm going to say physical guy, like he's always, you know, Dan Furness or whatever, but like not very physical at all when it comes to it. Many people avoid these things. So he picked this physically arduous thing to do. And we got there, it's all lads, like, Ur. and it's like, all right, well, you can play against these. It was kids. <laughs> like, what? Oh, all right, okay, because now I'm not people. It's all right, cool. And we got there, and obviously they're running around because they're bands. And I'm like, okay, cool, yo, pew, 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 laser, laser, laser. I'm having a good time. And I didn't really appreciate how good I'd be keeping myself. And I didn't really, I'd just been walking everywhere at that point. So to save money on the bus, I was just walking everywhere. Until I saw me, mate, Phil, uh, having to leave the Laser Quest arena to go vomit <laughs> <laughs> because of how absolutely shattered he was at all this activity. He picked it. Yeah. And it looked like it looked like platoon. Like <laughs> 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 all these grown men just losing. These kids are like, what's up? What's wrong with them? <laughs> it is a sad, sober moment when we realize I've just I've let myself go too far here. Yeah. And it's it's gonna be a long, long way back. Do I have the persistence to get myself back? It's not no. Like Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish the old Ross Twaddle would come back. Oh. I need the old Ross Twaddle. <laughs> <laughs> no one didn't care what he put in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> God. Anyway, Nagamora and Rick Boogs make their entrance. Uh, they're attacked by the Usos. But they're, they're, that, this, they're seen this, sorry, this book in here would tell me they're bigger baby, baby faces than Ricochet. Because they were the sacrificial lambs of the piece to get a bigger reaction for the tribal chief. Mm. They couldn't have had Ricochet come out for a champion's ticker, ticker tape parade. And have him beaten down now because no one would have cared. Would have laughed, wouldn't yeah. we? Number two, baby face. <laughs> <laughs> but they're locked in that red hot feud with them in the car dealership. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so oh, they went why. hiking this week. I, I forgot to mention it, but they went hiking, yeah. Yeah, they got beat up and then they went hiking. Yeah. Great bunch of lads. They love that new Toyota. And also, I, I realized what I said last week. Someone pointed out in the comments they went, Jack thinks a Toyota is an American car. I know Toyota is Japanese, but American cars in America are huge. Yeah, they are. The anyway. Canyon Aero is what they're yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rain, uh, Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman arrive. Roman guarantees that'll beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania and that Lesnar will acknowledge him, but he loses his cool as he says it. Interesting. Oh, no, this interesting. Is, Hello, he'll beat him. That farmer's gone under his yeah. skin. Mm. The tribal chief is becoming psychotic. It's keeping up, in, up at night, you can see, in his eyes. He's desperate to beat Brock Lesnar. He's desperate for Lesnar to acknowledge him. I don't think Lesnar will. No. And will it be interesting to see where Reigns goes from there? Yeah. But he's certainly on the downward, downward spiral as we're speaking here mm. today. Absolutely. It's going to suck if you die on God mode. Yeah. Using God mode, you're <laughs> supposed to be able to do that. I think he's turning... I don't know if it was just me, but his cadence while he was cutting his promos, it's becoming a bit more like the rock, Hollywood mm. rock, that sort of cadence. Bacow! Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Chatow! Or sassy John Cena. You know, John Cena would really get into a few. I thought yeah. you meant like Chandler from Friends. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopa! I saw the one the other day where Monica's made a reservation at a wedding place just to see how expensive it would be. And Chandler finds out and she's like, You're not freaked out. Like, no, why would I be freaked out? <laughs> <laughs> He's the best friend, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. 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 
The Usos retained the SmackDown tag titles against the Viking Raiders. The match too hot for Saudi Arabia. Yeah. 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 The, the helmet feud. It, it, yes, very helmety. But yeah, they retained fair and square. Okay. Not yeah. a helmet in sight in the ring, though. No. Near yeah, helmets. In terms of the men involved. Um, that didn't land, did it? Uh, it was good oh, to see the Vikings. Ha ha. I'm not cut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, good to see the Vikings get some moves in and nearly a yeah. couple of near falls and stuff because that's as much as they've had so far. But um, it was interesting to see, obviously, because they were in Miami, the home. Is it Pennsylvania? Oh, it's Florida, isn't it? Shut up, Ross. It's Miami. It's a rock, isn't it? Uh, I'm getting the rock and the tribal chief in a, in a, in a, in a, fud- in a fuddle. A muddle. Uh, so like a fuddle? I, yeah, I'm befuddled. And you're hitting the microphone. I don't I know what's going, going, going for the full I house here. Fl- I always thought Roman was from like San Francisco for some Pensacola, reason. Pensacola, Florida, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know why I thought he was from San Francisco. And then the rocks from that uh, Miami. Don't yeah, from in Miami. Well, yeah. Miami, Florida, I guess. It's good enough for oh, me. Oh yeah, from Miami, Florida. Yeah. Mm. Oh, maybe that's why they were getting cheered then. Florida. That's mm. why I've written it down. Because I just thought it was interesting. They still piped in the booze, even though the crowd were going mental. Mm. Mm. Ooh, sounds. Yeah. Good match though for what it was. Yeah, it was good. I just yeah, I feel for bad what it for was. the Vikings still. Yeah. Good old box tick. Big E is set to face Sheamus, but Ridge Holland beats down Kofi Kingston on the outside. So Sheamus and Ridge ride off on the New Day's ATV and the straight available backstage now. with sledgehammers. <laughs> yes, available now on WShop.com. Yeah, Curious they soon. beat it up like a street fighter in between level. Yeah. Dun, 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 oh no, that three week thing we've had. No. I can only assume toy sales must be going too well if Big E's already had it taken off him and broken. I read what an article on, it was like an opinion piece on like cage side seats or somewhere like that, which was like Big E lost the WWE title. Because to, to ride an ATV. I was like, yeah, in a way. Yeah, he did. Yeah, it was a shame, like, like the cadence and everything from Big E's back to being like, yep, new day. It's like, oh. You should have a bit more Oof. fire and desire and all. They did him dirty. Mm. It was good to see uh, Kofi twerking on the ATV and then getting annihilated by Ridge. That yeah. was a fantastic moment. <laughs> he had to twerk for a long time because Ridge was slightly slow <laughs> and Kofi's just going, come on. <laughs> Kofi sweat like Owen. <laughs> Oh no! I felt really bad. He had this. Oh man! At least he was back. He, he came. He made yeah. it back. Yeah. He made you know what? Bit. That's not nice thing to bring up because Owen might hear that and realize that mm. and get himself in a better shape. He is in really he's good shape. Really good shape. He's in best shape for in the entire minutes. office. Mm. No, I'm not even joking. He, he goes to the gym and he gets he gets on the treadmill and he runs for like 20 minutes. He can just do that. We can't. We I can't. Well, I'm speaking for my, myself and Ross. You might be able to, yeah. but I certainly can't. And I prefer doing just uh, jogging. It out, must have been terminals. like when oh, Austin gets beaten up backstage in the middle of a pay-per-view and you're like, is he going to come out for the main event? Mm. And then Owen comes back in. The glass he did shatters. get a big pop, like, to be fair. Yeah, nice. The, the lads playing on the, the court next to us all going, yeah! <laughs> 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 bottle of water. <laughs> 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 he rode the, he rode the janitor's little thing back in. <laughs> No, he drives that little car that the rugby team's been using for the bottom of it. <laughs> Ronda Rousey faces Sonia Deville on the main event. With Charlotte Flair at ringside. Ronda wins and calls Charlotte into the ring. She gets her an ankle lock and Charlotte taps out. Because Charlotte said she was a one-trick pony. And Charlotte says, uh, Ronda says, no, I've got two submissions. We're going down this route again, lads. They're rewriting history when the history is recorded and has been broadcast on television. Charlotte has never been tapped out is the story. So Ronda will be become the first woman to tap her out. I thought they were saying... She said that. I thought she, she was... We're I thought they were like, saying the first time Charlotte's been submitted in a long time. Oh, no, that's what it was last week. Have they changed the narrative? This week, it's they've ever. Con- they've created... They've controlled their narrative and yeah, they've, they've said... Oh, no, no, they haven't. So this is the ranch room, WWE. Brace yourself for a hectic three minutes. She's tapped out to Asuka, to Natalia, to Sasha, to Becky, to name but a few. you research. Yeah. No, but Arthur, go back to... I thought she said that and you go ah she's queen oh, no, Charlotte the commentators but... said as well the commentators said that yes uh... she's never tapped out she's never tapped out she has Ronda used out. that big fancy word last week quintupitum that meant four years <laughs> oh yeah she did quintupitum mm. <laughs> thank you pal big long word <laughs> <laughs> you know what I can blame that on Austin Theory slapping Pat Daft mm. well, oh, Pat, what's yeah. Michael's excuse mm. concern for his brother yeah he, he loved Pat so much you want to correct him on there <laughs> it's nice like that uh, that moves us on to AW Rampage. Mm. I thought that. I thought Sonya, shout out to oh. Sonya as well, because she made Ronda that hot mama. Sorry, hot mama is the t shirt says. She's got a t shirt that says hot mama, because mm. like hot rod, but mama. Um, she made Ronda look amazing, I thought, the way she was yeah, bumping around yeah. that ring. Yeah. 
I think it's worth saying that Sonia is good at the bumps. Yeah. There's some analysis for you. Good Thank for you Sonia. Sonia. Mm. Yeah. Wins. Losers. Yeah. Sonia Probably. loses, but in a good way. <laughs> AW Rampage, Sammy Guevara successfully defends the TNT title against Darby Allen and Andrade. It was a good match. Went straight in this match. Their fancy pants just went right into it. And Andrade what a hot some match. They're his pants, pants. are quite fancy. Always fancy. Yeah. Not hot pants, just fancy. Just fancy pants. I loved how he was the big show of the piece with the two smaller lads ganging up on him. Right. <laughs> Andrade is massive, but not really. Mm. It was good, but though. Com- just compared to, you know, El Geo del Sting. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that wonderful little match. Then... So it was like a really good match. That's all you could say about it. But there we no, are. What was the yeah. driver? There was some. The word I couldn't. I played it back numerous times. Andrade did a move. It's called the something driver, and I've never seen anything like that before uh, in my life. It looked, uh, it looked amazing. One? I can't remember what it was called. Oh, what did it, it look down. like? Sorry, I mean. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's like when. Um, that's genuinely. <laughs> that's, that's Will Osprey calling him. I was going to say that's that's genuinely what wrestlers sound like when they're calling a match to each other. And then you go over there, and then I go off the ropes, and then what about bam bam bam? Turn around, f you, bang. Like not actually an f you. They say that a lot in the. I love watching wrestlers call matches. It's fascinating. <laughs> Elbow, bang. That move was fantastic. And obviously, and Sammy as well, keeping Darby in a suplex position and mm. taking an Andrade powerbomb. Mm. There was a lot of like, lot of, a lot to like in this movie. Yeah, there was. It was very good. Now, like, sorry, go on. I've said enough. Well, just that Sammy retaining was, I think, the most expected result. But interesting in hindsight, guys. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. More on that later. Pack and Penta challenge the House of Black for Revolution. The House of Black arrive and go, all right, we'll see you three. And Dark Priest Alex... I didn't know what to call him. Who looks a bit daft. (laughs) Tells them they may be missing Phoenix, but it's not me wrestling, you idiot, just because I look like this. No, no, no. It's Eric Redbeard. (laughs) (laughs) I was pleased to see Eric Redbeard. Not as pleased as that crowd. I couldn't believe how he is. And on Sunday as well. Yeah. The two teams brawl and security tries to break them up. Penta breaks the security guard's arm, which seems a bit harsh. He's Penta Oscuro now. He's a bastard after yeah, doing yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Bastard. Your sight may never. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keith Lee beats JD Drake and takes out the rest of the wingmen when they try to attack him afterwards. God, I forgot about the wingmen. Yes. Uh, Team Taz and Orange Cassidy arrive for a big stare down afterwards. Well, JD Drake this week was also in the Work Horsemen. He was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the Work Horsemen are back together. Apparently, they're an established. It's him and yeah. Andy, Anthony Henry. That's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Star of Evolve and uh, VXV. J.D. Drake. J.D. Drake, also the star of The Bowling. Oh, was he? And the next but that was the thing. Oh, with The Bowling King tournament. of The Bowling, yeah. Was he good? Oh, he's the he best. looks like he could have yeah, bowled. Yeah, right. Does, yeah. It, looks, it looks like, yeah, he'd be the King of The Bowling, and he is. Did he do twinkle toes on his run-up? I, I was too big. I had tears in my eyes, so I couldn't see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, Ricky Starks' Keith Lee impersonation is a top tier. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. I was watching the Deadlock podcast. It's yeah. uh, the lads from and uh, uh, New uh, Legacy. Uh, what's it called? New I Legacy Inc. New Legacy Inc. Sorry, right. yeah. Um, they are very funny. Mm. And they said that Keith Lee talks like an Elder Scrolls NPC. <laughs> and then they Photoshop like an, a soldier's helmet onto him. And it's like, greetings and salutations. I hear you're seeking passage to the. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said he looks like he says that on Twitter, and they went and searched, and he had actually tweeted it before in the past. Oh, really? Oh. With salutations. Uh. I've, I've, knowing what we know about what Keith's been through, that finish was amazing. Mm. How he sort of managed to get him up and then around. Good. Nice introduction. Yeah. Yeah. To JD Drake. Yeah. God mm. love him. Aye. Backstage, Mark Sterling reveals that the no-contact clause between Jay Cargill and Jay Conti has expired. Smart Mark's made a mistake here. He's such a smart Mark. Anna J distracts Jade, and Conti attacks her from behind. Why did Smart Mark reveal this? Oh, Smart Mark. I just got it. No, you didn't. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the thing that happened. Yeah. Another AEW backstage interview goes awry. Right. It happened every single time on Dynamite, I think. Every single time. Hey, it was a big week for Tycon. I need to stop hinting at things that we're going to talk hey. about later on, and we'll find out. Yeah, hey, please on. keep listening. <laughs> there was a big review this week. Uh-huh. Stream D beats uh, Layla Gray and keeps her in a submission after the bell. But Hikaru Shida returns with a kendo stick to make the save. <sighs> she came all the way from Japan to hit it with a stick. Apparently, she's That's got how a much show, she dislikes Apparently, her. she's got a show back in Japan. So she's... I think I heard this somewhere. So she's got to go right. back. She's came and done that. Back to Japan. And then back to... No. Maybe she flies on the stick like a broom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope so. 
Uh, <laughs> save that for this, the pay-per-view. That'd be a good, that'd be a good <laughs> thing to do backstage, but obviously she wouldn't be attacked. No, like, don't yeah, I them, came all the way here just to do that. Now I'm going back. Don't give them ideas because they will have Saray do that on NXT. So <laughs> flying on the <laughs> Kendo stick. This, oh. The Serena stuff needs to end already, I think. It's not working, is it? I don't know. What, I like it. I know we're building it at the moment where someone does break the five minute thing, but like it's painful getting there, isn't it? Mm. I'm all right with it because I like watching Dee Brussel. But she's not really doing much, is she? Because the match battering doing... them. I know, but this, that, that's what I mean. Like she's, a not fish do... supper. she's not doing much, though, is she? If it was what happening do you want? on, if it was happening to see on... her wrestle more. <laughs> oh. yeah, then yeah. If it was happening on Dynamite, I'd be more annoyed. But I think on Rampage, it's forgivable. Exactly. I think she's on a Rampage. They oh. need the show after her, Jack. Oh. It's, not, it's not her fault though if her women are terrible well I should rename her segment boring because <gasps> she's on a boring oh. Oh. AW boring in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to AW boring <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be Jericho I think I don't know. look at that <laughs> that's what he says isn't it look at that <laughs> I'm going to scream over everything <laughs> Christian Cage beats Ethan Page very cruel here how we have the face revolution ladder match he celebrates with Jurassic Express but the books and ho 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 Red Dragon. <laughs> Try to steal the tag belts. The good guys take them out to end the show. Ugh. You know what says Face Revolution to me? 56-year-old Christian Cage. He's only 48. Yeah. Which revolution are we talking about? The Bolsheviks. <laughs> and oh, no. Also, he said he... What did he say? He, he made the ladder match famous to Christian oh, Cage. shut up. Words out of his own mouth. Oh, he, he went some way. Sean. Sean and Razor, yeah. Brett. Brett. No, no, Brett. Damn. No one remembers Brett. Oh. I'm sorry. I, I like Brett. I think he's It class. was on the Smash Em Whack Em uh, VHS. Who remembers that, man? <laughs> but Christian did did go some way to making, well, the TLC match, I guess, not the ladder match, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. This was a very house showy match, I thought, in, in the fact that Paige was a heel and Christian was a baby face. But, like, you know, old-fashioned wise. Oh, I'll beat you down. Oh, I'll fight back. I'm a baby yeah. face. <laughs> yeah. That's what he does now in the ring. He's like, where's my... Oh, there you are. Shut up. He's only 48. Is That's he? Like 10 years older than you, isn't it? He looks fantastic. Oh. <laughs> oh. He looks really good. I know. Yeah. He's got abs and everything. Dude, I felt bad when he was in the Elimination Chamber 2012, I think. Right. And he's just taking bumps. And I'm like, oh, God, that poor old man. <laughs> he just looks frail. <laughs> Feel so bad. The mm. main issue with this was the Bucks and ho ho ho, Red, Red Dragon. Dragon. Yeah, he did it. Only realizing one team could win on Sunday during this segment. I oh. hate <laughs> bollocks like that. One tag belt, two tag <laughs> belt. <laughs> My <laughs> medication. <laughs> yes. right. Again, that's why I wasn't looking forward to this tag match, the three way. Yeah. We'll get yeah. to in a minute. But because it's like, oh, it's gonna be all about these two guys. Blah blah blah. I'm so great. But yeah, it ended up being amazing. So and Jungle Boy was like, hold my jungle jock strap. <laughs> <laughs> he was amazing during that match. As we'll speak about later on. And that later on is right now. <laughs> AW Revolution was on Sunday. It was a long thankfully. show. Is this yes. an issue we should discuss? Because I'm all Go for on. the four pay-per-views a year. Mm-hmm. But if you're gonna make them five hours long. Does that not slightly defeat the point of having only four? I think it's it's acceptable because there's only four. Mm. If this was every month, it would be silly. Yeah. But maybe I can just about forgive it. But I've tried to think about it, and I don't think there was any way they could have ordered this card so that some of the matches weren't affected. Like like the main event was always going to have a lot to follow. That was my rationale as well. I think you you have your your matches like the six man tag. As good as Sting was in that one, you have that there so people can go for a piss before the main event. And you have, what was your sort of little point earlier on in the night? I can't remember what it was now. For we'll go away, but... but yeah, you have that as well so people can, again, go for a little breather before yeah. coming back for the big yeah. stuff. In terms of value for money, it was grand. Oh, I was yeah, up there yeah, with that yeah. little the pound bag of uh, Malwams you can get off yeah. forever. But it, yeah, sort of free I, in one stint, I, I would have struggled. But I watched half it uh, come uh, back from Germany the next day after. A bit of a sleep and watch the rest of it. Fair but enough. In one go, it must be nice. Oof. Yeah, I was gonna say you guys uh... watch it twice all the way through me. <sighs> <laughs> anyway, my pre- grind is legitimate. Segway. Thank you. Pre-show hon. I was expecting at least a little chuckle there. I'm sorry, mate. Uh, because it's you. <laughs> I was good. Cheers. Thank sorry. You. I'm, I'm the new IC champion. <laughs> 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 I'll give you the ricochet lap. <laughs> Layla Hirsch beats Chris Statlander after using a turnbuckle behind the referee's back. So she was the heel. Yeah. Even though Chris Statlander said, there's a reason your parents left you in that orphanage. Yeah. 
That's not a nice thing to say. I thought she was going to ditch the alien stuff, Chris. A new side Sh- of her that we've never... Shades of green. A new... Uh, yeah. New shades of that alien. Just, that didn't deserve any reaction. A new, a new side of her that we'd never seen before, she was saying. Aye. Well, I was the same, Chris Tottenham. It was the same. Now I'm from Jupiter. Uh, <laughs> Red Velvet comes out to check on Satlander after the bell. Yeah, cheers, I Red Velvet. I feel so bad for Red Velvet, because it happened again on Dynamite. <laughs> she comes out for the save and nobody gives a toss, do they? It's Red Velvet, that. Yes. <laughs> I, I like oh, Red, Red Velvet. Velvet. Like, I've not got an issue with Red Velvet. It's just the fact that whenever she appears, and she's meant to be a baby face, nobody ever reacts. But Red you wouldn't Velvet. want her saving you. You'd be like, oh, I'm dead. There was two... Red Velvet, there's two things that have happened to her that I feel she's tried her very best given the circumstances. So she was playing that match when Brandy got pregnant. Yep. And it was in way over her head. And I thought did an all right job. Yeah, and the Cody right. and Shark and Jay Cargill. And then they made a... They made a... Get into it confrontation with Britt Baker in Pittsburgh at like the, oh, peak, yeah, yeah, at like the peak of Britt Baker's popularity and I thought that's hard that's a hard spot to be in so I feel bad I also feel bad for Red Velvet yeah. like like what's her name that, that duet the pop punk hey hey you love it Alibi what's it called oh I don't know what I don't know somebody in Celeste when they were put oh, out Daphne and Celeste Daphne and Celeste They're when, they were, pop punk. when they were put they out were... Ooh, uh, stick you, your mama, mama too, and, and your that's time. the one thing. Oh, thank Redden. you. Yeah, they were put out at Redden <laughs> before, like Slipknot yeah. or something. <laughs> they were put out there to die. That's yeah. exactly what Redville was put out there. Bless they, her. They finished the set, Daphne and Celeste. They actually finished their set. I think they're hardcore. So think, they were yeah. braver than Fifty Cent, who played at Leeds <laughs> and went, "I'm not moving for anybody." And then someone <laughs> threw a chair and he went, "Bye." <laughs> So yeah, that's this match why. was good though because there was a few brutal spot, spots like the Hurricane Runner off the apron of the floor. Oh yeah, yeah. I like Layla working the arm. Didn't yep. much care for the finish though because why was I don't understand what the referee was doing to miss the massive turnbuckle. Why was he distracted on the other side of the yeah. ring? Yeah, that was a bit yeah. weird. But um, it was well, I thought it was a good kick off. But sorry, buy in show match. Thank you. Uh, Hook beats QT Marshall. Yeah, yeah. Just the usual Hook goodness here. QT you don't even goodness. know me. QT knows exactly what he's being. Yeah. Yeah, to do. but the less of him, the better. When he's needed for mm. a thing like this with Hook or someone else that needs to be put over in a very convincing manner, he's fantastic. Yep. But why he's now coming on Dynamite, as we'll get onto later, another mm. tease. Um, it's too much of him. Yeah. <laughs> we learned a bit about Hook recently. His personality is that he likes crisps. Mm. Um, Dan Howes and bribed him with crisps so that he wouldn't yep. destroy him. <laughs> yeah, which means he has more character development than Red Velvet. Yeah, yeah, he does. Right fantastic that he outsmarted his trainer mm. here. The Jedi became the Jedi Master. No, yeah, yeah, you know what? You know what? I'll allow it. I mean, I'll check the cameras. Yeah, we'll allow it. Yeah. We also got to see Hook do some things that we've not seen him do yet, like sell and wrestle on the outside. Yeah. And he was good. Yeah, and resist the hips. urge to go to a strip club. He did lots of things we haven't seen him do. Yeah, he hey, I don't, hey, I'll mm. say it again. If he's at a strip club, don't get your phone out. Just let the lad Shocking live his life. behavior, uh, Good almighty me. I There's hate, just unwritten rules. I was about to go on a tirade about I hate strip clubs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too much of a fan. I think I've been twice, and they are very uncomfortable places. To I, you, oh, you, you either feel like yeah, it. or like me, just I'm go, not a yeah, I'm not a yeah look. person. No, I don't no. like. I nearly got chucked out of one. I didn't do anything weird. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good way to start a story, Jack. It was, Carry when, on. it was when we went after a wrestling show once, one of ours, mm-hmm. and um, I tagged along, but I wasn't keen. And I was bored, and I was messaging someone. I think I was seeing someone at the time, and I was like, they've dragged me to this bloody strip club. And then she replied... Yeah, like, work here? <laughs> she replied with, like, a selfie. Yeah, from, from an angle of the room that I'd never seen before. Um, she replied with like, you know when you reply with like a, I put like, I took a selfie and put a caption like, so bored right now. The bouncer thought I was taking a picture of the oh. strippers. And he came over and was like, what are you doing? Get out. And I was like, no, no, I wasn't. And then he scrolled through like all my camera roll looking to prove. And I was like, what's going on? I didn't get chucked out, but I wouldn't have been gutted God, if I had me. Why are those pictures of uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? <laughs> <laughs> Just well, put your fun art, you weirdo. Well, Mr. Yeah, Big Simon, by the way, this oh. is coming up next. Big Don. Don. Callis. Oh, I. Yes, we did. Don Cox. Was that the show? It was. It was on, on the pre-show. Can you make his music? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Was con- okay. was so, much, so much AW this week. God, yeah. A moment where it was during Chris yeah. Statlander's evidence where they played Kenny Omega's Tron <laughs> for a yeah. split second. And I was going, oh. And then his music actually starts playing after that oh. first match. And then, mm. whoa. Yeah. And then out comes Don. Fantastic. Promo did nothing, I didn't think. Nah. Kenny Omega's coming back soon, and he will be the champion. <laughs> and Excalibur was fantastic. Just, just ring his neck. I'll give you hundred dollars. I like how he said um, Adam Cole will win tonight, and he'll be a, he'll be a great transitional champion. I thought that was funny. Hmm, hmm. 
But yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice scarf, though. Yeah. Brings out his eyes, I thought. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. The yeah. House of Black beat Pac, Pender, and Eric Ro- this- Ro- ah! Redbeard. This might have been the best pre show match I've ever seen. Oh, it's it up so there with good. WLC. Yes, it is. After Malachi Black missed Redbeard, making him Muddy Brown Beard. Very Black Beard. Oh, that's way better, wasn't it? Jesus. <laughs> it's me trying to like, mix the palette together. Yeah. Uh, lovely little match here. These two guys can help forever. But it was funny because I knew it was going to happen because Penta, when he's like, all right, pre show, all right, he does this thing where he did all these UK dates where the finish of the match for every time he wrestled was, all right, cool. Package pile driver on the apron. Cool. Then roll in, take a move and get pinned. Mm. Oh. It was nearly the finish here as well. Mm. See, as soon as you hit that package pile driver on the apron, it got, ah, he's not winning. <laughs> he, um, Fraser, the arrogance of youth, was um, getting really annoyed by the amount of times Penta was doing that thing. And I think OSW get annoyed by it as well. That wasn't as much as he normally does it. Normally no. it's a full five minutes at the start of a match, isn't it? Oh, to get the gloves. Ooh. Throw it to the ref. <laughs> uh, if the ref drops it, do the spot again. Yeah. Are you Love to still see drinking it. that sour IPA? I don't know. Part of me's gone, come, if you try and drink it, not pull a face. But... I was going through, you don't think it's too bad and you forget yeah, about yeah, it, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I can do this. I can go back to the well. <laughs> Only the Polish can over there. He's going back here. Look at him, Richard Tubman. I did it. Can I have a bit as oh, well, please? This big Tubman energy. I can't even look at myself when I'm pulling these faces. Yeah, you know what? I think that's what I'll do now. I'll have a sip and actually look what I look like. So I imagine I look like Ren from Ren and Stimpy. It's got a lovely smell, though, isn't it? Berries. Berries Oh, I don't think you're worth it. I thought I would. Oh, God. (laughs) Oh, God. God. Silence Silence on the podcast. Okay. What was yeah, about? Yeah, Eric and Brody oh, were fantastic, God. I thought, and what they did together. That mm. one chain of moves from Penta was stupid. Not in a bad way. In a, like, oh my God, how's he done that? He's a stupid boy. He's a stupid boy. <laughs> Incredible precedent set for Penta on the, on the kickoff show. Um, oh, he's popped the. Well, just me there, but the I know re- what he means. <laughs> the ref abiding by the rules. Penta was an illegal man at one mm. point. That mm. was staggering as well, because never normally do the rules in tag team matches. Mm. I can't remember if it was Rick Knox doing the refereeing, but if it was him. He's learning. Yeah. <laughs> and referee, thought, Rick Knox. Huh? I thought Eric died on the finish. The oh, way he landed. I like thought that it, over-the-shoulder yeah. tombstone. Take it beautifully, uh, didn't he? I, I like to see the top of his head. <laughs> but it's red raw. <laughs> Skimming off the mat. A lot of tombstones on this show, mm. actually. There was. Yeah. It's the new DDT. <laughs> yeah. Jade <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the Snake through to the rock when I was growing up. Just a transitional move. Yep. Now we've got Taker going through to everybody in AEW. Just a yep. transitional move. Even when they jump up high. He wasn't mm. jumped up high, was it? I don't um, know. Someone maybe. jumped up high. On was it show. Jade Cargill? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Let well, us know in the We can better remember the show, so that's a good start. The main show begins now. Oh, what yes. a pre show that was. Good God. Eddie Kingston beats Chris Jericho with the stretch plum. Uh, we all said before, like, looking forward to this match as long as Eddie Kingston wins. Yeah. And he won. I don't care if Jericho's looking 10 years younger with his new hair and not having the opportunity to go out and be a rock and roller on his little tours that he usually does. He's just doing yoga and eating Huel and drinking spinach and doing whatever he needs to do. Looking great, but not as good as Eddie Kingston. Not quite up to par. And Eddie Kingston won. And it, was, hour. it was a great match. It was a great start of the match. Yeah. With the oh, the big German suplex or whatever. Funny you should speak about that, Jack, because that's my move of the oh! week. Oh! oh. Just the sheer shock of the first move of the main show being that and Jericho landing on the crown of his tet, as the French would say, was absolutely fantastic. I think credit to Jericho because obviously we've watched AEW and I'm not going to comment on what he looks like and what he doesn't look like. He still looks better than I'll ever look in my life ever. But you can see sometimes he's lost a step, which is naturally going to happen as well. But in this match, he was back to being... A few years ago, Chris Jericho, yep. mm. doing the moves that he wouldn't normally do, the suplex off the apron, all the yep. suplexes. He was giving them back to Kingston. We had the strikes and stuff like that. I like the, I like the, the stretch plum as well. I never mm. heard about the stretch plum until until that match. Yeah, Kawada loves a bit of old Japan yeah. in the 90s, so I, think that's, I believe it's Kawada's finisher. <laughs> you just, I wouldn't know. <laughs> no, it was just, you were right. You, you said Kawada loves a bit of 90s old Japan, and I'm like, I'm sure he does. <laughs> <laughs> he was bloody there. <laughs> Kingston loves a bit of 90s old Japan. Yeah, yeah. he does. Um, uh, I am... Um, I haven't seen much Kawada. I know that Eddie Kingston loves him and all of the 
strong style boys. Even though he wasn't in the strong style promotion, he was the most strong style of the King's Road style of oh. all Japan. Um, Watching the Joseph Winners uh, videos. Four pillars. Oof. Yes, that's right. Four pillars on my shirt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tawe, Giant still gleaming, blah, blah, still bleeding. <laughs> yeah. um, but I love the aftermath as well with the handshake or lack of, or lack thereof. Mm. That bastard. Mm. He said he would and he didn't. I can't be Jericho would lie. He did because you get into the, the swing of watching these old fellas come back and wrestle these younger fellas. I'm not going to say young fellas for Kingston, but younger fellas. Mm. And it's like the younger fellas have to do what the old fellas did. Mm. But in this one, Kingston did what the younger fella was doing. Yeah, He wrestled a Kingston match. Yes. I hope he does that more. I hope he does. I don't think he will. I don't think he will either. Given what we <laughs> saw later on. And he has stopped teasing it. Well, what we saw later. <laughs> it's like I'm throwing On the it next out. episode yeah. of Dragon Ball Z. The books and... Ho, ho, ho. Red Dragon. Word together at first, but eventually fall out in their tag title match with Jurassic Express. Just as here, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus wins, retain the belts. I don't think that does enough justice. <laughs> no, no, no. But yeah. how hard... Little Jungle Jack Boy Perry work his <laughs> little gym. <laughs> yes, his little cotton socks, which mm. he doesn't wear because he's in the jungle. Uh, it worked hard here. My God, it was like a highlight reel for the lad. The, the, and also, Luchasaurus was there. The second place in my move of the week was that when he what, what did, was it just a superplex off the top rope. So, but he landed and then did a German in one move. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God! It was an inventive counter to the more bang for your buck mm. maneuver. How the bloody hell do you do that? Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I know that you're right in that you didn't like how it's as if Red Dragon and the Bucks didn't know that only one team could win but I like the slow gradual falling apart throughout the match as well I thought that was good I yeah, enjoyed the match clapped yep. to the ring didn't they they did and then they fell out then they had the moment where they realised oh my god they just broke up our pinfall yeah Matt Jackson's a silly goose <laughs> Matt Jackson's a very silly goose because he didn't he was like why have you broken up a pinfall well, because... And they did that trope where there was an accidental super kick and Matt took offence to it because he thought it was on purpose, even though it clearly wasn't. <gasps> yeah. Oh. You know, can you believe it? Bloody can nice. you believe it? Well, That's couple... Nick, you silly man. Whatever, they're both the same. <laughs> <laughs> no! Nick's the better one. And Matt, Matt, them were. The Jungle Boy was the better one here yeah. in this yeah, match. Yeah, he was. It was a fantastic More match. boy to so, your book. So handsome. Um, Max Caster implied that he's, he said, you've never seen boobs! And then said he's got no pubes as well. And Anna Jay just tweeted, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then deleted it. But what do you uh, uh, which one? Yeah, which yeah, one did you he mean? Got pubes oh. or has he seen boobs? Maybe both. Oh. 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 oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Sorry, Jack's gonna go, we'll find out more on that later on. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> Wardlow wins the face of the revolution ladder match after power bombing Ricky Starks into a bloody ladder filled death. Yeah. Is Ricky okay? Ricky, yes, he is. It was, was like, case was revealed by the cultaholic news hounds. It was like Wardlow was going for the power bomb, but Ricky's body weight went before Wardlow was ready to do that. Mm. So he just sort of fell, didn't he? And if you love that spot, you'll love this week's episode of Dynamite because Jake yeah. Hager went, I can do oh that as well. Oh my God. Yeah. Anyway. But, Orange Catterdy though. <laughs> oh, he's injured now. Aye, but he was fantastic in this match, wasn't he? Yeah. That couple of yep. spots where he used the big beefy men as a ladder, a human ladder. Mm. Then when the big beefy lads were holding mm. the ladder, the core strength on show. Oh. Get himself up there and then... Like Shawn Michaels, but, yeah. with, but with a ladder. I tried to skin the cat. Jim Cornette wasn't And then fine. I'm going, no. I'll listen, <laughs> I'll listen to Jim Cornette's take on this, just out of interest. Oh, that's definitely what I want to listen to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah, great. I'll just say he didn't like it. <laughs> Did he not? No, no, no. You know what, that would have been the... You know, he should just one day just do a really brave review of AEW <laughs> just to throw people off. Oh, uh, I think uh, that's the only bit I listen to, but I think he liked Punk and MJ. Okay, fair enough. Well, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. But now this match was half it I liked because, yeah, the spots, yeah, people did moves, yeah, cool. But there's one moment which really ground my gears oh, when everyone's oh, on the outside oh. and Wardlow, I think uh, he just dumps someone outside and the crowd's going, everyone's down. Wardlow, go put up a ladder and do it. And he went, no, I have to go outside and brawl with Hobbs and Lee for a bit yeah. and do something with them. And it's like, when the ladder matches start being about getting the thing off the, the ladder, yeah. um, hanging above the ring, it's like, okay, this is getting a bit silly now. Yeah. I don't know, obviously, yes, loads of great ladder matches have done this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting old. It's just when you have to do spots that defy the, pur the purpose of the match. Like, yeah. Right, okay. To counteract your point, though, Matthew, to come back at you like the devil's advocate, could he not have been looking at the bigger picture here? Because to, to, to ignore the, the ring above the ring, 
He went and took out Powerhouse Hobbs and Keith Lee off the stage, therefore giving himself a better chance to win later uh, on. Yeah, the fact that he nullified won. the big yeah, sweaty say, the fact that he, <laughs> the fact that he nullified that and then ended up winning is like okay, fair enough. For me, the sillier bit was, and I think it was just a mistake. I think he, he watched. He was stood in the corner of the ring and watched Ricky Starks climb up, yeah. and then Danhausen came out. I think Wardlow wasn't meant to be in the ring for that bit. I think Danhausen was meant to just be in there on his own. Why well, Danhausen just appears and does nothing? He did. He well he cursed him. <laughs> cursed, yeah. Oh, he actually did. Yeah. He did. Uh, oh, so Danhausen's to blame for that. Yeah. Do bad things actually happen to everyone that Danhausen curses? Maybe. Oh. Wow. Hmm. It's it. Well, yeah, to be fair, he's, he's, he must have cursed Slack. Anyway. <laughs> have you seen Dan Housen's appearance on Conan O'Brien? No. What? No, he wasn't on I the show. About it was over Zoom. It wasn't, it must have been oh. during the pandemic. Yeah. But yeah, he's just out of character. And he's like, Conan's like, he's got to guess what this guy does. And then he's like, no, you're wrong. I'm a, I'm a wrestler. And then he's like, explain your character. And he says, he's like, well, I, I pour teeth in my opponent's mouth. So he's, Conan's like, this is already amazing. Like, yeah. Conan loves it. Yeah. I was surprised. I've never seen him. Out of character before. He was a pleasant man. Yeah. I had to convince him to do the straight to hell in character. Oh, did you? Yeah, which I thought was astonishing. Yeah. Well, I guess it's like what, an hour or so of talking, so it's like. It's half an hour, that one, but like. Yeah. yeah that's what yeah. the people want to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly, given the reaction you had on this show. Yeah. You've um, got to give the people what they want. Exactly. Elliot Carver. Give the people what uh, they want. <laughs> they'll print anything nowadays. <laughs> Then Tony Schiavone introduces uh, Shane Swerve Strickland into the least protected secret in all of wrestling. That's the contract he was holding yep. up with massive Swerve yeah, written it? on it. Yeah. I like this promo. It's oh, a yeah. different different vibe in it to the Hit Row days. It's so very cool. intense. This now he's like, oh yeah, whose house is it, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Austin Powers? He's yeah. <laughs> Doing the kisses in the air and all that sort of stuff is quite a... He was the second sexiest and most charming man on AEW TV this week. Go on then. William Regal. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You got me there. Ooh, and everywhere. Jay Cargill retains the TBS title after shoving Take on his head into a ring post camera. I enjoyed this match. Mm-hmm. It was a it was a short burst of energy. <laughs> burst. <laughs> I thought it was fast paced and it, it got me back into the, like, I was like, oh, here I am. I'm, I'm invested again. Like, I'm, it got me back on board because I was like, oh, this isn't one of the matches I was most looking forward to. And it over-delivered for me. Oh, okay. Mm. I was blown away by the kisses, which, <laughs> which people have since let me know is all about, the, I think the, those two especially, Ty Conti and Jay Cargill and Hangman with his entrance gear with the colors on, uh, the rainbow colors on, it was about the, the don't say gay bill that's going on in oh, Florida. Oh, I uh, see. I didn't make that connection. I think, yeah, I didn't make, people have let me know in the comments of videos and stuff. So, But well, then that's good. on Dynamite, Jay was like, uh, who wants to receive my kiss of death in matches going forward? So in it, that bitch house. That bitch show. That bitch show, sorry. TBS. Yeah. TBS channel. Oh, all oh, right. Yeah, um, but it looks, it, I don't know if that was like the origin just because they're in Florida or whatnot, but uh, yeah, it was a nice back and forth thing. I think Jade gets better by the match because Ty Conti's yeah. not exactly an established, like not a, a veteran of the squared circle. So yeah. yeah. Jade Cargill went up top and I was like, uh oh. And she did an amazing frog splash. And she did. I was like, wow. And, and then, then Ty Ty kicked Con out. And then Ty Conti did a pile driver yep. and comedy went, pile driver there from Ty Conti. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was like, eh? yeah. yeah, they did what they could. I think. Jade does get better and better. This wasn't she wasn't quite up to this level yet, but it wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. I was like Jade beating up people is great. Uh huh. Keep yeah. it like that. I think Ty's a very natural baby face. Yeah. She paid homage to one of the greats of uh of well, one of the great heels of, of cinema, this without attire though, with the, the, the black round the eyes. Like well. one of the bad lads from Home Alone Three. <laughs> you know what I mean? He gets in the <laughs> in the letterbox. That's and gets what she sprayed. was going for, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. One of the greats of cinema. Jade Cargill went, this is my town. Watch your step if you come around. That's it. Love I'll Home see Alone Ross AEW show over Home Alone 3, <laughs> Arrow, other oh, Home Alones. It is good. <laughs> Ross. It's just not as iconic as the other two. Yeah. And therefore people crap on it, you know. I'll take your word for it. Did you see that new one they did? No. <laughs> is, that the, is that where you draw the line? <laughs> I just didn't like the look of it. Yeah. CM Punk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he makes his entrance. Um, what an entrance it was. Ring of Honor has been bought out by his new boss. Three brothers. Three brothers, bloody put. Oh, okay. Three brothers, bloody put. Theme from Ring of Honor. 
and nearly everybody enjoys it. Nearly everybody. Nearly everyone enjoys the classic eight. Who eight didn't enjoy it? Team. No, I just no. I Who is matter. this person? No, it doesn't matter. Or people. Just some people on Twitter didn't enjoy Ooh. it. So someone on Twitter was claiming <laughs> <laughs> that. We don't, have, we don't have to say. <laughs> I'm not going to name names, but someone on Twitter. Dan Housen. Dan Housen was. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> someone on Twitter was saying, "This is bad." Because people are confused, because some a lot of people won't know that that she used to be punk's Ring of Honor theme. Obviously, the people who already knew that went mad. They were like, "This is the best thing ever," because MJF had already stolen cult of personality for his entrance. It's like, well, what's Punk gonna do? He's stolen his thunder. No, 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 he hasn't. First of all, the the guy was wrong for two reasons. One, Excalibur did explain it pretty much. Uh, yeah, that's a key point. Pretty to much remember. straight away, right? And and people were like willfully ignoring that to make their point. I think a lot of people, whether they're pro AEW or pro WWE, a lot of people will willfully misunderstand something to make the other side look bad. Um, yeah. And and he was also wrong because he made a point like saying, so you've someone said something and said, you've said you started watching wrestling in the 90s. Do you know about wrestling in the 80s? And the guy was like, yeah. Yep. So <laughs> the, inter- the internet is a thing. Yeah. And, no. all, and also, like, if you grow up a, f- a wrestling fan, I'm not a Ring of Honor expert by any stretch of any imagination, but I've got, a, a, like, a, 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 a basic knowledge of what went on. I knew that CM Punk song. I didn't watch a second ring of Ring of Honor live growing up mm. during the noise when CM Punk was doing that. But I know about the stuff with Raven and all that sort of stuff. You read about it in places, yeah. isn't that? Yeah. Just and when you're consuming wrestling, it's just part of the part of the picture right. all the time. Isn't it? And even if you didn't know that, or the Raven thing, or you didn't read Power Slam magazine back in the day and you were blissfully unaware, why would you, if you are a podcaster or a journalist <laughs> or anything like that, willfully go online and goes, I don't know what this is, especially when they've said, by the way, that's his Ring of Honor music and his Ring of mm-hmm. Honor tights, oh, tights, short, uh, and then go, I don't understand. Yeah. Like, why? Why would you? Why would you even tweet that? Why just think it? I thought it was a cool. I don't know what this is. Uh, Great. Well, it's always a journal then. Eh? I think just to try and take the shine off what was a really good moment. I guess that's the only reason I oh, think to do goosebumps, it. Goosebumps! That that theme coming out and just the well, science I, well, of the commentators until Joe and what's this? I was um, jealous of I was jealous of people who were there watching Ring of Honor. And the guys sing along like dun, yeah, dun, 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 yeah. Dun, dun. Oh. Yeah. Adrenaline <laughs> in my soul. Missouri so How do you say Rose. that second word? Cantare or Cantare? Oh, God. No. I think oh, Cantare. No, they don't Missouri say it in the Cantare, song. Cody Rhodes. Mm. It was a good entrance mm. and a good match. What a match. Mm. It was this lovely story as well because the whole thing's been about we learned that CM Punk is the reason MJF is the way he is. Yeah. So CM Punk's created that monster. MJF's like, well, you're not much of a monster these days. I want the old CM Punk yeah. back. And he brought it back and he battered him. Yeah. It's a lovely yeah. story. They're all both creating their monsters. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to get so bad. And MJF's <laughs> continuing the cycle, making his own monster, Wardlow. Yes. Oh, yes. Anyway. Can I get rid of monsters? <laughs> oh, wow. Have ring. The monsters theme is fantastic. The other day, mm. Aiden put on the song, What's That Coming Over the Hill? Is it a monster? Be and then what did he do? I don't know. He put on a, 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 a rip-off version of the... Oh, uh, he first put on a weird version, and yeah. we were like, that's by the automatic. <laughs> and he went, oh. Child. He called it, like, the spooky men or the something. Men, <laughs> I yeah. don't know what it was. <laughs> and they played it. It was amazing. Yeah, it was a weird cover. The spooky men. I can't remember what he said. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, love this. He wins a dog collar match after Waldo refuses to help MGF to a huge reaction. Afterwards, belt, uh, sorry, Punk makes the belt motion as he celebrates. That's... I love that. I want the TBS title. Yeah, it's lucky... <laughs> He's so good at bleeding as well. Mm. Oh, lots of bleeding. He's found show. his corn as a professional wrestler, that man has. <laughs> yeah. How many aspirins do you reckon they have to take to get the blood like that? Oh, Shin Punk wouldn't take any. Oh, oh yeah. Straight edge? Of course. He's, he's got to have taken some. <laughs> nah, he, he was very adamant that he doesn't even he didn't use to even take Paracetamol. When, when he broke his neck, he was wow. like, that was yeah. hard because I didn't take any. Yeah. Bloody hell. What lovely yeah. thin blood he has. <laughs> <laughs> to get that red, like grommet, when he gets the jam yeah. on his face. <laughs> I love that image you said. <laughs> um... Uh, it, it, it was good. It made sense as well as the story in the match as well. Yeah. It just become a brutal thing, like mm. MJF trying to get away, punk toying with him, then get a bit more brutal and a bit more yeah. desperate. There was lots of long matches on the show. This one was a long match, but didn't feel long. I thought Wardlow played his role perfectly as well because mm. he didn't exactly give Punk the ring. He just left it there. there MJF could have got it for all he knew. Yeah. yeah. At the time. Sneaky boy. Yeah. The pop was huge when he did that. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. 
Britt Baker beats Thunder Rosa to retain the AW Women's title after lots of interference from Jamie Hayter and Rebel. No. Bollocks, man. <laughs> It's, hap- it's it's becoming mm. Groundhog Day yep. while watching a Britt Baker title defense because the same thing appears to happen nine times out of ten. And this one especially, the referee just didn't get them away from ringside, which he's allowed to do, and he just didn't choose to do it. And it's just be, I think uh, it made no sense watching it live, seeing Britt Baker win, but going on social media afterwards, I think it was Big SRS, the big dog himself, <laughs> saying that uh, next week's Dynamite is where Satya is in Thunder Rosa's hometown. Ah, oh. so now that makes a bit more sense. Okay, after what was one Well, it's last in night. San Antonio, but I thought her hometown was the graveyards of Tijuana. Can he get a ring in the graveyards of Tijuana? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Vampiro and Sting had a match like that. They did. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was a graveyard smash. <laughs> um, I felt bad for our boy Steve from OSW Review V1 because he tweeted oh, all those great takes he has. Don't draw me into that again. What did he so, say? Steve made a good point, and he said. Thunder Rosa looked miserable coming out of the ring. And and then within sort of two hours of that, like 20 more people had tweeted, Thunder Rosa looked a bit miserable coming out of the ring. And I was like, Steve got there first. Come on, guys. He might not have for all I know. I didn't even think she looked miserable. I never clocked he, on that. He, inclu- he included a clip of her entrance and she didn't look as fired up as usual. But she might have been going for like a, I mean, serious special entrance gear kind of thing. So I'm not sure which one it was. Yeah. But also, I thought that was it. There was, a, there was lots of news stories this week about one match in particular having lots of changes to the finish done as the week was going on. Was it this match? I would assume yeah. it was. Uh, so maybe it has something to do with that as well. I don't know, though. I love that, like, Buff Bagwell came in the ring. is like, it was so noticeable. And there's, I, I go, yeah, I'm losing faith. <laughs> now, anyone does, anyone's not going, yay! He's like, oh, is it being buffed. Is it Big Boss Man who was meant to, like, tap the step if he was going to win or something like that? I've know. heard that, but I haven't yeah, gone back and checked. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Very interesting. The new yeah. title belt yeah. is a massive improvement. Yes. Mm. So a lot of people going, well, it looks like this belt and Lucha Underground Legends or whatever. I don't care. <laughs> They're not around anymore. Oh, the Gift of the Gods Challenge does. It is that the one it is, Richard? I think so, yeah. The resident Lucha Underground expert. Of course. Um, but I think I it's... I still a... confirmed it, Richard. Mm. Why have we thrown to you? Because he... he and he swore that. He bloody loves it, so he does that much. I used to love it. I had a T-shirt with it on. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a massive upgrade. It's a shame they've, t- they've had to go like, oh my God, the TBS title is a bit more impressive than our world title. Let's mm, have that to change it. But yeah. at least we got there in the end. Yeah. This match was, it was just there. Again, Britt Baker, it's like, okay, same thing over and over again. Pay view opponent. No end in sight on, until next week. Hopefully well, we had it happen. Yeah. So and no, she's been great. Actually, but like everyone has a, all right, okay, time to end this title reign. Yeah. I was about to mention the stipulation, but I'll wait until we get to that. I thought it was a, a couple of telling things with Jamie Hayter as well. Ooh. It was all Rebel getting involved, wasn't it, during this match? Mm. And then on Dynamite, for that backstage segment they had, like they do every week, Jamie Hayter wasn't dressed like the other two. Ooh. Didn't oh. have black and gold on. She Subtext. merely had black on. <gasps> I'm not a coward. I mean, AEW's not a coward. They use sub. They don't use sub. They do use oh. subtext. They are, oh, ca- they are coward. That they was coward. great seeing two people bungle the same quote. <laughs> Tag team. <laughs> And then John Moxie beats Brian Danielson after reversing the triangle into a pinfall. Mm. And to begin with, the crowd was like, oh, God, it's a lot, a lot of wrestling on this show. And it felt like, yeah, I, I don't blame you, lads. We've had a lot. We've had a lot of matches in the dog collar and everything yeah. else that's happened. So gradually, bit by bit, punch by punch. Blood by blood. By blood. Yeah, blood by blood. Minute, minute after minute. Huh. Hour after hour. They got them back into it. Yeah. I think very impressive. And they absolutely smashed each other. This is so great. Danielson, hi, I know all the holds. I'm very technically gifted. I'm really hard. Moxie, yeah, I'm just a messed up individual. All right, cool. See how this goes. Who would win a real fight between the two? Because Mox- real fight. Moxley's way bigger, but Brian's got the techers. I reckon Moxley would batter him. Fair enough. Brian would try to be fancy. <laughs> and Moxley would just batter him while we he was trying to be fancy. We need a brawl for all in <laughs> Adel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think Danielson gets enough prep time. He can probably wrap Moxie in whatever hold. Maybe. You made him sound like a, a burrito there. Ooh. He gets plenty of, plenty of prep time. <laughs> I thought that this match was like the, the second cow, we will call it. The second the second disco biscuit. The okay, 3 yeah, that's dis- what I thought you said. The 3 a.m. disco biscuit, where you're just like, oh, I want to go home now, but then whoop, whoop. I was going to say, it's either that, or if you don't know what that means, when you're like, oh, look, I'm, I'm really tired now. I'm, I'm out of energy. I think I might call a taxi. And then like 
your song comes on. Adrenaline! Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're, yeah, one more song! If you're right, the, the, quite possibly it would actually be that song. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Aye. Or the full version of, like, Sexy Boy, where it repeats twice, like, no. Okay, lads, I'm still playing. I like the guitar solo, though. Yeah. Did your heart out, girls. But, yeah, this match was wonderful. And then, Willie Regal. Wow. The Lord himself, using his WWE name, thought it was very interesting. Yeah. I think he filed the trademark, didn't he? So maybe there's some uh, sort of thing there uh, he can uh, do. I don't know. Yeah. I says, know nothing. You come my name, I'll put you in a regal stretch. And uh, <laughs> comes out, slaps him both, says, makes him shake hands. I think it was Tom Campbell himself, and many people have said, yeah, it's like the dad who comes home, sees the kids fighting. He goes, oh, stop this. Hopefully without slapping them in the face. That's how I went for dinner lady energy instead. More like a dinner lady. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Imagine yeah. there's two little boys in the corner <laughs> scrapping. Yeah. She's seen them. She's gone straight across. <laughs> grab them by the collar. Shake hands. Get on with it. Yeah. Now, to... now be a tag team and I'll manage you <laughs> on the playground. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> th is there something to be said about the finish? Because I thought the finish of the match was a bit bollocks because there was... Did you? There was clear daylight. If you pause it at the right time, clear daylight between Brian's shoulder. Oh, no, it was Moxley who got pinned, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Go on then. Tell us more Wait about the spotlight. I'm going to shut up. Hang on. Is, just, your, is your point the I, same? or No, it's different. It's completely changed because I, I forgot who won the match. But Moxley, <laughs> Moxley did clip the bottom rope with his leggies that as, he, flew, as, as well. he flipped over. The referee, the, referee didn't ignored, see it. the referee ignored it. Will uh, the referee ignored the uh, Goldberg getting the ropes at Saudi Arabia. I hate this job, oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done a video on Monday where I was like, it was clear daylight between Brian's shoulder and the mat. And the fort and the mat. Oh. He, didn't, he didn't even lose. No. Oh, man alive. Brian did lose. Yeah, but are you all right? Bri no, Brian Moxley won, the, so Brian's... Yeah, so... But uh, my point was there was clear daylight between Brian's shoulder and the mat. Yeah. 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 Insinuating that because Brian lost, that should have been restarted. But Brian didn't lose, did he? he Brian did. did lose. Brian did lose. Moxley are you won. you all right, man? Yeah! yeah. I hate pay-per-view week. <laughs> pay-per-view week plus <coughs> nasty, sour stuff. Mm. Right. Should we just start the podcast again? <laughs> <laughs> no. So you made so a very bad point. point is right. Yes, there was daylight. There was between Brian's shoulder and the mat. Never bring in any sour IPAs <laughs> again. I feel great, but I'm slurring my words. <laughs> Adrenaline yeah. in my butt. I need that disco biscuit. Richard. No, no. Come on. Hit me with it. Baby. In the next match, Darby Allen staying in Sarah Guevara. Beat Matt Hardy, Andrade, and Isaiah Cassidy. Sting. There's lots, lots of stuff happened this. Very, very brief, but very memorable little match. Oh. Sting prevents being thrown off a bunch of tables, and so instead, instead, uh, what are you instead doing? decides, <laughs> instead decides, I'm, I'm leaving it to some. No one written down. At I know all. it isn't. Instead decides, <laughs> she, would Sting, she would take five. Sting prevents. I'm not my badly Sting. reading to make up my own words. I'm using my brain, you idiot. Um, Sting jumps <laughs> off and does New Jack forever at 62 years old. He does. He does do that. It was scary, but fair play to him. Yeah, good lad. I th I thought it was like the. Uh, Obviously, Jeff Hardy coming in has been a rumor for a little while now. And obviously, that's trademark Jeff Hardy, that Royal Rumble 2000, yeah. other things like that. They've bought all the props, but Jeff's not going to be there. Let's draw straws backstage, lads. <laughs> Sting, you've got the short straw of you. You've got to jump off there, <laughs> Bonnie lad. But I, he's 63 on March the 20th, this Sting, which isn't too far away. It's inc incroyable, as the French would say. Not, it's, I feel bad for Sammy Guevara, though. And Isaiah Cassidy, to be fair. Because they did that Spanish fly off the, yeah. off the bloody entrance oh, yeah. way on the, the really hard ramp. Right, yeah. <laughs> no, nothing to cushion the fall. Like the tables kind of did, but not really. But you know what I mean. Yeah. And Sting's the one who's getting all of the, the headlines coming out of the match. Yeah. Do you think Sting's big league in them? What are you guys doing? Ah, oh, Spanish fly. <laughs> you know. You do your scorpion death drop. There you go. Okay. Old last, man. I'll get, I'll get last the summer wine on, on the telly afterwards. <laughs> like, oh, is that it? Like Michael Jordan, he's like, oh, I took that personally. <laughs> it looked scary. But then there was the a shot. Min. There was a shot from behind, like a fan yeah, footage. Yeah. That looked what was scarier because yeah. you see Sting's viewpoint of how far down it is, and I was like, "Whoa!" Oh, you know. did it? I looked at that and thought that looks fun. Oh no! Oh, you're a silly man. You're a silly boy. Mate, if I was Sting, I'd be like, "Wee!" <laughs> <laughs> did you ever do any high spots, Richard? No, no. He scoffed when I said it. No. I yeah. I. Yeah. 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 Like, oh god, another match. All right, let's get this out of the way. Do you ever come off the top row? I've done it once and I've missed a splash. Nice. Was oh. it scary? It was. It was scary. Speaking mm. of missing off the top rope, we have the finish of this matchup where Darby Allen missed the coffin drop to Matt Hardy. He got uh, ahead. 
Because Mark, Mark Harley went, oh, I've got out of the way of this. And then he almost he only hit him with the back of his head. Did he want to get out of the way or was he just selling the previous move still? Oh, he was just selling, yeah. Because it actually made sense, like, no, like trying I to get out of the way. Why, why wouldn't you do that? Why would Matt Hardy be scared of that? He's done way more dangerous why stuff. Why would Matt Hardy be worried about someone jumping off the top rope onto him? Yeah. It's Matt Hardy. He's done this loads of times. He's time. like, ah, oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of you. He said to be on Sci Fi Champ, baby. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'll defend this because I went, hey, you missed him. And then they show the camera angle. It's just Marty trying to get out of the way, but getting enough of the head on him. Oh, yeah, so. it could have been realistic. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was like, yeah. yeah, that makes more sense. I'd prefer that more than people going, yeah. All right, ready. So, I mean, I hope it doesn't cause issues in the AHFO, but we'll have to find, we'll have to Ooh. wait and see. When will, we, when will we find out the result of that? Two days of yesterday, last night, at the Did, time of recording. Thank you very much. And then the main event. Whew, Wednesday at this point, I think. Hangman Page defends the AW title against Adam Cole, baby. In representing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's right. <laughs> that Halo. Shell. That is Hard Shell on the back. Is that, favorite, right? is that his favorite Beyonce song? <laughs> that way he did it. Yes, um, that's right. Yeah, I, I came back from the toilet and <laughs> Fraser and Owen and them were like, whoa. And I was like, what? And they told me that he was dressed as Master Chief. Mm. Master Chef from Halo. Master Chef. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Went a little bit of spice. Mm. O'Reilly and Fish interfere, but Dark Order arrive and brawl them at the back. Hangman wins, retains the title. I think it's maybe, this maybe was the only match of the card. I went, all right, okay, could this be like cut down a bit? Because I was just shattered at this point. Yeah. But it wasn't a bad match. Nice of Hangman Page to have all the rainbow colors on because he's a cowboy. Mm. Is he from Texas, legit? Or? Virginia, I think. Did, oh, Virginia. did you just say sexist there? But is he from, <laughs> he's from Texas, legit? But no, obviously not, but just still doing Virginia, that. Virginia, really, yeah. 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 But um, I thought was, this would have been a great match if it wasn't after all of the yeah, stuff. God. Yeah. That's and if they didn't have the, the bloody doo-doo-doo red dragons come down. Mm. Another, another main event with mm. another heart. It didn't go all the way this time, which I was thankful for. Uh, I was relieved. Well, the Dark Order cut them off. Yeah, well, in the Dark right. Order, saving us from the pain of another repeated interference segment thing. Which That's I don't right. yeah, if it were Kenny Omega. Let's have, you know, yeah. come on. Mm. I know I know it's what heels would do, but not all the heels have to do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed how desperate Cold was. Cold? Adam Cole was not getting his knee out when he should have got his knee out, and that cost him dearly. Just yeah. Good, good match, know. wasn't it? It was a good match. It was. Hangman the... hitting the buckshot, but it hurts his arm. What can he do? Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was just at the end of a really long show. Yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it was just yeah, like, all right, all right, cool. You know, as soon as I ring the bell, it's like, put your coat on, get out. A smattering of booze for the hangman. Just because he gets cold, isn't he? Yeah. yeah Everyone yeah, thinks yeah, cold's yeah. that cool. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think hangman's cool. He should call himself Adam Cool, baby. <laughs> yes, he should. <laughs> That's his crazy yeah. halo armor, bless him. Also, Jade, Jade Cargill as Jade from the Mortal Kombat series. I hate this channel. Jade as, 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 I hate this job. Because I was on, bless you. I was, sorry, on, I was on my recap video going, I think she was like a Mortal Kombat, maybe Melina or the other one. I Google, what I was Googling was Zelina Vega Mortal Kombat cosplay because, ah, and obviously right. it auto-completed because it's not the first time, no, I'm joking. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she was a different character. Yep. They look so similar. In fairness, though, and this then is back the in comments the day. were like, "Jack, Jade was Jade, obviously." I'm like, well, "I don't." And defend you though, yeah, because back in the day, that's what they would do: palette, palette swaps. Yeah, yeah. right. S Sub Zero and Scorpion. I understand. Yeah. Just one of them blue, one of them yellow. Yeah. But then they did the same with I'm Melina, Team Scorpion, by the way. Uh, Katina, Get over Jade. It, yeah. What a guy. Obviously, now they're like, it's funny because now they do like cool, uh, fresh, different designs on the newer games, but they're still like, "Oh, don't worry, you can see the outfits where they look exactly the same as each other as an alternate." Yeah. Like, yay, less effort. So she was Jade. Yeah. So I'm sorry you guys are like, we love the wrestling. We're so manly. And like, yeah, we are. That's more us. and more nerdy so we... wrestlers. Are coming. Keith Lee is a gigantic nerd. We are men. We are the pit Big epitome. Push he gets. We, are the, we are men. I stand by that point, though, that there's, there's less of... I know this is a, an idiotic thing to say because he is a once-in-a-lifetime star, but there's less like the rock. There needs to be more rocks in this world today. That aura reigns is up there. There's no, there's no video game references from oh, Reigns, right. despite that. For all yeah, just yeah. playing on God mode. Yeah. There is a, a rock in the business, which we'll talk about later on. A but... talk? We can't talk about it. He hates nerds as well. We can't talk about it. He hates Ethan Page. No, because it's, it's the second. I'm going to tease it for another a, a future part of the podcast as well. Fraser's second awful take of the week. He had two. Oh, my God. I was this, one is, this, place. this one is worse than the other one. <laughs> and I, okay. I was saying to myself last night, I'm not going to say it on the podcast, but now Jack's <laughs> brought it up. <laughs> the fire has... The fire still burns. This fire burns, yeah. always. Yeah. Should we do Raw? 
Oh my god. I know, roll. right? It's only Monday. We see footage from the Madison. Oh, right. Yeah, the Madison Square Garden house show where they hyped up that Brock Lesnar. If you can get past that one dude at Madison Square Garden, <laughs> and it was Austin Theory. Yeah. Uh, but then it doesn't matter because it was a setup all along as Roman and the Usos beat up big Brock Lesnar. Ha ha ha. Net and bleeding. Yes. Lots of things. Shoot wise, much. it looked like. Shooting the blood. Shooting the blood. Shooting the blood. Blah, 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 blah. Holland as well. I'm never drinking this stuff again. My whole face is <laughs> like it's been massaged. <laughs> Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins open the show. It's about how they're going to win the tight titles and head to WrestleMania. Ha ha. Owens says it's a shame it has to take place in such a dumb Bloody Texas. Uh, Chad Gable and Otis interrupt and say they're going to retain. Hoo hoo. Then RK Bro join the two teams for a full half hour match, yeah. which ends with Orton and Riddle winning back the gold. After the match, Owens and Seth are in shock. And Orton acknowledges, he's going to say the F word. He's going to say the F word. Riddle is my friend. Yeah. Ah, Some nice little touch there to that. And what a lovely little match they had. Half an hour on Raw. I believe bloody it. hell. And how was the moonsault in the RKO not the finish? Yeah. 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 I, you, got to, right. you got to assume that's all Chad Gable's idea as well, because that seems yeah. like of all the outlandish RKO spots we could do, we've seen harder ones done earlier. Because so, Orton's went on record saying, oh, people just cut me saying, can we do this for an RKO spot, please? So I reckon Chad Gable's done that. Yeah. All the, I love Chad Gable, mate. Mm. Um, he is the mutt's nut. Yeah. I, I thought Orton was fired up on a different level. Yeah, he's oh motivated. My God, that promo he cut before the match. Yeah. It was like someone dropped his tea on the floor. He was just that angry. You know, that sort of anger. Where we're like, ready for a sausage and mash. Yeah. Well, if he, if he hadn't won this match, he wouldn't have found a path to WrestleMania, obviously. So... He had to win. Yeah, they're yeah. going, who are you? You're Randy who? Yeah. Nothing. WrestleMania. I'm Randy Theory. <laughs> oh. God, <laughs> I hate that. Let's move on. <laughs> I'm some Owens as well. They did the, the old, I've written down Tower of Power here because I couldn't remember what it's called. <laughs> Tower of Doom. Tower of Doom. I like the Tower of Power. Yeah. And Rollins landed on Owens' arm. It looked horrible. Mm. And I'm glad he got up and still could use his arm. Mm. I'm glad Orton's all right after last week's Raw as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It was a remarkable God. recovery. Bloody like, hyper mobile shoulders. It's like the, the built of WrestleMania 32 in that same stadium. Everyone getting injured. Rollins got injured. God, yeah. Who else got injured? Cesaro got injured. Yeah. Pac? Or was that a different time? Potentially, different, yeah. Maybe. Might be a different one. Yeah, maybe. Or never. I have to, I have to go back and check because yeah. it was it was bad. Yeah. yeah. That's all. Was that year's WrestleMania? Stay away from that stadium. That's yeah. the moral of this story. Hmm. Backstage, Reggie gives Dana Brooke a good look kiss for a 24-7 title defense against Tamina. Oh, man. Akira Tozawa asks Tamina for one and surprisingly gets it, and he's so overcome with shock, he falls down. <laughs> Dana wins the match. Tozawa announces the real winner is Tamina, the love of his life. She walks off, and he is sad. Well, she blew him a kiss, I should have mentioned as well. Yeah, it was a very, very nonchalant blow of a kiss, though. She didn't really mean it, did she? I can't work out. You remember when you said the other week that it's, and I, my defense was, well, love's complicated. Well, now it's too complicated for me. I can't work out what Tamina wants or Tazawa. Well, I know what Tazawa wants. I reckon Tamina just wants a quick shag and then get him away. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the thing that's got me is these new music people, your deaf rebels, is that what they're called? Because I've forgotten again. Something like Your deaf know. rebels, they've gave Tamina a new theme and it sounds exactly the same as everyone else's theme. Mm. It's terrible. I couldn't tell you what Tamina's do theme sound like if you gave me a, a winning lottery ticket. That's I trap tell you. beat. Boom, 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 There's some boom, sort of beat boom, on boom, top. Boom, boom, boom. She used to have a badass riff. She ain't got a badass riff anymore. So you're saying it needs to be more memorable. Her at the start yelling, Tamina! <laughs> so you know it's her. <laughs> Aye. Um, I, I wish they would can the 24-7 title. Yes. Yeah. Because it, 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 it fills up a bit on Raw, which is three hours long. Yeah. It proved it can't be good. I, I stand back. They followed up, followed it up terribly, but that Reggie and Dana segment in the restaurant was fantastic mm. where the double cross happened. But then since then, it's been bollocks. <laughs> the double cross. Yeah, do, do, all they need to do is, whenever they go to the next city, what have they got there? They've got a dry slow. There's our segment there. Yeah. Or just look at the local attractions Yeah, and then do a segment at there. The indoor football what would it be? Arena, here? around here? Yeah. Here, um, yeah. the Tyne, the Jericho Triangle. Reggie the Jericho Triangle, yes. Reggie doing a shooting star press off the Tyne Bridge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, they go Ghetto Golf. Greg's. Greg's. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, they do the tour of the Greg's. Mm. Ghetto Golf's a good shout, though. Yeah. Get some cool shots in there. Has someone done a thing where they've gone like all the Greg's in one day? Probably not. Yeah. Oh! That's Jack's next walk. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, got. I've realised that since the Christmas party, it's been a while since quite a lot of us went out together in the office, yeah. and I've invented the JB 
Fob C, which stands for Jack's Big Fun Usburn Bar Crawl. And I'm going to ask people if they want to go on a bar crawl with me around the Usburn the weekend before WrestleMania. Because that'll be, oh, be too nice. busy at WrestleMania, won't we? Yes, we will. Are you up for the JB FOC? For I can't even say it. The Jack's Big Fun Usburn Bar Crawl? It doesn't need to be a bar <laughs> crawl. We can just sit in one bar. <laughs> it's not really. Up. Are you up for the JB? I'll, I'll come along, yes. Richard? Oh. Everyone's game. I'm buzzing. Aiden said he would come, and he Ooh. lives quite far away, so I was like, get in. And it'll be 38 degrees in Newcastle oh. that day. Because today it was a mighty 13 oh. degrees Celsius on the drive-in oh, today. God. So by that time... Whew. Do you want to know the route? No, no one will understand the pubs. That yeah, no it doesn't matter. No, yeah. Same later on, but yeah, mm. sure. Yes. And then we can all nominate our favourite pub for the Hall of Fame the next week. <laughs> and no one will vote, because it'll be rubbish. Hometown Cleveland boys, The Miz, speaking of rubbish, and Logan Paul have a promo segment. They say that Dominic is riding on Ray's coattails. Joey Lawler, for some reason, interrupts and says that maybe... Cleveland's favourite yeah. son. When maybe Cleveland any... should host a WrestleMania. When I think of any city in America and Jerry Lawler, I think of Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. Memphis? Yeah. Never heard of it. Um, Walking this... in Ohio. <laughs> Cleveland. <laughs> Miz disagrees and says the real winners don't stay in Cleveland like LeBron James. Oh! How, when did that happen? Is that like He's done it twice now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, like 20, it. sort of 18, 17, 18. Oh, but right, the original right. one was like 2009 or 10. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and it was good. At least Miz came out and goes, Yeah, isn't it great? I'm from here. Crowd's like, Miz, Miz, Miz. And he went, Nah, this place doesn't deserve us, man. You're boo. Logan Paul's hey, also from. you were cheering me a minute ago. <laughs> Logan Paul's also from Ohio. Oh, they well, were that's both hometown reason. boys. And LeBron. Ooh. Imagine and Jerry the King Lawler. And, and Jerry. Who lived there in the 60s when something happened. And then he, <laughs> he moved to a different place for eight years. Oh. Uh -huh. The crowd boo and Miz leaves <laughs> with Logan following. Oh, goody. That's it. This is just it there for me. Yeah. This little that was thing. two segments in one, that. The hometown baby face. Well, baby faces mm -hmm. coming back and doing crowd popping things. And then they turned on their own crowd. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the Miz. I know it's a three hour roll, but bloody hell. Bloody hell, as Gangrel would say. Bloody hell. There's <laughs> quite a lot of them. Banging and banging. Quite a lot of them are from Ohio, and WWE don't like billing them from Ohio. Ziggler. Moxley. Bliss. Moxley. He's from Ohio. Moxley was built from Cincinnati, yeah. I think. But Bliss. Riddle. He puts it, the high in Ohio. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Bron Breaker and Tommaso Ciampa team up to beat those dirty, dirty dogs. It wasn't as good as the NXT match by any means. No, no. They did a much better job of showcasing Bron Breaker than they have Tommaso Ciampa at any point. They, did, they showed a promo where he proved he talks different. The promo <laughs> package, oh, mm. he's a bit different, him. Today mm. with him got on Raw. Yeah. He wrestled a bit different when he wrestled yeah, in the ring. Like, story's been coming out that he was told to smile more. Wow. Ah, I'm Bron Breaker. No one ah. wants to see Bron Breaker smile more. What would his, what would his ricochet laugh be, Bron Breaker? <laughs> 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 woof woof <laughs> <laughs> he did do that didn't he mm -hmm. yeah that's, that, that's what Steiners would do so. I know that. <laughs> no one joined in did they sacrilege no, it didn't. bloody Cleveland so I thought that's his gimmick you don't deserve Wrestlemania I wouldn't be opposed oh, to him getting some sirens that'd be nice he's got two at the start didn't he oh does he already have the sirens yeah. just, just right at the start even yeah. more oh yeah no constant ones like Scott yeah. all the way through get my tiger yes yeah some chain link fence. Not chain link chain fence. Chain link fence. <laughs> 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 oh, this tired thing. What's it called? Looking chain like link chain. Looking like a certain robot wars competitor. A, a link of chain. A cha chain. Yeah. Chain head. Uh, get him a chain. Get him a chain head. Yeah. Head of chain. Head of chain. Shoe care. Kicky shoe. Almost beat Apollo Cruz, And as a stare down commander at Aziz afterwards, I think someone point out that Almost has more victories on Raw, on TV, than Commander Aziz has an entire career in right. WWE. Well, I can't wait for next week because we are going to see... Oh, must take on Commander Aziz. Oh, really? I thought they were going to save that for Mania. No. Oh, good God, really? no. Well, I just thought maybe... <laughs> the blind leading the blind? I hope no, they're not. they're both big, both big, big men. You well, know? Did yeah, but one's got a push. It's it, like that David Mitchell thing, which makes them both look relatively normal size. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I guess we did say earlier about the AEW card being that long, but it had peaks and troughs. Mm. And that would that would be a trough. Mm. Go yeah. for your piss during the Omos versus Baba Tunde Tell match. me, if that match was booked, that you wouldn't... In a guilty way, look forward to it. I, I, I can't wait to say on Raw. Because the matches, I'm, <laughs> apart from Lesnar and Roman, just to see who wins and what happens, I'm most looking forward to Knoxville and Logan just to see what happens in a morbid way. Just like Bad Bunny last year. And then he yeah, disappointed he, us all by being good. Yeah. Bastard. <sighs> Edge enters with a new fabulous intro 
with yeah. the spooky lighting yeah, which, he does. next to his face look really cool and asks if we think we know him. Oh. Ah. And then people, I'm going, I don't understand what that means. So I started watching wrestling and I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> people found that person who was slagging off Punk's entrance. They found a tweet of his from last year going, oh, Edge's brood entrance. Cool. <laughs> Did he say that? Yeah. Oh. He says that his attack last week was to bring out the real AJ Styles. He's standing on the mountaintop and the view is phenomenal. Oh. Om- omnipotence. Is At the a word, top of omnipotence, yeah. Is a word I learned this week. Sounds like oh, Keith Lee. Omnipowerful, so you're all powerful, right? Yeah, all powerful, gods and that. I omnipresent up, means you're everywhere. I mix up omnipotent and omniscient, and I'm not sure which What's one. What's omniscient? One of them means you are everywhere, and one of them means that you know everything, maybe. Omniscient will be that, because omnipresent will be everywhere. This one oh. Edge, Edge has said is the quality of having unlimited or very great power. Mm, like Jafar, when he turns into a genie. Mm, but... Itty bitty tiny space. Yes. He's got to lock him in a thing that big at the yeah. end of the match. Yes. I love the presentation, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. AJ Styles. A whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> a whole, a whole, whole new world. Him a whole Wendy flat world. world. <laughs> <laughs> it's a flat world. Oh, that's yeah. very good. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, new, really flat point of view. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking questions. <laughs> you can't handle it. No, uh, man. He, he got called a dog uh, again, though, AJ. And I want to know what the reason is that Vince McMahon and Edge and other people always call him some sort of dog. This week it was a, fl- a flesh-tearing pit bull for those playing along at home. Yeah. <laughs> no one's called him a golden Labrador. No. Yeah. Or a boxer. Yeah. No. People like dogs. Yeah, I guess so. I'm going to offer more impressive to say than that. It seems to be derogatory. A dog 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 when Vince was trying to do some sort of promo class, he goes, no, no, no. And he goes, I need two volunteers. And yeah. Wade, Seamus and Drew. Uh, was it Seamus and Drew? I think it might uh, Wade, be. Barrett. Wade Barrett. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> and I went, all right, you're a dog. And he there's like a dog, silence. Man, like, yeah. And Seamus is like, oh, no. All right. And eventually he goes, woof, woof. And then Vince goes, no, a real dog. <laughs> and he's all right, it's over. To leave. <laughs> he's like, hey. you said I'm a dog. Anyway, so here's the thing with dogs. Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan beat Queenslean and Carmella to be added to the WrestleMania tag title match. Carmella was distracted talking to Graves. It's been so popular on YouTube that they're bringing it to television. Can you tell the irony in my voice? <laughs> Richard Tubman, would you mind going on? No, well, just searching, no. Just, I just want to know what the, vigor, the, 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 viewing, oh my God, Go the viewing figures uh-huh. are on the old show. Oh. For Corey and Carmella, please, Richard. No, can, this, we see, can we see the dog again? <laughs> just, Do you mean this segment or just their trailer or their, their YouTube show called Corey and Carmella? Yeah. Just oh, type yeah, that yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Corey and Carmella. Because I'm sure I saw someone this week. Sex it, under it, the sea. Yeah. Na, 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 na. 340, 219, 233. This is on Dury's official YouTube channel, by the way, with 700 million subscribers. 229, 136. I'm going blind here. 52. Bloody hell. That shouldn't be brought to TV. No. Because no, people aren't interested, are they? Is this a device to get Corey back in the ring? I'd like that to be fair. What, instead of doing the show, you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who could they go up against in a mixed tag team match? Miz and Maurice. Oh, no, they're all heels. Miz is busy this year. Yeah. It's WrestleMania comeback for sure. Corey Graves. Mm. Oof, main event. Who could they? Edge is now a heel. Vince and Linda. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> his former His wife. <laughs> Does yeah, that, that was weird, wasn't it? Oh, he was wearing together. a ring. Hi, hmm. she, Linda's put up with. I watched that Howard Stern interview with Vince McMahon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Twenty yeah. years ago, where he admits to lots of things he's done yeah. with other ladies. Linda's put up with so much with that fella. Mm. I hope he hasn't left her. I'm not a fan of Linda either, to be honest. <laughs> so, oh, Linda's boring as hell. But <laughs> no, she's, she's put up with boring. a <laughs> <laughs> Why? She's a bit right wing for me. Oh. Oh, well, they all are. They so. all are, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. No, she was in Trump's cabinet. <laughs> I think I think genuinely was. Yeah. She's the secretary for small businesses or something. Yeah, the small businesses. Small businesses. Small businesses. The grandest thing. <laughs> Finn Balor is about to beat Austin Theory, but Damien Priest interferes. 
They beat Paladown and Theory takes a selfie. Ooh. Mm, not surprised sense. by the interference because once again we've booked ourselves into a corner by having these two lads have a singles mm. match on Raw. But Priest coming back looking like 98 Undertaker. I quite like with his tie up thingies. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. um, Whatever was... they're called, they look very nice. Yeah. Lovely and floral, aren't they? Mm. Meatloaf without the, the sleeves. The title of this on the YouTube highlight was um, The Damien is Unleashed or something like that. The Damien. I was like, ooh. Hello, I am the Damien. <laughs> the Damien. <laughs> Damien King. <laughs> Kevin Owens closes the show by calling out Stone Cold Steve Austin for WrestleMania. In a right, yeah, he took a bit longer than I've written there, but in a roundabout way. He did. And then eventually shouted it, and everyone went, oh, except yeah. for Fraser, who was like, wish it was The Undertaker, mate, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Was that Fraser's good point of the week? Or? That was his. That was the lesser of two evils in terms of. Uh, sh- uh, they called him Seamus there. Fraser's takes <laughs> <laughs> just Celtic people in general. <laughs> um, uh, no, we'll get that. Uh, that involves NXT. Oh, I, well, Seamus is we on go. the bad day. I've done it as well. <laughs> Why go? Sh- okay, okay, stuck on him, Seamus. Now, anyway, NXT Roadblock. Raquel Gonzalez and Cora Jade take on Dakota Kai and Wendy Chu in the Dusty Classic semi-finals. Toxic attraction interfere and injure Raquel's leg. Kai and Chu get the win. I was shocked. I really I... thought that Raquel and Cora were destined for the finals because they went to an adventure park together and bonded. They've right. taken up so much TV time. <laughs> yeah, they really have. <laughs> um, they really have. Wendy Chu is a genius where she pretends to be asleep but dodges the elbow drop. That is top tier <laughs> professional wrestling. That is. Yeah. I feel bad for. Um, I've just got her known as the Umpa Lumper in my head now, Dakota Kai, who is the reverse Umpa Lumper, of course, because she tells the, the people the bad thing before it happens rather than afterwards. Yeah. Uh, she's now got the voices in her head yeah. because of toxic attraction. And them doing... It's a crap gimmick. Uh, <laughs> we'll move on. Um, she went to hit Raquel at one point, <laughs> and then the voices stopped her. Yeah. yeah. It's her old friend who she betrayed. I don't like the look of it. <laughs> <laughs> How bad is it when Wendy Chu isn't the worst gimmick in a match? I just wish there needs to be more to it because at the minute it's just it screams at the start of her entrance, and like we've seen her twice backstage speaking to herself or some like imaginary friend off the corner. Uh, That's as far as it's gone so far. It's so weird in some some wrestling promotions like mental health. Please get yourself checked out. Been through a horrible turmoil in terms of. Uh, everything that's happened in the world, and then there's some character on NXT, she's like, oh, man, oh, me! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Harry. I'd like it for Wendy Chu if it was revealed that she's still been Mei Ying all along, and this is just a, a trap to draw people in. It's like, well, I'm evil still. I would love that. Wait, I've not thought it out too much. Wait. Wait. Yeah, that, that type of, like, ha-ha thing doesn't happen enough. Unless yeah. it's Ricochet cutting a promo, of course. Yeah. Uh, the Creed brothers are attacked in the car park, but oh no, they have a tag title match tonight. They had, it. I'm convinced they had their asses glued to the floor. It was really, <laughs> go back and watch it because it looks like, the way, I forget which one's Julius and which one's Brutus, the bigger, longer, not the stockier one, but the bigger, longer one. He's just sort of like doing, you know, dead crabs from back in the day when you were a kid. Or is it dead ant? Whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. When you're playing that game, you have to lie on your back and do that. He's doing that, but his ass doesn't move at all. <laughs> He's just been stuck to the floor by his ass. Very impressive. Yeah. Good on them for getting down and dirty on a on a wet on a cold yeah. Tuesday night in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Later, Imperium deny having anything to do with the attack. The MSK offer to take their place. Tell you what, I'm suspicious of those MSK boys. Yeah. Mm. I reckon they got blazed and didn't know what they were doing <laughs> and did it. Therefore they can't remember. That's what it's funny t- though, because of weed. Yeah. <laughs> weed. Yeah, a bit of a bait and switch. I rewatched when I was on the plane uh, the Fire Festival documentary. Oh yes, <laughs> I forgot there's that bit with Ja Rule. He's talking to the guys, going, "Look, look, it's not that bad. We can get over this." Everyone's going, "Are you kidding? <laughs> like this is a horrible thing?" No, no, no it's just an issue because no, but we've, we've committed fraud here. He goes, "That's not fraud. That's not fraud. That that's false advertising. It's not fraud." I thought about this and this because I was looking forward to this Creed Brothers match. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we were also looking forward to John Cena in the 2017 Royal Rumble, 18 Royal Rumble, whatever one it was. Shut up, Ross. Oh. Do you okay. remember one where they promoted him right up until the start of the kickoff oh, show? Oh, I forgot all about that. Yes. I remember Adam picked him in the predictions to win. And then <laughs> as soon as the kickoff show came on, they were like, well, John Cena's injured. He won't be here tonight. Oh. No. I had forgotten about that until you brought But they out. knew he was injured before yeah. then. Absolute yeah. poo housery. Yeah. Was it 18? It must have been 18 because 17 was style. 17 he was in, yeah. Yeah. Eight, yeah. Wow. Good memories. 
Tiffany Stratton loses to Fallon Henley after interference from Sarai Fallon. Celebrates with Briggs and Jensen afterwards. I don't care. I'm not going to use alliteration. I've, I've tried to predict the end of this storyline between BJ, JB, oh, and please tell us. Fallon Henley. I I'm reckon sleep. Go on. Brooks Jensen will try to have sex and lose his virginity with Fallon Henley. Yeah. And it'll turn out that after they do it, Fallon Henley is actually his sister. <laughs> I wasn't. I was with you all the way until that last <laughs> yeah, minute. Yeah, pretty much. Was gonna, um... <laughs> I thought you were going to say, and then Brooks and um, Josh Briggs steals her away, and he's like in a, in a Christian Jericho Trish Stratus <laughs> kind of way. It'll be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but sorry. the crucial difference between Jericho and Christian mm. and BJ and JB uh-huh. is Alabama. Yeah, I don't think that <laughs> she'll be revealed to be his sister, but I do think that it's going to go awry. I think it'll seem heartwarming. And then it'll go wrong. I've got a fact to drop on your asses right now. <laughs> and that on. is Tiffany Stratton versus Fallon Henry. Is This isn't the first time we've seen it. It took place in December on NXT TV oh, as well. It did it indeed. It did. Because I made a point of saying it's weird how Tiffany Stratton does all the moves so perfectly. But so far on TV, she's won, she's lost, she's won, she's lost. They're not going all the way with her. Mm. And then I dived a bit deeper. Guess uh-huh. how old she is? How old is Tiffany Stratton? Twenty-two. No, Whoa. barely out of nappies, and she's doing moves like that. She's Whoa. gonna be, she's gonna be the next Lacey Evans, but like better. Yeah, yeah. She mm. does do all the moves really, really well. She does. Yeah, I don't think yeah, you're don't. ready. And why? What's the Sarai storyline? Sarai? <laughs> I don't know. She's annoyed at Tiffany Stratton because Tiffany Stratton oh, laughed. She at, said a necklace. Tiffany Stratton yeah, laughed yeah, at her yeah. necklace, and then she went, "Have one of my fancy ones." And Sarai went, "No, silly me." Yeah. Yeah. Because that's got something to do with her grandma, isn't it? Yeah, and it also and turns, turns, her, her into... turns her into a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> NXT's changed for the better, says Finn Balor this week in an interview. He was right, change was needed. Yeah. I'm not sure if he meant this, but... No. <sighs> Another loud wee there next door. Another loud wee. Yeah. Andre Chase berates yes. his students. We played, saying... the, we played this upstairs for the rest of the office, including Please, the yeah. people who don't watch wrestling. And they were flabbergasted. They were on the floor laughing. By the Roughling. acting chops of... And also just impressed by Andre Chase. You know what I realised this week as well? All right, go on. From a side profile, Andre Chase is just a bigger Johnny Gargano. I think he looks like Buster from um, Arrested Development. Buster. Okay, yeah. But with more hair. Yeah, yeah of course. Buster. I've done it again there just for effect. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate <laughs> right. that. This but is, yeah, a bigger Gargano, I can see. This is fantastic, this segment, though. <sighs> what Andre Chase for? braids students saying their disappointing entrance cost him the match with Come Tuesday last week. <laughs> One student points out that Bodie Hayward's eye should probably be looked at by a doctor. And we got to look at it, and it is disgusting. <laughs> it's it, not even like, it's not bad prosthetics, isn't even the it's, it's yeah, effects, yeah, whatever. Right, yeah. It's not even the discussion, is it? It's just like someone's just poured oil mm. on his eye and he just Hot kept it there. oils, <laughs> Davy. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> So uh, he says, yeah, you should probably look at a doctor. So Chase kicks him out of the classroom. <laughs> yeah. What does he... He did be- that joke you've with that flipping tremendously. the bird as well. well How fin- many fingers can you see? Yeah. How oh. many fingers have I got? Oh, oh uh, held up, Bodie Haywood. You've got one, sir. I can't quite see. How many fingers have I got, Jimmy? Yeah. Matthew! Yeah. Get it was out. also a was fantastic great. visual joke. It was such a good visual joke said, on a podcast. This is a different one as well. Oh, oh. yeah. All your listeners have just stuck the middle finger. Ha, ha. Uh, but also, when he got, he was like, you dropped the ball. Got a basketball out from under the tape, under the, the plinth thing. It's fantastic. One dribble, back in his hands, carries on with the promo. I can't tell. He said DBRC could never. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell if you'd be ironic or not. I'm not. This is my favorite part of NXT. Are you being serious, though? Chase you segments where <laughs> oh, no. the university lecturer... He starts off all wholesome, then he starts having a go, then he starts swearing. Uh, He's getting the visual cues in now as well with the basketballs and whatnot. It's it's top tier stuff. We'll look back <laughs> on this in five years' time, like we did with Austin Austin and the Rock in the actual. Oh, <laughs> Chase you and Come Tuesday are what NXT is all about. Yeah, because we'll get onto why LA Knight's not in that discussion in a little tickle. Ooh. Oh, it's been rattled me. This I've I've been rattled by Seamus, otherwise known as Fraser. <laughs> oh. <laughs> NXT improves every week. Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams are back at the barber shop. Hayes wants to defend the North American title against four opponents in a ladder match. Oh. So not last last week when they were already pushed for time and he's like, all right, it's a ladder match, bye. And now it's like, no, no, four. Do you know why though? To combat the revolution ring. 
AW Bash. No. No. It's the golden rule. Go on. He has the gold, therefore he makes the rules. That's what he said. Didn't quite work for me. If I was <laughs> at WrestleMania weekend this year, I can think of nothing better at midday on a blazing Saturday morning <laughs> or well, mid-afternoon than a ladder match down at the... Where's NXT being held? Uh, Richard, can you show? Google that, will you? To see where Stand and Deliver is taking place. Because they're going to have to get themselves to that, that bloody stadium out, out of town. Now, I wonder if it's going to be hard. Oh, that's where we went to see Raw, I think. Yeah. That's a big arena, that, isn't it? Yeah. You oh, on no. What's some... wrong with you? You're not taking us seriously right now, Matthew. He's been smirking at us for this whole segment. He's got that... I'm doing that voice. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's where we went to Raw. That's a big arena, that. That's a full... Oh, my God. NXT's going there. They can't pack the, the shed <laughs> that they do this thing in. Do you know what? I assumed oh. it was going to be in a much smaller yeah, venue. So yeah. I'll tell you what, no one is going to get COVID there. <laughs> no, no, they'll fill it. There's loads of wrestling fans there in town. For exactly. Uh, <laughs> Will you stop? I'm sorry. I would go if I was in, t- in Texas. Why? To see, NXT. All of his he- to see all of his heroes in person. Being there for Come Tuesday. Imagine the meet and greet. Oh, so far, Come <laughs> Tuesday. Meet and greet. Yeah, imagine. Imagine the segment halfway through with the Andre Chase. Andre Chase. What visual gag will he have that week? Oh, uh, no. We're still several weeks away from Stand and Deliver. Uh-huh. Oh, he's just got to get his big props out. The Joe Pasquale of <laughs> wrestlers going to be ready. <laughs> One um, rhyme from Joe Pasquale has stuck with me for all my life. Go on. Yvonne Gooligong, what a lovely name. Yvonne Gooligong, what a lovely name. Yvonne Gooligong, what a lovely name. Better than Bjorn Borg. <laughs> okay. The yeah. Joe Pasquale joke that sticks yeah. up to me is, if you took all the... Zoe talks. If you took all the, the D's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, oh my God. <laughs> if you took all the D's, oh, Edward Woodward's name would be Ewa Woodward. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway. Sorry, sorry to a great lower apology. the tone. It's time, oh, it's time for Lasher now. <laughs> Lash legend. Yes. Lash's guest is the key to Lyons, who she insults because her mother was a groupie. <laughs> but was she a groupie for the band? Yo, oh, with everybody. She's part of good Look and Chain now. Yes. Young son, your mother was a groupie. It's a good Look and Chain. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Lyons talks about not being judgmental, and they argue. The only yeah. natural thing about you is that you're full of shh. Mm. She just said, yeah, be quiet. I yeah. made my debut and I trended on Twitter and she went, I think we know why that was. Whoa. We do know why. Because your ass. Oh, uh, she's oh great I thought wrestler. it was because of her other... <laughs> what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> Go on, Jack. The save other... it. You got it. Her breasts. <laughs> <also>. <laughs> you got any more IPAs? She actually says it's because of your ass, isn't it? Oh, I thought it was... Co- yeah. I also thought it was because of... A... You don't see all the people trying to come up with names for her. Oh. Come up with names for her ass. No, for her. <laughs> oh, for her. <laughs> well, maybe, because one of them was U- Ultimo Wagon. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of any of those. Maybe that's a good thing. We'll move on. Anyway, yeah. They Backstage. Argued a bit. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Any thoughts I on this amazing Nikita segment? I thought Nikita Lyons was actually way better in the ring than I thought she was going to be. Just yeah. Anderson. Just in her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> You save it for when you're out there in the AA arena. <laughs> <laughs> you yell on it from the back. The cult are still there in full strength, though, with Lash, Le- Lash Legend. Oh, yeah. yeah. Still popping for things they shouldn't pop for. All glory to the Hypnotoad. <laughs> <laughs> Backstage, BJ and BJ accuse the God of the Phantasma of attacking the Creed. Ledger Lopez says Jensen can't get laid. <laughs> He says, hey, we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Fallon Henley wonders if her pals were behind the attack, and they say, of course not. They wouldn't do that. It was MSK. They're I do like how um, JB, I think it was, like, like, that car park out there is the most dangerous place on earth. NXT law it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. I like that little sentence. Yeah. There. People get kidnapped there as well. kidnapped by ninjas, yeah. 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 Mm. Beaten up. Um, who, 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 was it Kenta? Yeah. Who got attacked? And then Kevin's like, oh. Well. Just walked past, didn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> LA Knight and Grayson Waller have yep. their last man standing match. Sanger tries to interfere, but Knight handcuffs him <coughs> the ring post. Waller splashes Knight through the announce table and uses Sanger to pull himself up before the count of 10. Uh, Knight, again, looked phenomenal here. Yes, he did, what? didn't he, Matthew? Yeah, yeah, crowd loving him, everything he was the doing, just brawling him. and brawling. The They're not plants. Him. They are plants. Because they don't cheer There's for no anyone else way. like that. Yeah, no one else, yeah, thank you. They didn't cheer for LA Knight. They cheered for LA Knight like it was their brother. The corner <laughs> kicks where he's doing a kick and they're yeah. going, yeah, oh, yeah. It's iconic yeah. stuff. But that's where Seamus's second bad take of the week comes from. Fraser's. Fraser, but Seamus. Um, he sat there, looked at me in the eye, Matthew. 
Go on. And he said... Go on. Go on. L.A. Knight... He said S-H-I-T, but we'll just, L.A. Knight is crap, he says. And he followed it up, and there was not a hint of irony in his being. The oh, eyes, they were Go locked on mine. Go on. He said this with full sincerity. Go on. Go on. He said, L.A. Knight is the QT Marshal of NXT. <laughs> oh. L.A. The Rock. Blew me back out. Must be Friday. Uh, what? How L.A. Knight? L.A. Knight is the QT Marshal of NXT. Now, he's wrong there because L.A. Knight's mic skills are the, the best part of his game. Yes, yeah. they QT are. QT Marshals are the worst part of his game. Yeah. But so he knows he's, he's doing that character. He's, he's setting up. He's not trying to be The Rock. But... I had a view, I fall somewhere between Ross and Fraser's viewpoints. <laughs> I'm not the biggest LA and I fan, but it's more the booking of him that I don't like than him himself. I think that he is more, not The Rock, I think he's the Mr. Kennedy of NXT. I'll go with that. Ross didn't like that He's either. got too much charisma to be Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy had tons so much of charisma. charisma. But not as much as LA Knight. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> so I'm, I'm more middle. captivated by a, an LA Knight promo than I ever was by Mr. Kennedy. Wow. Oh, well. That might be because I was a, a teenager. You go on the street and ask 100 people if you're Mr. <laughs> no, Candy or Alan. <laughs> and they go, it's the same picture. Eli, Drake. Yeah. That's what you get back at you. But yeah, that's that was right. Fraser's second bad take of the week. Actually, I thought he was going to be even worse than that and him say, Chris and Waller, now there's a wrestler. <laughs> so His splash was good. Yeah, that was nice. But it was just Alan Knight being up Grayson Waller. The, the Why have they made Alan Knight? Of course, so, Grayson Waller. Why is Alan Knight so strong? Why did they book him so strong? He's like he's Austin. Great. He's head and shoulders above everybody. Yeah. No, he's not. He Compared is. to who? Who should be beating him? Carmelo Hayes. Okay, we'll pop from him. Um, any of the main event. Bron Breaker. Okay, pop from Tommaso him. Tommaso Ciampa. Pop from him. Maybe not Ciampa. Um, no, not Ciampa. Ciampa no. Um, <laughs> I'll think of more. Give me a sec. Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Boa. Uh, no. Gunter. <laughs> If we had Gunther versus No, LA Knight. they're both... Oh, no, they're not, WrestleMania. I was about to say they're both faces. Well, there's not a face. What am I talking about? He is Cindy. in this table. Yes. Anyway. Uh, it was just classic stuff, wasn't it? I thought it was all right. Down, it's very similar to the other stuff they've done, but the fact that the crowd was into it and it resembled a normal wrestling match between two human beings, I liked it. The crowd was into it. it they, they were. They got them in from the Lash Legends segment. That's fine. That's if fine. they are reaction plants, to reaction. Why, why don't they make as much noise for anybody else? Because they've been because they're trying to make Ali Knight the big... Big, the Austin of NXT 2.0. I'll go away from the show on Raw and the crowd just... Go, all right, well, so, all right then. All right then, guys. That's not something right. happen, is it, Matthew? The crowd will sit on their hands. No one watches NXT anymore. It's just yeah, us. but they'll, they'll chant impact, impact. <laughs> <laughs> do the gravy if, train or whatever he called it, this finisher then. Got the gravy something. Do the gravy train. He called, it the, he called it the gravy. <laughs> he called it the gravy. <laughs> go go on, Ross, do the gravy train. Finisher was called it the gravy train. I've got no idea. Maybe. Yeah, it was gravy train. Thank you, Richard. Gray fully <laughs> trained. Yous are laughing. Fact of life. I think I think I sounded like an elderly George. Go on. Yous are laughing. Uh, two seconds. I've got to look at the result. Oh, you might, you might have to quickly skip please. through that top. Just 10. LA Knight. Please, Eli God. Drake. Just put, put gravy train. I've not, I've not switched the screen over. No, type gravy train. Please, God. Please. I'm going gravy off train. the rails in my gravy train. Gravy train turkey trot. <laughs> what? Oh. What's a gravy train turkey trot? Oh, Dummy. Yeah. Turkey, yeah. It's the gravy something. Control F, my man. Gravy boat, <laughs> gravy bowl. Control F. Gravy uh, bowl. Uh, yeah, gravy train. Ah. Click on gravy what train, see what happens. What is it? No, Did... you actually just click the text. There we go. And it is. Ah, oh, <laughs> the kryptonite crunch. I remember he gave James Ellsworth one when he was the mystery opponent for him at some impact. White noise. From Seamus. Like that, then. Uh, the Frasier, Frasier Porter's finisher, white noise. <laughs> <laughs> Tony D'Angelo is in his cousin Mikey's Italian restaurant. He says that Stand Deliver he's become the Don of NXT. He is going to. But how is he going to do that if he's not going to challenge for a, t a title, a title? Huh? Yeah, I'm wondering that. I hope he well, does Will he be in the ladder match with Carmelo? Ah, ah, maybe. Mm. Oh, match if he won. <laughs> Tony. I hope he doesn't because Do Don D'Angelo. Oh, yes. Don D'Angelo. Don hey, double D to his friends. <laughs> That's what Dewdrop is to her friends. Ah. I was going to make a bad joke. Right, Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray beat Caden Carter and Casey Catanzaro to progress the finals of the Dusty Classic. This match got off to a hot start because on commentary, Wade called Vic a masturbator. <laughs> <laughs> Semi-finals, Wade. Come on. Am I? A bit more serious. <laughs> you like debating, don't you, Vic Joseph? In fact, some may call... All right, all right. I didn't Did think... Did you watch... Captain Pugwash as a child. <laughs> All right, shut up. There was no tension in this match because I knew that Casey and Caden weren't going to get to the final. I they've knew really, that. They would have, they would, if they'd stuck around with JB and BJ. 
They uh, have, the power of friendship would have guided them through. Mm-hmm. Well, they top, did lots top. of nice moves together. There was two lads. Yeah. Oh, they did. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the bloody what was it? The elevated poison rana. Poison rana. Poison rana. Jesus. Fantastic. Worth the admission alone. It mm. was, and then she got up like seconds later. She did, did she? Just like, all right, cool. <laughs> but Toxic Attraction are watching the match from their sexy balcony. I didn't know what to call the area right. that they watch it from. Yeah, the sexy balcony, like, you know, Dan Lambert yeah. and his crew at AW. We they, saw it every five minutes. This was a bit more like Shane McMahon and the WCW lads. Yes, this was more of like a cool <sighs> private yeah. box. If Lambert, if Lambert had people serving him food, it's Lambert and Butler's. <laughs> he brought it back oh, podcast good. saved yeah. with uh, Manigan and Idris the skies as their waiters they even shown the waiters down like where are the waiters there they are on the floor <laughs> sorry cheers Paul uh, Cora Jade attacks Mandy Rose but the lads break it up yeah. okay back to being a psychopath now Cora no no she had justification <laughs> she had justification this time that's right because they'd hurt her friend yeah yeah and she was really reckless and brave of her she was outnumbered on that sexy balcony. <laughs> she went there. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. And then Indy Hartwell. How many segments on the show? Indy Hartwell and Persia. Week, good, God. <laughs> Persia Peruda getting an argument backstage because Persia is so distracted by no gimmicks needed, handsome Bill Hudson. <laughs> Persia says that she carries the team. The pair greet the match and Indy leaves. Duke off, sorry, Dull offers to train Persia and they both get really horny. I now, didn't know. Yeah, they did. The world's been saddened by the loss of of neighbours after 39 years and nearly 9,000 episodes recently. Fear no more. If you're missing neighbours, watch this sec. This is classic neighbours. Dull's done, Dull has done what he set out to do and that has split those two up because he used to go out with Indy and now he's with Persia. But is he with Persia for the right reasons? I guess we'll find out soon. I hope he is. Bit of a geography lesson going on as well. He's moving west. Go west, India, Persia. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah, oh, 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 nice. But I mean, Persia doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah, so Persia, yeah, I know. <laughs> they don't go into Czechoslovakia, the, the Holy Roman Empire. <laughs> That's right. It's Indy from New South Wales, and then she's from Adelaide. No, I was trying. Yeah, I was making. A, yours was clever. Nice, mine. Geography yeah, that was good. I don't even know if that's right. Oh, is it? No, oh. you know what? I don't even know any better. There's just two places I know in Australia. Adelaide's um, yeah. south, I think. I don't know. I don't bloody know. No worries, mate. Imperium defend the tag titles against MSK, but the Creed Brothers show up and attack everyone. Just go, yeah, it's odd this. Yeah. I still suspect those sneaky MSK boys. Yep. Hmm. Fabian Eichner, I'm going to put this out there, hates Wesley. <laughs> Why? Because the way he was slamming him around the ring, there was a little extra bit of Kavorka on each of those slams. Oh. He was doing him hard, doing the slams hard. <laughs> He was the elevated <laughs> tilt of world. Doesn't thing. sound yeah. like he hates him very much at all. Yeah. <laughs> like when FDR took on, uh, oh God, what's his name? Uh, Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison. Griff Garrison. Varsity Blondes. And what's they, happened to Griff Garrison? I think it's just because they don't know what to do with uh, the other one. And they beat the hell out of Pillman Jr. Mm, yeah. Some would say for good reason. Oof. Lots of good work here there. Get some merchandise out of it, though. Are they? Aye. Uh, I forget what his shirt said, his hoodie. What was the hoodie? <laughs> Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Gacy and Harlan confront Draco Anthony again. Pause. And ask, thank you. And ask him to remember his, oh, sorry, open his mind and let them in. But remember Bray him. Of them. What? Oh, ask, I've called someone, what? I've called, um, I've given someone a nickname here. Oh, followed by, remember him, Zion Quinn. Yeah. Show, I love that. Thank you. Shows up and says that Draco should be his own man. So I was really pleased with myself when I called Duke Hudson no gimmicks needed handsome Duke Hudson. That was good. So I got a bit carried away with this one, but remember him, Zion Quinn. Remember him, Zion Quinn. What yeah. was that? Uh, Doing the bingo. What was Frighty Kazarian's new one, his most recent Oh, one? not the Elite. Oh, one. Uh, you, that's you, right, you guessed it. That's right, you guessed <laughs> it, Frighty Kazarian. Again, it's a normal Donald reference. He died, so it's a living tribute he's given this guy who loses every week. <laughs> and then A-Kid is coming to NXT from NXT UK. I am so excited. How excited? I use excited as jacket time. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were very excited. <laughs> they were buzzing. Oh, man. <laughs> I'd forgotten about jacket time as well. They've not been around for a few weeks. Oh, my God. I hope they're on the stand and deliver card. If they ever, and I mean ever, release Eichmann Giro from a contract, they really have no soul. That, <laughs> what that man has been through, in the name of honest <laughs> entertainment, at their, at, yeah. their, at their behest... He should have a job for life. You know, he did Bruce Pritchard on a podcast. He was like, if only he committed more <laughs> to the jacket gimmick. 
What more can that man do? If you were on the street and asked Legally change people, his name to Jacket <laughs> Time. Whether they knew... <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Or Ekman Gyro. Which one would they... It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's okay. You're trying. Is that him who tried to eat two chase paces? <laughs> I, that's Ekman Gyro. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Ant. He got some ice cream. Yeah, that, thank you, Ant. Uh, what else curse, you... I'll never leave him. I remember showing Richard screenshot by screenshot all the things he ate. Do you remember any more of them? There was the pizza and ice cream. That's all I remember. So he went for two. The cheese grater. He went for two. Oh, no, sorry. That's the one. That's the sex bag sex. of Corey and Carmel. Sex time. <laughs> the unrelated sex but summary name tag team coming to WWE YouTube. Just get them in a stable, the sex jackets. <laughs> sex jackets. <laughs> You know First you jack it in, <laughs> then you jack it off. <laughs> Corey wanks himself silly on. You thought jackets had two holes? Think again. <laughs> the sex jacket. We'll show you where to put your arms. <laughs> I'm sorry. Braun Breaker defends the NXT title against Champer and Ziggler. Uh, oh, yes! With a little help from Robert Roode, Ziggler pins Champer, wins the NXT championship. <laughs> <Why not? laughs> Why those dirty sounding... dogs have done it. I thought in all caps, those dirty dogs have done it because I was delighted for them dirty dogs, for those dirty men. <laughs> <laughs> dirty bastards. Yeah, Dolph Ziggler oh, is the NXT champion. Spe- those thought... filthy canines. <laughs> oh, dirty jackets. <laughs> it's a big stable, this, at this point. The dirty on. sex jackets. <laughs> it's becoming like the corporate ministry. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, so this happened. Uh, I get why they need to have something. This happened. That's another title, or trophy, sorry, in Dolph Ziggler's trophy case. Yes. That's another one. He's yeah, done and it. and all the other ones got dust on them. <laughs> I I like the match. I like the match as well. I like the finish as well. Lot of bum, didn't lot see bum it cheek in the yeah. finish. And the crowd, oh. the crowd again, the plants were in it. It's like, <laughs> no, no, God, no, no. And then he won. It was like when Undertaker lost to Brock Lesnar. There was just <laughs> silence. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It wasn't, but it wasn't like quiet. It was like, the mu- I'm sure his music didn't People play. Crying. His music didn't play for ages. I think it was out. Yeah, is that, that ah, yeah. I honestly thought it was Shawn Michaels when he, you know, he did the promo backstage. Because the way the lighting was, it like an old like. Remember back in the day when they played that music, like do 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 do, and the b- pictured walk through the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Brett and Blade with it the was, Canadian yeah. flag, and yeah. Sean and uh, Triple H. Yeah. This is for you. Oh. And they go out for WrestleMania 40. Oh, I... Um, I honestly thought it was Shawn Michaels from '97, J- Dolph Ziggler. He looked just like him in my mind. Mm. Maybe I was just too in tired. In his mind as well. Is it Billy um, Gunn that Ziggler's got the same face as? The picture, have you seen the picture of them together yeah, 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 yeah. side by side where it's like, whoa, yeah, yeah. Oh. looks more like Billy than the ass boys do. Strange. Mm. I'm not pa- Papa I'm Nemeth got around, Where were you, guess. Mrs. Gunn, the night of... <laughs> I was in dirty sex jacket time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Ziggler wins and I guess, yeah, they've got to have Breaker do something for a bit that can't just be Russell Champer and I guess they've got no one else planned for him. So mm. it's like, all right, that's fine. I don't know why they had to have him win the belt. No. Well, he didn't lose it, did he? He was, he was, he was, he was, he was f on, wasn't he? Yeah. He was f on by Bobby Roode. Well, he tried yeah. to leave us for money. Yeah. But he'll get the win back and it's stand and deliver. I hope yeah. so. In front of 20,000 rampant NXT 2.0 Oh, that's fans. right. They're hoping to I, sell that I thing out. Think, so, of course, think... they need the drawing power of 2022 Zoff Ziggler. I don't think they'd do it, but it would be cool if he didn't win it back and then appeared on that same night at WrestleMania. <laughs> it's like, wait, I have to stay here? <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah. I like I like big shocks like that. I liked it. It was a good match as well. Yeah. I deserves it, Dolph. Okay. He deserves <laughs> it. No one's saying he doesn't deserve it. It's just like, okay, isn't this? You nearly be... threw the phone over. <laughs> yeah, actually well, it's like, okay, at least I can look at the show and go, God, 14 mostly bad segments. But at least <laughs> Bron Breaker and Champa, they're pretty untouchable. Chase you. And then fantastic. here to show the world. <laughs> I'm here. I said mostly. <laughs> Here to show the world. And it's like, okay, great. Kick my music, the good one. Yeah, That's the it. good one. Take that one, Kevin Dunn, whoever wow. makes the decision. Or Def Rebel. We get crap music that, that sounds the good same. good one. Go on. He's yeah. like Deadpool. He's meta. He knows what the viewers want. <laughs> Not CM who. Dolph Ziggler, DZ, Punk. Let's carry on. Oof. We're, we're, nearly, nearly, the we're end. nearly there. God, how AW long, Dynamite. How long this not, how yes, long this might been, be a record. How long have we been sat here doing this segment, Richard? We took a break, though. Um, maybe like an hour and a bit. For this segment. It feels like we've been here for three years. Christ. Oh, it's been AW Dynamite. 
Chris Jericho opens the show and thanks Eddie Kingston for giving him one of the greatest matches of his career. Eddie arrives and talks emotionally about what the win meant to him, but not before saying, hey, hey, you, you, you in the crowd saying what? How about some respect, okay? My man, Steve Austin, he's not here. Shut up. It's like, fucking a reason to love him. Uh, Jericho offers him a handshake and kicks and accepts. Oh, that's nice. They're entered by 2.0 and Daniel Garcia, who rush down the attack. Santana and Ortiz make the save and give Jericho a baseball bat, but... He betrays them and beats them down. Jake Hager runs out to argue with Jericho. Huh? But it's a bluff, and he joins in. Powerbombing Kingston through a table right onto his head. Well done, Jake, you poo house. Jericho announces his new stable, not the inner circle, (laughs) the Jericho Appreciation Society. (laughs) And why would it be called anything different? I get it. It's a good name for a naff stable. Yeah. Which is what it is. I think it's intentionally a naff name. I think. I think? think so. It's always hard, like Cody Rhodes, it's hard to tell where Jericho is like, are you being intentionally stupid or... Because uh, yeah. he, he can get stuff over. When Look he came, you, you square heads. Never forget when he came back in 2016, I think it was, and he was doing that rooty, tooty, oh, booty. Oh, rooty, booty. On the new, and he's doing like cartwheels and stuff. And people are like, he's just a cracked old man now. Yeah. And he's like, turned that into a heel run, which was good in the grand scheme of yeah. things, I guess, but I don't think it was purposeful to start with. Yeah, just, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Uh, oh. GFY hasn't really worked, but I don't think, okay, he's got his limits. He's uh, the influencer. He's, influencer. Uh, what was he trademarked? Was it Sports Entertainer, I think? Something like, that. Something like that. He's so he's, I guess that's what he's going to be going forward. You're just wrestlers, and I'm the sports entertainer. Mm. I'm Chris Jericho. <laughs> that was good. How he tried to be. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to be Kingston at the start. I thought, showing that he's a flawed person, and then Eddie came down and then just wiped the floor with him with his realness. Mm. Eddie's so real. Bit. And then the segment took a nosedive for me. I didn't much care for the rest of it. Well, it's good that Santana Ortiz are away from Jericho yes. officially now yeah. after beating Jericho. Yeah, but it's gonna. Yeah. The first thing is, I was. I'm assuming it's gonna be Garcia, Jericho, and Hager against Santana. Ortiz yeah, and Eddie. gang wars again. Yeah. I want to know why Jericho is. I know, obviously, it's the Jericho Appreciation Society. Therefore, getting some wet wipes like 2.0 and Daniel. Well, not maybe not Daniel Garcia, but he might. In, he might break out. You know. Yeah. Why yeah. in kayfabe would you go after them? I know they appreciate you, but like you want to win as well, don't you? You want to get some better <laughs> wrestlers in yeah. your team, yeah? Yeah. I don't know. It's just like, hey, you three, you have nothing to do. You're now a Jericho. Yeah. Well, I guess so. Yeah. I'm not really invested in it with those involved, to be honest with you. Just, ba- just based off what we've seen so far from two Maybe that's why they're with Jericho. Give them a the bit, the, yeah. bit of the rub. Because apparently they're very funny men. They're rubbly. We haven't seen them. <laughs> 2.0 were funny. They were, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, when they were doing their thing. And they being the, backstage bits of Adam Kingston being When great. they were the bad boys. Yeah. And they came out. Yes. They went on a heel run, Ross. Where they started coming out, this is in like Chikara and stuff. Oh. They started coming out in sunglasses and denim jackets, and no one, every, all the crowd pretended they didn't recognize them. <laughs> and then they did a reveal where they took the sunglasses off and everyone. <laughs> 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 great. The bad boys. <laughs> it's a great game. Yeah. Sounds like the dirty sex jackets. Yes, it does. <laughs> Hangman Page successfully defends his AW title against Dante Martin. Tony Schiavone interviews him afterwards and he calls Dante back to the ring to praise him. And Adam Cole interrupts and calls Hangman's win over him a fluke. Challenges Page to a six-man tag next week. Later on, Dark Order asks Hangman who's going to pick to be his teammates. He says that Jurassic Express already agreed. The championship has made him forget who his friends are. Yeah. Well, your Chris Jericho impression coming out. <laughs> <laughs> the books refuse to team with Cole against Hangman, who claim he wasn't going to pick them anyway, and chooses O'Reilly and Fish. Now, I thought it'd been a hell of a thing if the books went, hey, Dark Order. Not the books. Adam Cole said, hey, Dark Order, you want to team up with me? Oh. Because yeah. Paige... Why would they have a, done that, though? That would make me sense, really, would it? They but like, Paige has been a bad friend right now. Hangman's forgot about them. Yeah, mm. yeah. That should have been his first port of call, going to Evil Uno and Stu. He said he bumped into the Jurassic Express in the corridor. Oh. And they're the yeah, tag team champions. Loyalty. There's yeah, no loyalty no. in football Man, anymore. No. Yeah. So let these contracts run down like you're in Bappes and that, then they're off to Real Madrid. That's right. Hangman Page has done the same. Yeah, that's it. He's a Galactico now. <laughs> that's it. Screw Andy Cole. <laughs> never forgive, never forgive. Dante Martin, ranked number two, I learned this week on watching Dynamite. He's got an 18 and 2 record, which mm. I had no idea that that could be a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was a beautiful match, but also a brutal match, I thought. Nah. In equal measure, the DVD. It was good. Brutal. Beautiful. <laughs> the finish, the sequence. Beautiful, but also brutal. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. <laughs> You're welcome. Brian Dyson and John Moxie with William Regal as their manager. Team up to beat J.D. Drake and Anthony Henry, the workhorsemen who were back, which is like, all right, just just this casually dropped. 
on AW Dynamite. I forget they do something like this. Oh, yeah, this is just the thing that we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Afterwards, Regal tearfully thanks you, Bunny, for helping him when he first came to America. And God, he says a lot of good stuff here. Yeah. This and was I like... Can't, a... recover, can't do it just as by recapping all of it, but like, my God. You know what? Actors put together a show reel to yeah. show their yeah. range. This was all over the shop from Regal, but in the mm-hmm. best possible way. We had the the silly bit at the start with like, what was it? Like, like ooh, I got tears, but also... A few broken hearts as well. That's sweet hearts. Sweet hearts. Mm-hmm. It's got a uh, Hugh Grant. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There was that bit, there was the tears with Shivani. His was real serious... accent started coming out when he was yeah. crying. He went yeah. a bit northern. I was like, go on, Reg- just be northern, Regal. Yeah. I thought he was oh, speaking... I probably a... love thee. He was speaking a lot posher than he had done in NXT for a while, didn't he? Yeah, but then it broke a bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why that was brought in. Is that just him being more of a heel than normal? Maybe. Hello there, I think he was just yeah. trying to keep it together, to be honest with you. Oh. Like, a certain <laughs> bit. Like, he's like, no, I don't mind my accent, they're not British. But like, he showed everything he's got here, Regal. In yeah. one promo. I was yep. yeah. He says, clearly, I'm not required in my old job. Oh. Talks about his history with both Dennison and Moxley. He warns anybody who stands in their way. So, yeah. Because I forgot almost that Danielson <laughs> said, hey, do you want to team up with me? Moxley's like, I'll team up with anybody you haven't bled with. They've done that. Mm-hmm. But they haven't had a promo together yet. It's just William Regal saying, Brian Danielson, one of the finest specimens of a wrestler I've ever seen. He wears my colors as tribute. Moxley. He's hard. Yeah. <laughs> God, you're raged. <laughs> and but yeah, team up. And it's, yeah, so far so good beating the work horseman. He was, um, I saw multiple tweets, m- multiple, saying, I wouldn't mind William Regal stepping on <laughs> Like horny tweets for Regal. <laughs> it was like a Nakia Lions match. Didn't we just, just call happened. him, yeah, didn't we just call him like the hottest man of the week? I did, I did. Yeah. 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 He's, uh, he's, I've he's, seen a few horny tweets. Yeah, from you, Jack. <laughs> Prince Charming from Shrek is oh. a... Is what William Regal today, like if aged like Shrek has yeah, yeah, yeah. 20 years later, that's what William Regal's like with his hair and that. That's what my mind's like. Oh, yeah, you're right. I beautiful man. <sighs> Empty bottles and broken hearts, sweetheart. Mm. I've not written down the full sentence, but yeah, his yeah. delivery on that was nice. Yeah, mm. what Just a star, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then speaking of beautiful, beautiful British men, Pac beats Wheeler Yuta in a match where they were like, oh, because the other match went so, so short, we have this match we didn't advertise. It's like, all right, cool. I think that adds a bit of realism and depth. Yeah. yeah. Unless it was a genuine, unless something genuinely got <laughs> yeah, covered from the like, Oh, bugger. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, uh, Regal kept on missing his cue or ignoring it, whichever one you want to hear. Uh, um, I do in this. Oh, really? Yeah. Just kept going. Apparently. Apparently, um, apparently Tony Schiavone at one point looks at his watch. <laughs> Hey, him. look at that! He's like, whatever, shut up. <laughs> I'm crying. Anyway, backstage, FTR get to a disagreement with Tully Blanchard. Bloody hell, this was quick. Yeah, it wants them to go for the titles again. They fire him. Uh, yeah. You know why, though? Because why? they are American, and that dick, Tully Blanchard, dead to mention Dax Harwood's family. You don't mention family. You don't mention family. Not, Not even if you don't mention them by name, just the mere mention of your family. Mm. That's too far. This was out of nowhere. Your, your dad, Humpy Wheeler. So was it because, am I right in thinking it's because Tully wanted them to go for the belts again, but they wanted to wrestle like the Bucks and that again, non-champions. Yeah. You mentioned his daughter for some reason. I can't remember I know, why, yeah. I couldn't quite get my head You should wrestle it. the tag champs. And now we're going to say, your daughter, were you just so ashamed of you. What? Like, you what? Wait, 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 what did you say? It was just funny how Cash was like, like you're fired. Yeah. That's what it's like, my Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's get rid of this loose end. Uh, no, we've got William Regal. We don't need you now, bye. Whoa. Tully must be off on holiday or something. Yeah. Yeah. Regal versus Tully. <laughs> In a sex jacket on a pole, man. <laughs> So he's like, I'll show you sexy. That happened at Super Bowl 2000. Oh, yeah. It did. Tank Abbott versus Big Al. That's right. He was Sex the jacket on a pole match. William Regal of his day, Tank <laughs> Abbott. <laughs> the AHFO have an emergency meeting in the ring. Andrade wants to vote Matt out of the stable. They have a vote, and Matt's like, private party aren't going to turn on me. I'm like, I'm like, put your thumbs up if you want to keep us. And Andrade and the other guy like that. And he goes, all right, put them up if you want to keep us. And they go like that. He goes, look, private party are never going to turn on me. They're so great. We're, we're a team. We're a family. And never think blah, 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 oh. blah, 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 blah. And Riley says, you should watch your back. And I'm like, watch my back. <laughs> get, get ready for his finisher. Turn around. And of course, private party, turn on him. Why wouldn't he? Matt Hardy's been treating him very badly yeah. these past few weeks. He deserved it. The group beat Matt down. Darby Allen Sting tried to make the save. Don't know why. Yeah. Oh, they, well, they care about yeah. Matt Hardy. Because like, they're faces. Yeah. They stand up for what's right. I can get to, It's in Sting's character. He sees he's he's like Batman. Dumb. He's like Batman. No, he's like Batman. He sees injustice <laughs> and from afar and he gets involved. Yeah. But numbers are too much. Jeff Hardy arrives. Yes, that's right. And clears the ring. After getting a bit of cardio. After building up his finishes. 
I don't know if you taunts. Getting yes. those hips loose. Yeah. I he was worried Matt, that the swanton oh. was too far away, but he, it's oh, Jeff Hardy. Ye so of little yeah, faith. Know, yeah. He and Matt hug and teaser stare stared on Darby and Sting. I don't know why Sting and Jeff Hardy have having issues together. <laughs> uh, oh, I just didn't uh, even think of that. Nothing happened in 2011, man. Oh, I didn't even think. Aye. Wow. Yeah. And again, we all knew that Jeff Hardy was coming. Yeah. Why is that? Because you're on some kid's <laughs> YouTube channel with like, how many subscribers did he have? Like, I don't know. A very, very low amount. Of yeah, I'm going to eat up. <laughs> the scoop of the century. Still love that. And they, they did a video on Matt's <laughs> channel, I think it was, where they're like, oh, they mentioned him by name. This Well, not by name, but they mentioned the, the little fella. The yeah, little yeah. fella. The, the little, little fella. <laughs> <laughs> the little guy. Anyone below 25 is a little fella. Yeah, yeah. The, the young lad who uh, put that out there and they called him a dick or something for doing it. That's <laughs> so they call him a dick. He must have... Promised, he must have promised Jeff or something that wasn't going out and they put it out. Oh, uh, so, right. Uh, well, it was just it. But he was, in, he was clearly interviewing him. Maybe after he went, hang on. Yeah. Can you not keep that That in? happens in interviews. Yeah. It's always good courtesy. Oh, okay. You go, well, are you all right with everything you've yeah. said in the interview? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And I guess and if he said, go, yeah. actually, yeah, can you take that bit out? And he just didn't. That's up with the kid to take it but out. But once he was out of Swanton Ooh. range, he was like, <laughs> yeah, mile down the road. Jeff tried to chase him and he stopped him. Yeah, he's like, he's coming after us. He puts the music on. <laughs> I've realised I'm really bad at it. I don't know how he... I can't mimic it's it. It's all on the well. hips. Oh, I sat down. Pretend, yeah. yeah. I pretend I'm hitting flies like that. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> Help me out. Yeah. That does kind of... Yeah. yeah go. Anyway, backstage, Tony Nese interrupts Shane Strickland's interview. Yes, Tony! Tony Nese! <laughs> it's Tony time. Swerve challenging him to a match on Rampage. I had no like, idea he was still there. <laughs> Where's he been? What's he been doing, Tony? On Rampage, he was for a bit, yeah, just, just that, watching matches. And he's then... that guy on Rampage that other people beat. Yeah, and it's going to be that again. And it's and I'm a, sure it's it'll like... be a great match. Yeah, because Rampage has those le- le- those levels of matches. Goes well, you're not going to get an A or B. That's a dynamite or pay per view. But like, hey, Tony Nice, the star of 205 Live, mm. will be on this show. Yeah. Like, okay, it'll be a good match. He's not bad. It's just, you know, oh, you just yeah. don't care, do you? There's it's no just watch Shane Strickland there. beat this dude yeah, on yeah, Rampage. Yeah. He's impeccable in everything apart from making you care. Tony. Yeah. He, he's all right at uh, uh, Twitch streaming. Does he? He's like, oh, hello, Matthew. Oh, how you doing? Is that the only reason he's okay? Cause he knows I was watching, yeah, I was watching <laughs> play games going, it's not very good at this game. But uh, that seems like a nice guy because he said he said hello to me one time. Another um, funny part of that Deadlock podcast highlights I was watching was they're talking about Adam Cole being like a dick heel and stuff. And then they're like, he wants to finish this match early so he can get home and stream. And then it just cuts to him playing that new game. And everyone's playing, just going, like, ooh, another crafting stone. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Like I did it. I been uh, not much on Twitter during the weekend, so I wanted to just enjoy all the sights and sounds of Alberhausen. Uh Good schnitzels, by the way. Graphic wood mushrooms. But as soon as I get back, first one I do is like, like does it do? He's no, no. Look, you can't do your Twitch streaming anymore, Adam Cole. It's all right. I mean, come on now. How important is gaming to you? It's like, no, I'm a massive nerd. I'm gonna come out the ring dressed as Master Chief. This is important to how, me to play Elden Ring. How is Adam Cole a nerd? How did that happen? He's so handsome. Handsome lads can be nerds. Can they, though? (laughs) Oh, yeah. But, I mean, Adam Cole's a different level of handsome, is what I'm saying. He's a very good-looking man. IMO. And I just think... (laughs) You said IMO. I did. I said it IRL. I think (laughs) that I just can't fathom. He must have been batting the ladies away off him constantly for the first however many years of his life. Yeah, to go home and play Zelda. I know. It makes him more <laughs> endearing. Out, hang on with me. No. It makes him more endearing to me. Saddies for the lads. He could be one of the one of the frat boys, as Ross would call them. Oh, he wouldn't look out of places in a frat boy circle. But, but instead, he's a man of the people, the nerdy people. It sucks, doesn't it? Because now even the handsome lads are nerds now. That's not fair. So the real nerds have got to step up. Sorry. I don't know why I'm, I'm not a real nerd. I, I, I don't know all the references in that. But Oh, I am. I'm going to tell you. I have, you, have to get your, you have to get your game on. Cool Life is a, now Elden Ring for nerds. It's cool to be a nerd. And they look like Adam Cole. Anyway, we've got I, did, I did watch part of that stream where he's playing that Elden Ring. Oh, yeah. Go on. And uh, I've never seen a more sincere thank you giver in all of Twitch. Oh, yeah. like, like, that's, oh. what, that's what keeps me coming back a lot at streams because he's like, what a you know, nice he'll get distracted because he plays it sideways like this. Yeah. Then he'll be like, blah, 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 I'll kill this boss. And he's like, oh, thank you so much. Random username. Thank you very much. Oh, it's so great to see what you nice here with the chugs and all this stuff. I'm like, yeah. wow. Because there are other Twitch streamers like, uh, they, they ignore. Yeah. you like, Donate or do a thing, and I'm like, that's shocking that. Yeah, mm. and he'll get loads. Yeah, he gets loads. He's like, oh, thank you, sorry, I missed that. I was, I was dying on this. He game got, he got a gift from someone. I think it was, I think it was some sort of key ring or something. I can't quite remember. Um, but he started crying. It was incredible oh. to see. His character makes no sense. Yeah, normally <laughs> people like that don't have a heart, do they? Yeah. With that tan and that bloody muscles and that. 
He um <laughs> What muscles? He lost them all when he went to eat. We raided him once. We didn't realize that Andrew had raided him several times previously, but we raided him at the end of one of our streams once and he did as if it was a routine. He was like, time to do the cultaholic dance. <laughs> yeah, like, man, like <laughs> he is selling himself very well. Yes, That's what all wrestlers need to do. It's yeah. him who are the best sellers. Ethan Page is very good at selling himself. Okay. Um who's your, Cardona. Who's Cardona, yeah. Oh, of course, absolutely. Speaking of, he's on Straight to Hell this oh, Sunday. Hey. On the channel on Sunday. And is it going to be a bit like you did with him where you went, hey, is everything I've put in this interview going to be all right? I always ask that. You always ask that, like a professional. Well, yeah. Oh. Because you don't want to be like that guy. Could be like that the guy, Hardy yeah. boys to kill him that's, now. That little fella. <laughs> that little, little fella. fella. That little small fella. child. Um, <sighs> it's on the channel on Sunday. DDP went live last night, so that's on the channel now. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. It's an hour. I've already seen it. Hour Good. long. Nice man. You talk about Halloween Havoc 98? No, but we do speak about Ready to Rumble. Oh, okay, great. He rebooks the end of Ready to Rumble. Which Does I he? thought was quite nice. Oh. Yeah. I just said to him, what, what did you think when he got the script and you saw a diamond upside down as a pussy? He was like, I laugh, man. And then went off. We didn't say it like that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh, man. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> I said, I laugh, <laughs> man. Dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> Shivani interviews Wardlow oh, in the man, ring. Really... <laughs> Speaking about. The P word there, and I love to. Be, be. Moving I on, love to Wardlow be. says he spent far too much time helping MGF achieve his dreams, and apologized to the fans for associating with such trash. He says that no matter how much money MGF paid him, it didn't justify slapping him. He says he's still in the contract, but no longer gives a damn, and he's finally free. Genie. Well, you're not you're free. You, yeah. Well, no, he's not. Oh, AJ Styles goes. I'll make you free. He's mentally free. Yeah. Wardlow says that if he's willing to leave MGF alone, if he releases him from his contract. He says that he isn't going to stop the TNT title either and says that from now on, AEW is Wardlow's world. And people cheered like LA yeah. Knight was in the building. Oh, yeah. I think someone online said... for Wardlow, yes. <laughs> someone said, I think like, Wardlow is the definition of a WWE guy, big muscle dude, whatever, like, rrr, looks like he does not play video games at all. So it's somebody who predicted do well in WWE back in the day. And he's in AEW doing really well and getting massive reactions. He's a human. Oh. That's the difference. You can see exactly yeah, why yeah. he was with MJF because he explained about his man being poor and the, the bring, upbringing he had. Yeah. And it just humanized him. Oh, it was a wonderful promo. Delivered really well as well. Yeah. yeah. He's not just a meathead. No. He's an no. eloquent meathead. He's an eloquent meathead. <laughs> yeah, tell you that, you non-nerd. <laughs> Backstage QT Marshall tries to make friends with Keith Lee because they share a common enemy in Team Taz. Keith says he's fine on his own and is like, wait, he didn't say QT that. Marshall has a, has a stable? Oh, oh yeah, right. I, nice. I paraphrased what Keith Lee said. Go on. I've, I've was going to do a crap impression, but I'll leave that at Ricky Starks. Hey, 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 can you do yeah. an impression of Ricky Starks then? What? <laughs> Thank you, Bob. I can't think what his accent is. You know what I can remember? Jim Go Ross on. repeatedly calling him Ricky Stocks. Yeah, 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 what was I that think, about? I think Ricky Stocks has done Taz's, it. Taz's accent, oh, isn't it? Taz's accent. Oh, oh, that's why. Jim Ross. Stocks. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know when you have that feeling in the back of your head and you can't stop saying something or singing something? Yeah. Mm. Jim Ross must have had that then. You don't want that yeah. then. Kusherko yeah. syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> Shades of RuPaul deliberately mispronouncing a drag queen's name, mm. which he does a lot. <sighs> RuPaul is the Vince McMahon of the drag world. He's the, he's the fracker. He is. The drag world. Yeah, he is. Jurassic Express beat the acclaimed to retain the tag titles. Yo. Yo. Listen. Listen. I thought the crowd really let this match down. Ooh. Oh. That's what I was concentrating on, how they were all sitting on the... I'm going to call out wherever they were. Where were they? I don't know. Wherever they were. I can't remember. Where, where were they? they? Yeah. Um, I America. Just they sat on their hands the entire thing. I think it, it sort of took away from a very good match. If the Ooh. crowd were more invested, it would have been... Because I was just sat there going, oh, God, the crowd on it. This what's going on. But there you go. That I... might just be me. I guess maybe the the Hertz Arena in Estero, Florida. Uh, Florida. Yeah. Florida. What does that place know about wrestling? <laughs> Nothing. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I don't. It must have just been me. Yeah. No, I, I need I need to watch it back, but that's a good point. If yeah, fair enough. Maybe it's because the result was a bit of a foregone. I was going to say I think they gave it the the amount of reaction that was. Uh, it's much deserved they got, because of the lack of tension. Yeah, okay. Mm. Not because of the quality it was of people in the ring. It's just, yeah, yeah. it's like, yeah, you got... I'm surprised some of these matches were worth the titles. I guess another one people come the in. The Donny one like, was weird. Like, hey, how many pages are in against Donny Martin? He was number two contender. I guess he was, 18 yeah. and two record. Yeah, Somewhere. Oh, wait, and he did say he was going to be a fighting champ, so... I yeah. Yeah, okay, well, contradict myself. 
Thunder Rosa beats Layla Hirsch to earn another title shot against Britt Baker at the Red Velvet. Hey, stops Layla from using the turnbuckle again. That's more noise than the crowd made. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Shivani wondering... announces that it'll be a steel cage mm. match. Thunder Rosa is buzzing. Backstage, Britt Baker references Rosa's unenthusiastic revolution entrance and calls her Carney Riff Raff. Oh, I didn't like actually see that bit when I skipped. It was like a backstage bit after morning. the match, yeah. Oh, you looked sour. And the fact, what? Actually, said that then. Yeah, she said, "Oh, maybe you looked a bit more had a bit more pep in your step today, didn't you?" <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. That's where the Jamie Hater dressed all in black next to Rebel and Jamie uh, Rebel and uh, Brit who were in black and gold. Oh. The subtext. Oh. I hope the cage has a roof on, so they can't get in good and proper. That's all I'm asking. I was going to say they got as a roof on so they can blow it off Well, that when too. Thunder Rosa wins. I'm sure they will. I'm sure she will. I was listening to a shoe interview of a wrestler. I, think, I can't remember who it was. He was talking about the first time they ever wrestled Layla Hirsch and how hard it is when she puts a headlock on because she's so short. And they were like, Layla, you've got me on my knees, Layla. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, man. I wish we could play the riff now because the riff would be yeah. a perfect end point for that <laughs> <laughs> that was great though I did not see that one coming well your reaction said something quite different man. oh so no I was stunned by it <laughs> it's also a lengthy bit of length this segment but right. near the end Whoa. Sammy Guevara defends the TNT title against Scorpio Sky which I thought was nice because Dan Lambert says you know what screw the big ring revolution ladder match whatever I'm gonna get the previous winner of that match a title shot before the person who wins it. Mm. And in return for another one of my clients getting a contract. Yeah. Which he signed on Ty County's arse. <laughs> the ring of honor title of the day. Yes. So to speak. Well done. He misses a double sent on through a table and Tay Conti runs out to check on him. Officials try to take Sammy at the back, but he wants to continue. Conti stops Ethan Page from interfering. So Page Vincent rams her into the ring steps. <laughs> Sky wins and is the new TNT champion. Big pop. Sky and Paige beat them down after match, and Paige signs her AW contract on Tay's prone body. Finally, they did similar Scorpio Sky after they remembered during the video packages for this year's Revolution Ladder Ring match. Oh, yeah, Scorpio Sky did win, and we did nothing with him. And in the words of Don Callis, he'll be a great transitional champion. Oh. The Wardlow. Yes. Yeah. He'll flip him, spin him so hard, he'll just fly out of the arena and lose via countdown yeah yeah. <laughs> oh yeah keep the belt yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of count outs Sammy should have been <coughs> home and host with the title during yeah. this one relax rules remember said this years ago they haven't really gone back to it but yeah but they, relax they, don't, rules. they don't mention it do they they never do I don't know why they don't it would shut a lot of people up I know just makes the referees look a bit incompetent it was funny because we get to see obviously during the commercial break over here in the UK on fight and uh, during the commercial break the crowd were chanting one Two. Scorpio, ah. Scorpio, Scorpio Sky counted along with them yeah. and got on the top rope and celebrated. I was thinking, <laughs> like like Lex Luger. Yeah, 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 Luger. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm st I am starting to wince when Sammy does these things now. Oh, you know what's yeah. a good idea? A 6.30 cent on through the table onto the floor. Yeah. Two, three days, four days after, three days after uh, a, a Spanish fly through the table onto a really hard ramp. Yeah. Two days before that, I was part of a hellacious triple threat match. Yeah, I can't remember what he did on last week's Dynamite. But I hope neither can he. <laughs> so that meme, it, DDP yoga, it's all you need. So that meme when your girlfriend comes to watch you play football and it's some lad doing like a million step overs. That's what Sammy Guevara is doing in this. Oh, one. they're a thing. <laughs> yes. I hope they're not going to be like the new Becky and Seth. Did you know that Sammy Guevara is in a relationship with Ty Conti? Me nonsense. <laughs> they have no chemistry together. <laughs> Whoops. It's called kayfabe. Yeah, I was wrong about that one, but I didn't eat me hat, so it's all right. <laughs> I need that laptop Italian restaurant gimmick. Oh, yeah. And gimmick. Who do I think I am? Calling things gimmicks. I'm not an insider. Might as well do it WrestleMania week now. <sighs> oh. Seems a fitting time. Yeah, you doing that, and I'm on the outside giving a birthday cake. Well, we, we should, <laughs> I, I haven't seen any of the bloody things. We need to go and shoot it from the table next door, covertly. Um. We'll do a zoom in shot. Like, like in Goodfellas from the outside in. Oh, why have I robbed Goodfellas of all the films to bring up in, in company with Jack? Thank you for buying Goodfellas for me, Matthew. I think I can't remember the answer to this. Have you seen it yet? Yes. Oh, you have? Yes. Then I said that and you went, how long is it? And I went, three. And you went, no. And then I was sad. It felt like it was three hours long, not in a bad way. Oh, it's over three hours long. I'll need to watch it again now because it was about a year ago now that I watched it. You don't even watch it every year. Okay, fair It'd be enough. be nice if you did. Fair enough. <laughs> Remembered you when I lit my Matthew candle while I thought about it. Have we finished the segment? We have. Bloody hell. 
Speaking of three hours long. Our grind is legitimate. <sighs> <laughs> Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> Come on! We're awake. Time to look at the mailbag. Hello, Matthew, Ross, and Jack, and to anyone who's also there. Hello, Tubman. I also enjoy the podcast and the energy and time you put into it each week. You have helped me and many others through tough times. My question is, in this ever so crazy world of wrestling, what is the most physically impossible thing you've seen a wrestler do? Whew. I remember a specific time where Seth Rollins was in midair and somehow he kicked the air to change his direction. <laughs> what? I thought I was crazy, but Jack confirmed what I saw in one of his graded videos. Did I? It must have looked like he did, yeah. yeah. Keep up the good work. Please have another triple jump slash cultaholic video game tournament. No! Because okay. <laughs> I didn't know the controllers for Crash Bandicoot Racing game. Didn't let so you know. I, I, I was made to look like a fool. And I like bought the, oh, Nitro Fueled, I think the game was. And I bought that game for my PlayStation 4 and learned the controls and became quite a dab hand at it. Oh. <laughs> Ask my girlfriend. I beat her many times uh, at the at game. The game. The game. <laughs> Not uh, like Rey Mysterio and his kids. That's <laughs> so this wasn't a Dave Perry on Games Master situation. It was where the drifting. Set up. No one explained the drifting to me. Oh, yeah, I, I lost, an essential part of the I game. lost yeah. to Owen, I think. And he's not a part of Triple Jump, but he's just younger. I know it's an older game, but uh, the arrogance of youth. He's just got better reflexes, isn't that? Yeah. Do you want to know how bad it was? I was against Adam in one round, and I swear he held the controller upside down and still beat his. <laughs> oh. Nay, what explained the drifting to me and how it worked? Bastard. You know why we that were, was? Because they didn't want you to win. We were the yeah. we were the Valentina Ferros and Ulisa <laughs> Leone of that tournament. Oh. Mm. It says, uh, you know what we call cultaholic in Mexico, El Cultaholic. I like that. That's the from, uh, Quetzal, uh, Nuevo León, Mexico. Thank you very much. Sorry if I mispronounced that, but I can't even do English at the best uh, of times. A lovely message. So, most physically impossible thing you've seen a wrestler do? I've got one. I've got one as well. Oh, you go, go first. Oh, thank go you. Go on, eh? Knock oh. yourself out. Oh, you're so wonderful. Cesaro doing the giant swing to Greg Carly. Oh. <laughs> I looked at and go, I can't. Just... From a starting position as well. So it's like Great Carly did a drop kick and he grabbed him or whatever. It was yeah. like, okay, from the floor. <sighs> got that got thing on him. Um, unbelievable. Mine is any time Ray Phoenix would do that dive through the ropes, yeah. straddle the barricade, land square on his dick, and not wince. <laughs> How is that possible? Every match as well. How is it possible? That's he would wrong. always land on his dick and he would never wince. Not once. Lucha does don't get injured. They just are old. They just get progressively fatter. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm going to go for, I've seen a few wrestlers do it. I've seen Montez Ford do it. I've seen Osprey do it live where they jump over the ring post and sometimes yeah, yeah. land on their feet. And I'm like, because when you, st like it looks bad, it looks hard enough anyway, but Montez Ford and Osprey are both probably quite tall. When you stand in a ring, the ring post higher than you think it is. You're like, it's not just down by your knee. Like, you know, it's 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 like there maybe on me. How I can't fathom jumping over that. Yeah. And then landing on my feet. Also, Cesaro slamming big show out the ring yeah. with Andre the Giant Memorial. Yours are more strength based, I see. Yeah. Nice. Or Cesaro based. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. Bang of Bel Air going, no, I'm fit and uh squatting Otis. Oh yeah. Yeah. Pressing Sasha overhead and walking up the steps. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kane and Big Show destroying that wall, that real wall at WrestleMania 17. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Couldn't believe that. How did they do that? A real wall? <laughs> they probably could have done. <laughs> oh. oh, go on. I mentioned it, I think, on this, I think it was on this podcast. Thingy, uh, size him. The spear through, through the, the middle yeah. rope. Yeah. From the floor. Yeah. How? Outrageous. He's a superhero. Yes. He has a cape. Yeah. Yeah. And he saved British wrestling. He tried his best. He tried and went, it's not worth saving. And walked <laughs> away. And you can blame him. Uh, this this one starts, cease and desist. You've unlawfully used my likeness and just playing. Hi, lads. Oh, this is the Australian man. After listening to last week, I thought I would give some context. Firstly, <laughs> Matthew can rest easy. Only hung over me was embarrassed. Oh, it's this guy. It's, it's the, the ballad. Of, guy. The ballad yeah. of what was his name? I've forgotten his name. Brian Braxton. Barkley. Barkley. 
Uh, only hung over me was embarrassed. Regular me was pretty stoked to get a shout out. A few weeks ago, the cricket team I captained was bowled out for 12. <laughs> 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 I said, we are pretty bad. We need to, yeah, he did send that email, didn't he? Yeah. We need to win this week for our last the email, match. For anyone who didn't hear it, was like, <laughs> hi lads, I'm drunk, I captain the worst cricket team <laughs> in my area. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bit harsh. It's like, bowled out for 12. Yeah. And last match, you got out the bottom. Even though a team forfeit the season before Christmas. The night I sent that message, we were on a pub crawl for cricket and the dress-up was Scribble Party. Wear a white shirt and bring markers. I see. Let the fun begin. Believe it or not, there are a lot of penises drawn. Yeah. The message on my chest was about someone from our other C grade team getting me out earlier that day. Okay. Sorry if this has been a bit long and dull. Barkley from Bendigo. Yeah. P.S. If you need a question, what is a moment when you saw instant regret from a wrestler? My mind goes to Eli Cottonwood's mustache promo and the fear in his eyes as he realizes <laughs> how bad it's going. Thanks, lads. Well, thank you, first of all, Bartley, for putting up a great face there. I'm sorry to hear about your crap team, but uh, yeah. hey, only way is up. Um, I want to know the scorecard. I want to know if everyone got one run and then yeah, one, well, one well, brave soul got two. The Ballad of Barkley Jackson. Yeah. That was his name. That's a yeah. beautiful song. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, thank you for going from that to Eli Cottonwood. I don't remember this promo. Okay, so the original first few series of NXT yeah. are just absurd, yeah, yeah, to yeah, say yeah. the least, because of the the real life ribbon yeah. for people. But mm -hmm. but they also it got a bit mushed up. It's like, wait, are we actually trying to make a show to get the new the new breed up, or are we just doing this to amuse ourselves? Yeah. And the answer would go between that end and that end every week if it was going to be. Because I remember everyone's the one, humiliated. The one where Michael Cole just sat on his phone. Yeah. As they're doing something in the ring. Yeah. yeah. It, it was just. You can look it back now and go, I can't believe this is a thing. Yeah. Eli Coleman was given a promo. They were all given one word and they're all rubbish. It's like, talk about soap or yeah. whatever. And they're like, you know, and they try their best. And they're like, I'm going to clean you up or whatever. And, you know, and then Cole and Matthews are like, oh, these idiots. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. Okay. And then one of them was mustache and he, oh, he just had nothing. Okay. Which would probably happen to a lot of people put on the spot for any promo. But then it's like, do a promo about mustaches. And he's like, oh. plus he was rubbish in the ring. Oh, they they made a thing of like showing his mistakes and the reaction to his mentor, which I believe was John Morrison, going, oh, oh. like they just go right. This is the guy we're going to humiliate. <laughs> so yeah, mm. yeah, in some regret, and you like Cottonwood go well together. Although like, regret, uh, I say on the same level, Sid Vicious, where well, you might be. Oh, You're yeah. only half the man that I am, crowd. Ooh. I've got And one. I have half the brain that you do, crowd. Huh? Uh, you trying you to make me look off? like a jackass? I think it's a legit I've got one. one, and I think it's the winner. It's Booker T's N-word promo. Oh, God, he goes. I... He immediately goes, oh. <laughs> I mean, Jim, I can't believe that, Stevie Ray. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then you see, was it Sherry who was the manager at the yeah. time? You see her go like, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is a stroke. You'll be all right. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that nothing's topping that one. Yeah, we'll move on. Hey guys, I've been a fan of your work since before Callholic started. However, this is my first time writing in. I couldn't think of any deep, thought-provoking questions, so I thought of a fun one instead. Ooh. What was your favorite wrestling moment you witnessed live? Ooh. For me, it's either sitting front row when Hangman Adam Page won the AW World Championship, That's or fun. just being in the arena. For CM Punk versus Eddie Kingston. Yeah. This person's bragging. Bastard. This person's bragging. Brag, 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 brag. This is just a brag. Disguise <laughs> is a question. Thanks for all the content you guys put out, Botchmania included. That's right. Thank you very much. You guys always put a smile on my face, even Eva when I Rasa. <laughs> even when I've had a crappy day. Much love from Minnesota. Ooh. Cultaholic podcast producer Noah Anderson. Hello, Noah. Hello. Anderson. Anderson. Has more charisma than LA Knight. Both went for it. P.S. Matthew, you can't choose MT Bottle winning the WF Championship in 96 since it's too easy of an answer. What? MD Bottle? M for Mother, T for Tango, Bottle winning the WF Championship yeah, yeah, in 96. Yeah, it's a pun, not an MT Bottle. But... got you with a name again. It's a podcast trope, come back to life. Who's an MD Bottle? Who won MD Bottle? God, I don't know. Do you know what that is? Well, MT Bottle is just an empty bottle, like this, like an empty bottle. Yeah, but what bottle. is MT Bottle? I don't know. I don't he's get getting it. getting with a name, I think. Like we used to back But he didn't day. win the championship. I don't I don't get it. Yeah, he's mixing up things. I don't know. Noah Anderson, thank you very much for the question. <laughs> and thank you, Sorry, MT no, Bottle. No. Sorry for not Former WF World Champion. Mm. Um well I mean I've said the Ely Dragon off return at Dubex Dub seems appropriate for the weekend I've had, but I think I've talked about it enough. Yeah, that's a good cool But I was one, also though. there 
for the SmackDown in the UK in Manchester, mm. where AJ Styles beat Jinder Mahal for the Were you? I was, yeah. Bloody hell. I never knew that. Yeah. Wow. That's like, because I don't mention it. I was like, hey, yeah, but Germany's so great. I know but, who was there, though. Kenny McIntosh. That's right. Oh, Kenny McIntosh. That's people who were invited uh, and sat on the top bit and were miserable. No, no, Kenny, Kenny wasn't there, but there were other people who sat with, uh, maybe night two? They do two nights there? Must have done. And there were like other promoters in the area. It was just there, like, <laughs> that's good as my show, this. I'm like, <laughs> AJ Styles wins the title <laughs> to Harry. But yeah, I was there for that. Feel good moment. Mm-hmm. And then that horrible title run. Sorry, yes. I mean, we ironically say it's great, but anyway. Gender. Yeah. What about yourself? Um, it, it was cool in a different way, but I really enjoyed Joseph Connors returning to our show oh, because I knew yeah. it was happening, so I couldn't wait. For, I was doubly excited because I was like, this is going to be a good moment, and I can't wait to see how people react. Uh, and the pop was huge because there was always that fear, like, will they care? And they did, so it was really good. And the WrestleMania, th- even though it wasn't brilliant, the WrestleMania 32 segment with Austin Foley and Sean because if I was just watching that at home and I was like, how good's this WrestleMania? I'd be like, that was a bit naff. But they're live. You can't compare with the glass shattering and Austin's there. So that yeah. that's up there as well. Uh, Hardy's mm. return is the one that sticks out above all else. Yeah. Look, at we've gone to two WrestleManias. <laughs> that was the highlight of both of them. Um, also, Martin Kirby upsetting the world mm. to defeat Will Ospreay. In the yeah. O2 in Newcastle. <laughs> oh, don't think we talk about that match enough. What a no. moment that was. Uh, do, you, do you think you'll go back to WrestleMania? Don't know. Financially, it's all about financials, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. all about, we've got more things to think about now. Mm. I don't think we'll go as a company again. All right. I would like to go. Don't make any business sense, does it? No. No. But the I videos would, not do well. Like, no, it's, it's just the, it's, it's a fact that makes everything we do harder to produce. Slower. I see. And yeah, harder to upload and stuff. So by the time we've uploaded our review of that day as WrestleMania or whatever. All the other channels will have already, right. you know what I mean? So, so it's easy to do it. It'd be, more, it'd be more of an experience, but it wouldn't be as... I get you. Yeah. Uh, Never mind. Oh, well, hard as it is. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well. Well, Jen, Jen's going this year, isn't she? She's going know. to WrestleMania. I don't either. know. I think I she is. Because no she was meant to go and then it was 2020. Oh, and it got cancelled. I see. So I think she's going now. Oh, well, I hope she has a nice time. Yeah. And I hope everyone else watching and listening to this has a nice time as they send in their next emails or texts or whatever you send a message to us. No, the only way to do it is mailbag at goldholic.com. Ah, wrist piss. Hi, chaps. Long time listener, first time caller. I'm sure you are sick of hearing it, but your podcast is the highlight of my week. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you very much. The subs bench and all those behind the camera who do so much to put a smile on people's faces. Yeah, I'm, Richard, I'm that's they, you. I'm glad they've shouted out the behind the camera folk. Yes. Thanks, team. <laughs> Just Richard in here at the minute, but Richard, he can, yeah. yeah. Now, I've had a look at the current listed roster on WWE.com. Looking at each superstar, I've realized that there are a number of superstars that I can't pick out a gimmick that much more than is a good wrestler or does flips. Oh, yeah, okay. Leaving me unable to really connect with them. So I thought the creative minds of the podcast would be able to quick fire better and or more expansive characters. Oh, God. Giving them a motivation to go out each week and bugger the opposition. <laughs> Their words. Feel free to <laughs> add in your own superstars. All the best. James the Chef. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. James. A former centre midfielder for West Ham. Yeah. So let's have a look at this. We'll go fast as thought first. Oh my God. Jack Ross. So I'm trying to think myself. of a new gimmick for these people. Yeah, some are, yeah more than just the characters okay. they have now. Uh, AJ Styles. He's already got a gimmick. He's a Mack truck. You get yeah. one over. He's a dog. He's a dog. Oh, yeah, dog. That's a hard one because I feel like he's already got a half gimmick. Half dog, half truck. He's one of those wrestlers whose <laughs> character is his gimmick. Woof, woof. Is, <laughs> I'll go for uh, Fireman AJ. I was going to go for Farmer. He strikes me as a Farmer. Ooh, yeah. the accent. Yeah. Huh. A rich businessman. The moves are easy. Cows. Uh, I don't know. So we've got Fireman, Farmer, and Rich Businessman. Yeah, like the one of the Simpsons. <laughs> and then he should come out in the well, Rumble. Well, I'm going to... He should come out in the Rumble. There's all three. Yeah. There's three faces of AJ. I need to win the WWE Championship and put horns on my car or whatever. <laughs> That's a horrible accent. I'm sorry. Uh, Cedric Alexander. Um, He's got one already. 
rubbish. Vampire. Oh. He's got those teeth, hasn't he? That's a gimmick. That's a gimmick. I'd like to see Cedric Alexander as a lifeguard. <laughs> there you go. It's just, just name of it. Fastest thought we first. Ask, we, Fastest asked, thought. we asked 100 families to name, uh, <laughs> name a survey. He has fangs and doesn't use them. Therefore, I would like him to be a vampire. I don't know if he's still got the fangs, but he had them for more than one week and it wasn't Halloween. Yeah. So. New Brood would be a great idea. Porn star? Fanging and banging? Yep. Sex jacket? Yeah. He could be in that stable. <laughs> no, no. Prime. Oh, it doesn't matter. I was trying to work Cedric into that long, long name for the, the dirty sex jacket dogs or whatever we're calling them. Think of a gimmick, Matthew. I like vampire too much. Okay, zombie. Yeah, vampire. Zombie. Yeah, zombie the vampire is natural okay. enemy. I'll come up with a good one soon, I promise. Finn Balor. Right, my fastest thought was Leprechaun, but I can't say that, right? No, I can't obviously right, say Russo. that. No, because um, he's Irish. I got it. He's oh, sorry. not, is he? <laughs> um, I'll go for... I want him to make his whole gimmick about being a Spurs fan, because he's a Tottenham fan. I think that would be interesting, to say the least. I want his gimmick to be a small child. Because he has those tattoos on his arm, and I think they must have been drawn by a small child. So if he becomes, oh. he's got the tattoo on his hand where it's like it's a boy and it's like some sort of like moon. So if he could become that boy, yeah, like Peter Pan. Oh, I saw that this week. Justification <laughs> well, for who, which Peter Pan for the the original Hook's actions against Peter Pan. It was just stopping Peter Pan from stealing kids. Oh, wait, what? Which film we talking about? Peter Pan and Hook. So the, Hook. Hook, or, Hook or oh, Peter, Hook, Hook the film. Hook right. Captain Pe Hook. Hook or Peter yeah. Pan. No, 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 I'm asking you which film. Which What's the name of the film, film yeah. you watch? Peter Pan. There's a film called Peter Pan. There's a film called Hook. Oh, Hook. Well, Hook's the one I've... Okay, oh, right. Oh, Hook then, right, right, right. Yeah. It's Robin, just called Robin Hook. Williams in live action. Yeah, Robin, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just a general tale, isn't it? Peter Pan against mm. Hook and yeah, yeah, yeah. Neverland and all that bullshit. Oh, no, but Hook's like but the expanded universe thing. The justification for Hook not being a heel, for being the actual baby face of the piece, is that he's just trying to stop... Peter Pan stealing kids and taking them off the Neverland. Right. Yeah, what's with the I, what's with the wrestler Rufio, by the way? What's with what? The wrestler Rufio. What what's up with him, you mean? Is he just playing Rufio from Hook? Pretty much, yeah. Is that allowed? He hasn't been sued yet. <laughs> okay, fair enough then. Yeah, that's fair enough. Good luck to him. Yeah, best of luck, pal. Good luck, Rufio. What if he is Rufio? He's not. Oh. He looks young. <gasps> oh, like he's oh, never oh, aged. That's yeah. right, never Neverland. Can he crow? <sighs> <laughs> So is somebody going to book Hook versus Rufio? Oh, my God. AW, Rampage. It needs oh. to be so, another, like, the referee's dressed as a crocodile, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crawling around. Bryce Ramsberg eats Hook at the end. Yeah, Owen hates crocodile. Bryce Ramsberg you so much, You know what? Man. He hates him. That's magnificent. Really it's helped me out of a bad situation there. Bala could be a sexy crocodile. Okay, yeah. Or as an alligator, I forget. Yeah. Oh, Whenever I hear that, and, and it's, a, oh. it's, it's an alligator playing Bala's theme. Oh, I, like, I dropped my, my MP3 player on that sexy every, alligator. Every time he opens his mouth. Oh, oh, yeah. me. Uh, Liv Morgan. Um, she is a paintball, professional paintball lady. Penelope Pitstop. Because I'm almost certain that on Penelope Pitstop's car, somewhere are Liv Morgan's eyes. Oh, yeah, the front. The headlights. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. I thought you were being really weird there. No, did, no. It, did everyone have a favourite Rocky racer? Oh, I'd have to see him again. It's been that many. It's been that. Uh, it's been I so like long. the lumberjack and the beaver. Ah, I was going to say that. I'm going to say the uh, the slag brothers. The slag brothers. The cavemen. Because yeah. uh, I'm a big fan of the slags. Yeah. The Anhill mob. Peter Perfect. Um, the Arkansas um, chugger bug. Arkansas chugger bug. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, they all are. The horror one. Yeah, the horror one. The army one. The scientist. It was like the ninety. It was like the new generation era. Yeah. Oh, NXT two. What was he? The mobster fella called the Anthill yeah, mob. The Anthill mob. There yeah. was like twelve of them. They were yeah. all short. <laughs> and they all had a gimmick. Yeah. Really good. There they are. Liv Morgan's eyes. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Why not? Kind of. If you squint really hard, just shut your eyes and imagine Liv Morgan's eyes, and they're on the front of me. <laughs> yeah. If you shut your eyes and look at it, it looks like it. <laughs> Thanks, Rod. <laughs> so yeah, Liv Morgan. I, I'm no, I'm Amityville Chugger Book. I can see you as a gangster. With 12 uh, with chi bear. chickens. Oh, wait, what? What's the the, the Arkansas Chuggerbug is the bear and the farmer guy. Oh, crap. What's the uh, oh, Anhill mob? The Anhill mob, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sticking with my gangster thing. Yeah. Looking at the construction of the old... This fella down the bottom here. Yeah. He's razor, made himself. Razor blades as a, a, a form of wheel is not very good. That's a brilliant idea. What are you know about? 
It was just, it would just be skidding across the, the tarmac the entire time. I don't think they won very much. There's not much know. tarmac in this race, isn't I was going to say, when you hit a soft surface, you just cut straight through, wouldn't you? Yeah, there's not many soft surfaces. It's all like where Wally Cody Road There's one episode takes where Dick Dastardly... <laughs> I'm trying to justify this, I don't know why. <laughs> the whole concept of wacky races, and sorry for derailing the but <laughs> is that Dick Dastardly's got the fastest car. So yeah. he races ahead so he can stop and set up traps. Yeah. Just win the race, Dick. <laughs> I would tell you that, I've probably brought this up before, but like, there's one that's like, in the commentary, it's like, he's so far up front, there's literally nothing yeah. that can stop. It's so close. Well, well hey, you know what? This is one of the books. Let's make it a photo finish. And they take a photo, uh, and Wally Coyote and Muttley have got out to take their hats Dick off. Dick Dastardly and Muttley, surely. What did I say? Wally Coyote. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's a Freudian slip. I'm, I'm never drinking this sour sort of IPA <laughs> again. The three week on podcast we're doing. Um, Dick Dastardly and Muttley get out to pose for the photo, and as we're doing so, all the other drivers were out. Uh, right okay. And as a kid, I didn't really understand the concept of it's a punchline. I thought, I can't believe they didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah, what we are doing? Oh, this thing. Ricochet. <laughs> um, a, a deep sea diver. Who's this Ricochet? Yeah. Does he, does he like flips? No, as he jumps it? off the boat, yeah. Oh, I'm trying to think of someone who would go. <laughs> and he disappears for several hours and then you, uh, where has he gone? Oh, there he is. And he wins the icy tie. You're like, oh, I forgot about him. Oh, mm. Come promos on sh- sea fish. <laughs> I've got no idea. What on earth would Ricochet do? Olympian. Win what mm. discipline? Uh, the rings. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Into and right. all the horse vault box thing. Yeah, they yeah. spin around. I forget what it's called. The pommel horse. Oh, the pommel horse. Aye, he could pommel. Pommel horse. horse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the pommel horse ricochet. I think he, he's really good. as like a really boring PT. <laughs> Do you pay attention to everything he's saying? Because he's got near crack whatsoever. Okay, it's yeah. so like uh, make sure you get the uh, back, you know, proper position because that's where all the energy comes from. Like I cheers. Yeah, uh, I'm actually going to pay attention to all that because there's <laughs> nothing else to pay attention to. <laughs> Rhea Ripley. Oh, she's already got. She's already got. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, hang no. on. Well, I thought people were about this gimmicks. This is her brutality. No, I'm skipping that one. Uh, Shelton Benjamin. Oh, Shelton's just Shelton now. He's past the point of needing a gimmick. Um, he's, he's, got, he's got what? Grumpy Uncle Man. Also, he did that creepy smile for a bit and then stopped. No. Oh, yeah. One episode. What was that about? No, it was more than one episode. I swear on you, that's No, wrong. no, more than one episode. He would stand there and go, hmm. Scientist. I want to see Scientist Shelton. That's what he's thinking about. Yeah. yeah. That thing about science. He's, mm. a, he's a disgruntled uncle. His interactions with Mia Yim on social media proves that. Oh, what's happened? I thought they were being nice. No, they play along, don't they? But oh, as if, oh. As if he hates her, but he didn't really hate her. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I'm stopping. He's a disgruntled, disgruntled uncle. I see him as someone who watches a show like that you don't expect him to watch to be a big fan of. Like he's a big Corey fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, even though it's not his uh where he's from or anything, he watches like BBC America or whatever, so he can keep up to date with it. That's why he says, like, why, why aren't you concerned you didn't win like the you get that big push? And he goes, Well, I didn't want to miss what was happening. Mm. How many are there? <laughs> T bar. T Bar's got a gimmick. He's man. Croatian. T Bar's got six. a gimmick. Not only is he Croatian, he wears a mask sometimes. Yeah, what more do you want? He could be oh, Nikola Zikic. No, yes, he could. Yeah. Because he's Croatian and he's tall. Is Nikola Zikic Croatian? That's right. I think he's he like look- a guy who boxed Lennox Lewis. I think he looks like a big Perisic. If Perisic was like six foot eight, he would look like. Zikic is Serbian. Oh! oh! The it's bit's a good ruined. Job. It's a good job there was no. The guy I said. Strife in that area decades ago. Ah. Split up the country. (laughs) (laughs) Moving quickly on. Oh, God, maybe not. Tamina. She's got a gimmick. What's a gimmick, Ross? She is the daughter of a a (laughs) WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah. (laughs) She is carrying on the tradition from the islands. I hope not. From the islands of. Is it Polamalu? Fiji? Well, the, po- the Polynesian island. Yeah, well, island. Po- 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 yeah. Samoa, isn't it? I've just got distracted. Not distracted by Nicholas. Is he not? Just... Jimmy Snooker's no. Tongan? I don't know. Yeah, I, Snooker I think it's Fiji. I think not the same. Fiji. Is he Fijian? Okay. Yeah. Snooker. I've taken a chance. Who's they brought Tongan? in the Tongan Jimmy kid. Snooker. They brought in the Tongan oh, kid to like thinking, yeah, the feud yeah, yeah. with him because mm. he was involved in oh, the feud oh, with Piper. Oh, he died. Oh, Fiji, yeah. Suva, Fiji. Okay. He died in Coral Springs. Where's Polynesia? Or is that the region? I'm I'm betraying my own ignorance here. I don't really know. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm sure Tamina's based from the... Uh... Who's Tongan, though? Tamatonga. That's who I... I feel, oh. like, I feel like an idiot now. Yeah. She's 44. The Rock is... There are, I mean, has she won, like, a major... 24-7 title? 
a, a major. Share that title shot against Bailey. Other women's Bailey. tag team championships with Natalia. She had that, a major. She had that title shot against Bailey when Ross was convinced that she was going to win and then she didn't. It was sad. Well, yeah. she got screwed, didn't she? There was that period of time where the boss and hook connection were together. Yeah. Uh, and then they, she, got, she got cheated out of it and then they held the, the karaoke competition mm. on SmackDown. And like Jimmy Uso, or Jay Uso, whoever was an, uh, announcing it, was like, you've got 30 seconds to do your best. And she picked Triple H as the game, I think, maybe if memory serves. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah. I think so. But she didn't get a chance to start because the intro and they cut her off. That's me getting mad at the wacky races going, it's just about to win that. <laughs> Terrible. Cesaro, what? It says, yes, he is still listed. That can't be right. It could be outdated by now. Oh, what? He can do anything he wants. Yeah. I think I just like to see Cesaro be Cesaro. Yeah. Yeah, that's my answer. Sorry for not for copping out of that one. But they should have done more, I think, with the uh quadlet no stripper. When he was the <laughs> spy who then <laughs> No, they ha- um you speak five languages. Oh right, okay. Ah, yeah. After quad yeah. pent pentingual. Oh whatever, yeah. Whatever. Five, five, languages, five languages. Yeah. Well like 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 someone makes someone like say I quit. Like, okay, say it in English, I quit, I'd say it in French, say it in German, whatever. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't let go or something. But it's when like really basic, like I'm good. Good. That would have been really educational. Yeah. Uh, mace. Sex pervert. What was that thing he did? I forgot what Breedable he said. little boy or yeah. something like that, yeah. Dirty man. Oh, yeah, because yeah, it's Final Fantasy VII He could be gimmick. a dirty yeah, dog. Right. Let's get him in the dirty dogs. Yes, I agree. He's part of the dirty dogs, but he brings his giant uh, anime waifu pillow with him. <laughs> We've got one of them in the office. Oh, we just like him. Beryl. Yep. He was a man. I love that. I, oh, love, yeah. I, go, I go do recording and there's that pillow still there. I'm like, is that just... Where do you get... Where do you, where do you take that? <laughs> with no one dares put it in the it's bin. Like, it's, like, like, it's been ah. soiled with chicken sauce around the It's like mouth. electronics. You've got to dispose of it properly. You can't just yeah. put it in the bin. Someone's going to be dumping like asbestos in the woods <laughs> somewhere and right next to it's going to be that. To be fair, <laughs> we had that wicker coffin I was buried oh, in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah get rid of that. Someone came and picked it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What, you advertised to get rid of a wicker coffin? Well, you put like a tweet out or something. Gave it away for it? free. Would anyone like Someone this wicker coffin? Put it in their small Persia. Was it Persia or VW Polo? I can't remember. Then drove off. That's an important thing, yeah. yeah. Put it in a living room, apparently. God, that's weird. <laughs> Mansour? Well, he has got a gimmick. He's Saudi Arabian. Yeah. And they go to that place. I'd, like to, see, year. I'd like to see him as a... Oh, man. I honestly don't know. I don't know what to say. Um, <sighs> if they're going to make him the whole Kogan of Saudi Arabia, then just go full. Uh, but instead of the well, yellow and red, it's... 9%. Instead of the yellow and red, it's green and white, and he's the big yeah, fur. Yeah. I am a real Saudi Arabian. Well, no, they'll play that, we'll play that song that we got recommended. Yeah. What the, song? The one we found on YouTube, the Saudi Arabian number one. Oh, okay. It was really, it was a banger. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Really good. I think you should be a masseuse. Yeah, that could work as well. Oh. Man, Seuss. Yeah. I wish you do it the other way and became, become one of those like 80s wild pe- child people. So you should come to come to Saudi Arabia, come to Saudi Arabia, <laughs> come to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> with me and you. Do yeah. like, yeah. you think it should be the Just Tasmanian Taz, yes. devil? Okay, right. <laughs> Saudi Arabian devil. Uh, what's his face off the wild thornberries? That works as well. Very what's similar. Oh, the, the little kid. kid. Yeah. 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 It's been years. Uh, Lord Nelson's trousers, it's a Yeti. Yeah. What a moment. Good old Tim Curry. And finally, Natalia, whose gimmick is she's Natalia. She's Bret Hart's... She's not Bret Hart's daughter. Exactly. She's Jimmy Anton Nighthart's you, you, daughter. You would be forgiven for saying that, though, given the fact that... Yeah. Wow, Bret Hart, Bret Hart. Also, Jim Nighthart, her dad. Yeah. She should get the gimmick back where she farted. No. That was fantastic. Oh. <laughs> I think she should give be... It a Cody, give that gimmick, give it to Cody Rhodes. She should in. be a Northeast English ruffian... And she should rename herself to Natalia Ma and just <laughs> reply to people just go like... Oh, well done. Your Ma. Natalia Ma. Yeah, tell your Ma. It sounds like I'm going to tell your Ma. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was the joke you were going for. I just should reply to people by going, your Ma. Oh, that was the but, greatest uh, thing you ever said it was accidental. Yes. You know what? Yeah, now nah, I'll tell your Ma. It's brilliant. Nah, I'll tell your Ma. Yeah, there we go. That's, That's well, I've got nothing thing. to compete with that. Yes. Nothing. We have some breaking news, which isn't really news. Oh, no. Uh, Melts is saying on Wrestling Observer Radio that WWE wanted Cody to debut on Monday Night Raw in Jacksonville. There's a quote that follows. 
Obviously, WWE wanted him for WrestleMania. Time is running out. There's Raw on Monday in Jacksonville. If he's going to be at WrestleMania, it would make sense to me that he would debut in Jacksonville if they have a deal, which we don't know. Mm. Meltzer knows nothing. So he's he just says speaking. nothing there. I don't know anything. If he's not there, I would presume the deal is not close because that was the day that they want that they wanted him for. From what I understand. He had stuff set up for WrestleMania and it was off the boards a couple of days ago. Talks are still going and I guess we'll find out. You're the journalist, Dave. You find out. So <laughs> thank you to... It takes him a paragraph to say, I've no idea. I've no idea. I've no idea, Jeff. <laughs> was that um, was that Noah Anderson's Reese's Pieces? Or was it was Noah like? Anderson's. Thank, thank you, you Noah. very much, thank Noah. Thank you, Noah, for that. I hope you enjoyed that. You know what? Now that we mentioned him... Why don't we just... Oh, no, we only, we're Go doing it at the start of the next segment. We're anyway, doing the next segment. Yeah, fair enough. And you too can uh, give us a lovely, lovely Reese piece by going to mailbagacolhag.com and hopefully putting Reese's Pieces or Reese Piss, as it's now known as, in the subject title. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's Cultaholics. The question. Ah. Mm. What a lovely... The IPA pill, long, lengthy podcast it has been, ladies and gentlemen. You had one sip. Well, I haven't. I, a mouthful over many little that. sips because yeah. it's too hot to handle. It really is. Don't bring me that ever again. I, I thought it was worth a go. I, I can't believe it, hey. Riches, you have the other two cans if you fancy. Get it. Oh, <laughs> get in. <clears throat> but we have just a little more to end this lovely podcast before they do that. The wonderful producers, the executive producers, Patron special people, we salute you. GTA John, Reno2200, Noah Anderson. And a thumb and bum. Thank you. Uh, Akajua and Nick Krabi. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Very much for your patronage. Thank you. Thank you all. Patronage? Yeah, Did you know the that winner. between the years of 2007 and 2010, Nikola Zigic scored five goals in 28 appearances, league appearances for Valencia? Whoa. The big question this week. Is what is your favorite special, special wrestling entrance? Special I wrestling guess, yeah. entrance. What's the, what's the best Triple one? H. This is in this is Triple in, H. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Tribute to CM Punk's Ring of Honor. Yeah. Shorts and God, it wasn't just nice to hear AFI being talked about again. Yeah. To be honest, I've never been a big. Listener. Is it I ever? Just, is it ever? Da, 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 da. It's all like snowy. Is that an AFI song? I think so, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Was it? Hope so. Well, I know Miss Murder. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Miss Murder. Yeah. Because it's it was... just the way <laughs> to Amarillo. <laughs> can't watch that video anymore. Oh, um, no, we can't. Anyway, can't. there's a person in the video who can't, shouldn't Ronnie be. Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> no, another person. Um... You said Triple H there, Ross. Oh, man. I can't get enough of WrestleMania 17. You can pick any of Triple H's entrances, but WrestleMania 17 for me is the top of the pops. And 17. I say that because of Motorhead. Oh. oh. Lim? Was that the one where they played the, him live to the ring? The big limster. It's all about the game and how you game it. Lim? The big game. Limster. <laughs> <laughs> WrestleMania, which one? 21. The big Lim? Well, let me didn't know the no, words. No. no, he was using my time then, wasn't he? No, no. no. And he's changed no, the game. Ross is right. I just oh, don't know sorry. why. It's all about the game and how you game it. It's all yeah. about the game. And if I can't get enough <laughs> of it. <laughs> I just didn't know. <laughs> it's going to be, I don't know what my real one is. But yeah, it, let me no, be in rubbish. I'd legitimately love it. It's fantastic. <laughs> Do you? Because uh, later on, in, well, later on in life, I learned that Motorhead, by and large, hated that song because it's written by Jim Johnson. But they did it anyway because of the man there. Yeah. Um, so him just not giving a, a bowels about it and just saying, I'm the game and I'll yeah. game it. I'm the game and if you game it. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, you didn't care. And then Triple H is like, wow, I'm living the dream here. Yeah. My favorite band plays the ring, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess they were thinking, oh, God, I want to do that anymore. And it was like, behold, the king of kings. <laughs> uh, it was 21, wasn't it, when he came back? When he came up through the stage and they were playing mm. to, to the ring at the seat. Yeah. yeah. I mean, take your pick from Triple H. I know, God. There's well, cat, I thought you, I was surprised because I thought you mocked and ridiculed Triple H, Triple H, Triple H, Triple H's um, <laughs> tricycle. WrestleMania. Yeah. <laughs> Not just the trikes. The trikeys. You also viciously mocked one of my favorite ones because it was so ridiculous against <laughs> Batista when there was like the big trailer before and it was like Mad Max and like mm. he came out perched on top. Like, oh, that was good. Michael Cole ruined it because he went, How cool was that? That was the Michael Cole one. Oh, God. Oh, I yeah, yeah. Forgot that was 35. Uh, yeah, yeah. Was How cool was there. that? <laughs> Michael, you've spoiled it. <laughs> 
And then yeah. Batista one up them by falling through the ropes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Good old Batista. But Xavier Woods didn't care. That was the one where he was belting out the... the stage. Yeah. But Xavier Woods is in the wings or somewhere, just like watching, just belting the song out. Oh, oh, yes. Bit of danger. Now you've said that, because obviously your favorite WrestleMania is 32, because you were there. Yeah. Of all the things we're expecting to see, that WrestleMania, uh, the New Day popping out with the Dragon Ball Z gear out of a giant cereal box was impressive. Mm. Followed by Michael Cole going, of course, that's the Adamic fighter gear from Dragon Ball Z. Don't you know anything of Power Dream? Like, what? Well, that was You've been trying that line the entire day. Don't mess us that up. That one Don't was ruined for us slightly. Because we were sat at an angle where you could see they weren't actually in the cereal box. The cereal box tipped over and then they came through the back. Oh. I couldn't believe it. I can't believe you revealed that secret. I know. Secrets of... <laughs> they were in the back all the time. <laughs> this what's kid that, has that, pizza for a tip. <laughs> what's that pun they do? Talk about pal driving Miss Daisy. Yeah. Oh. Um, Salem the cat. It was Salem, wasn't it? It was. Um, my favourite special entrance... It doesn't count. It's not a special one. Oh. I was going to say Punk at Money in the Bank 2011, but it's, there's no oh, special... Spe- oh, right. There's no yeah, gimmickry. Okay. It's just his entrance, but it's special. But if, in terms of like costumes and that... I love Rusev in the tank. Oh, yeah. That was oh, really good. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed some of Bobby Roode's when he was for, when Glorious was still yeah. a thing in NXT. That was good as well. But I think the Rusev one's up there. The Triple H one at 30 when it was like he was self-aware that this is how people saw him. And he had, wasn't it Sasha, Charlotte and Blake? I think so, yeah. 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 That was a good one as well. But they're the ones off the top of my head. Some of uh, Undertakers as well. In TNA, when Samoa Joe would get the, the title shots. Oh, and he did the dance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. The fire involved somehow. So the fire spinners or yeah, yeah, whatever that's called. Polynesian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so agile. Cool. He, that was how he grew up. I think he was part of like a like a traveling yeah, dance, dance troupe. troupe thing, yeah. 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 No, was generally. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. yeah his family. That, that research is for a video. <laughs> his family were like as part of this troupe, and then he got involved as well. And, I yeah. think I've got that right. Ah, oh, lovely. I've heard that as well. I might have watched that video, though, that you did. I don't know if that's ah. where it was from. Yeah. Um, so, that was, yeah, that's a good show. And it's also not WWE, so there you go. You've chosen a, you've chosen a smaller production value. And Onita making his entrance at New Japan. The Wild Thing one. Yeah, he's cigarette. doing Wild Thing, and like, oh, and the New Japan fans are like... How is that allowed, by the way? What do you mean? Do they not have? Was this before the smoking bar? Oh yeah, this is like. Oh, oh yeah, does like Japan nine. have it? Oh, of course it does. I've been there. They didn't do back I've, then. Do you know Bobby Guns? I do. Yes. Why does he? How does he get away with it? He wouldn't do does it. Germany no, he wouldn't have, do it in, um, does Germany not have a smoking bar? When he did do it, he doesn't do it anymore. He wouldn't do it in the arenas. It's always like pre-recorded segments. I thought he came out smoking. Maybe he did. Just one tab. Just one tab. But, but that's not allowed. He didn't do this during COVID, by the way. He did not do that. No, of course. He said, "Smoking kills." <sighs> And so did Bobby Guns. That's that's ah, that that, that idea. Loved um, him. What was another one I had in mind there, by the way? That was a German impression, by the way. Sorry. Was one of Jericho's Judas ones good? Or have they all been a bit naff, the special ones? No, they had a choir. Weren't they pretty good? Didn't she oh. get cancelled? Oh. And what? The lead choir lady. Did she? Oh. I, I didn't know that. Happened about her. Uh. I can't remember that. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 14. Oh. oh, with Jim Johnston and the D-Generation X band. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what are you laughing about? That's a good I one. I remember them doing the... Uh, the National Anthem the Bar. Oh, yeah. Or America the Beautiful. Oh, America. Boo! <laughs> the anthem getting booed. It's really good. Just the the uh, energy mm. from not bo- not just the band, but Sean as well, saying, who's the effing man? Mm. While walking down the ramp. Yeah. Felt, felt yeah. real then. Oh. It's last match for years, I Yeah. Who's man, the man? It ain't me. Oh, I'm yeah, he's, wa- he's walking a bit. You can tell yeah. as well. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Bless uh, him. No, that was good as well. Yeah. Probably um, Liam Slater and Moose. <laughs> they were Moose and Slater. <laughs> I don't know. We just had a stupid... We needed a tag team to fill in because Johnny Moss was injured and it was Moss and Slater. And Moose was on the show. Yeah. So we made them Moose and Slater and they had each other's names on their back like oh. football shirts. That's my favourite special reference of all time. Is that a thing that happened, is it? Yeah, well, you know that. <laughs> this might be not to you stop going. No, yeah, we were like, it was that big World Cup tour we did, so it was like five nights. And we What's needed, like bollocks going on there? We needed, <laughs> so there's three nights of World Cup tournament action, but then two like sort of more fun nights where it was more like filler stuff. So we had, yeah, Moose and, Moose and Slater instead of Moss and Slater. Crowd loved it. It was like silly PWG nonsense, man. Mm. There was also another tag team that I can't mention. 
because the post speaking out world. I'll tell you off camera. One of them was Bobby Fish, and the other one was. Uh, oh yeah, I'm just doing it anyway. You don't have to say it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Like, sorry. Yeah, never mind. Okay. Pay attention. Okay. You don't have to say it. Then we. Right. Anyway, uh, can't have that. Oh, can we? One time on, I think Nitro or Thunder, Norman, Norman Smiley came out with the entire like Las Vegas Showgirls entrance. That's the second Norman Smiley reference of this podcast. Norman Smiley. Okay. Oh, sorry, that's, that's what Tony Schiavone would always say. I guess we got to throw Kevin Nash in there as well. Citizen of the world. Citizen of the world. That mm. one. That's a special entrance. That is probably the most expensive entrance of all he time. He is a citizen <laughs> of the world. Michael Buffer's in the ring. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Rain yeah. spoke about, what was he about? 10 million worth of pyro. Who was it who said 10 million worth of pyro on this week? <laughs> Wrestling million. somewhere? I don't know. Someone about, speak about Cleveland or something, I don't know. <laughs> Someone mentioned 10 million pounds worth of pyro going off and it wouldn't fit in the city or something. That's where all the pyro <laughs> was. 10 million. 10 million dollars on pyro. I'm sure it was someone on this week's show. Kevin somewhere. Nash's <laughs> intro. <laughs> That's really good. Cool. No, not speaking about that. Oh. They were speaking about WrestleMania coming to their town, but it couldn't fit because of the 10 million pounds worth of pyro. <laughs> okay. So that's happened this week, I'm sure. Uh-huh. It's been <laughs> no, a long, it's been a long week. The way you've said it, it's like Kevin Nash and his 10 million. <laughs> it probably was. At least five. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. We're ending the show there. Bloody hell. Jack, it's been a long podcast, I know, but oh, hopefully you've got enough energy for the rest of the week. What mm. have you got to entertain us until then? The newest episode of Weirdest Wrestling Episodes is out. It might already be out, in fact, by the time this... Sorry. <laughs> I worked, really, I worked really hard on that series. A yawn sneaks up on you like that. Uh, I, I've, I, well, I'm proud of it, and I think you should watch it as well. What episode is it? Um, it's the, the, the time that Raw returned to USA. It's the first ever three hour oh, roll. Oh, homecoming. Yeah. Great. It's the first ever three hour roll. Is that a weird one? Yeah. Oh, is that when Linda gets the stunner? Yeah. And uh. the main event is Cena versus Bischoff for the title. And the show randomly opens with a 30 minute Iron Man match. So it's because they realized, oh, we've got three hours. Okay. For the first time. So it is a weird one, yes. Don't worry. Okay. Remember that being a good show? Maybe it's. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily bad, but there were some, there's some weird bits. Um. Why does Austin flirt with Steph and Linda? Pick one, Steve. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> anyway, Oof. enjoy that. It might already be on the channel. Thank you very much to Luke Osborne for editing it. He's very good. Yes. Um, at Lukey Blue Shoes on Twitter. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Ross? Uh, it's just straight to hell for me. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Last night. <laughs> I legitimately couldn't stop. I saw yawn in there. I've done an honest yawn. No, yeah. Um, <laughs> Straight to Hell went live last night with DDP. It's an hour long. It's fantastic. On Sunday at 4.15, I do believe, a Straight to Hell with Matt Cardona goes live. We speak about many things. I get an itchy head there. And I'm off on holiday now until next Wednesday. So oh, yeah. 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 Oh. I'm not really going anywhere, just away from here. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> just sorting off. Magnificent. How about you, Matthew? Uh, I'll be a new boss. Oh! It's <laughs> <laughs> <New> boss- <laughs> 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 Dragon Ball's D now. <laughs> Me and, Hadouken. <laughs> me and Tom will have a Cultolic Classic Smackdown review for everybody who listens or watches that type of thing. Uh, again, he's doing it from his little old home. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it from a little old second home of Cultaholic. And uh, yeah, new Bodgeman will be out very soon, honest. I've waited nearly a month because I was waiting for someone to send me a video. None of them did, so I'm asking other people instead. No problem. You know what else? You can go to Mailbag at cultaholic.com and send us your Reese pieces and thoughts and you can also go to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic if you want to get involved in the hall of fame the game of death that we have currently going right now oh no I ended oh, yeah, yeah right. we've done it's, it's bad to be in the wholesome sh- hall of fame sh- sweet the money um, yeah anyway Patreon always serious always fun always entertaining but this has been Jack this has been Ross this has been myself this has been a really sour IPA we're very happy we've entertained you for the last for several hours now we're going to look at this so look at this screen and say the famous expression that we all know and love one two three join us <laughs> oh my god he didn't hit record shut the fuck <laughs> <laughs>